Alrighty. Are we alive? Uh, wait for it. Wait for it. Are we? Oh, there it is. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. I hope you're having a wonderful day. If you're watching this and it does not say live at the bottom of the screen, unfortunately, you're not. You're watching the recap. The good news is we are live Monday through Friday, 30 minutes before open. Drop your thumbs up on the video. Make sure you're subscribed. You're on mobile. Press high chat. X out the chat. Hit the thumbs up button. Second link for the nightly watch list in main channel. First link for the Scream Alerts boot camp and real estate course. But ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, it is the moment in 15 minutes you are going to get the non-farm payrolls, and that is going to dictate a lot of the market. But now on the side, SIVB, SVB Financial, Silicon Valley Bank, they are having a lot of issues. It is day number two now. The stock is down an additional 66%. You even have First Republic. I think they're down around 12% now. A lot of other banks are reacting. You got people coming out saying, no, it's not going to affect the big banks. Some people are already calling it a serious bank run. Some people say by Monday, SIVB is going to be getting bought out. There's a lot to it. You have Peter Thiel, people pulling money out. It's actually very, very wild. So today has a lot. You also had the Bank of Japan. Surprisingly, nothing came about that too crazy. The yen went up a little bit, but whole point is we are entering a very volatile day. Today will be all about the jobs report, but then, uh, excuse me, we're going to see where it goes from here. But the potential for a lot of wild swings and a lot of wild news today. Oh, Chattadonia, I hope you are ready. So we got non-farms here in about 12 minutes i'm gonna have analyst comments here in two minutes uh we are gonna begin with that but chatadonia good morning man how you living how you living are you ready we got a couple of minutes he got a couple of minutes and it's a, just another historic day i did get my poop in i got a good poop in i'm excited baby good morning open face what's up betty silverio what's up yeah Good morning. What's up, Hamid? Oh, Doppler. Oh, why's this? Kara, Young, Osha, Carissa, Noble, Edgar. Good morning, Edgar. What's up, Mopar Maniac? Malcolm King, Benji, Chad, Robo, Hantek, Lucky Soldier. Oh, oh, good morning, man. Good morning. David De La Torre, Jay Samuels, Norman, Joshua Harris, De La Greasy, DMC, Joseph, Mike, Kurt McGart, baby. What's up, Dennis? What's up, T-Lo? What's up, E.V. Clans? Charlie in the tree. Yo, yo. Oh, real fried rice. Good morning. Oh, Mr. Mr. Dispassionate Newman. Picky Audie. Dr. Suede. Oh, Alyssa Home Tours. Good morning. Jasmine. Good morning. Julio. Julio. Gilbert. Brady. Chattadonia. It's going to be a fun one. So, Chad, I hope you're locked and loaded. And get ready. I'm dude, I'm shocked. Again, SIVB is cool though. Not not too many people are freaking out about the big banks, but oh dude, I have so many crazy theories about this. You have no idea where this goes from here, Chad. This is like the this is like the next piece of information. You know that? This is great. So Chad, I hope you're ready for it. Uh I'll give you the jobs report now though. That is gonna be coming out soon and we're gonna start reading those comments. But the expectation for today is about 225,000 jobs added, 215,000 in private payrolls, 10,000, and then the unemployment rate is expected to come in at 3.4 with pay participation at 62.4. So here's the thing. We have to look at all of it today. It all really depends if the top line number like really misses or comes in lower, but a lot of people will be looking at that unemployment rate as well as the labor force participation and then anything related there. Uh, do we have wages? I think if weekly, uh, our average hourly wages too. Yeah. So we're going to have to deal with a lot of it all at once today. I'm sure there's going to be a multitude of reactions. So keep that in place. Be good. Be easy. Yeah, baby. What's up? What's up? <coughs> good morning. Good morning. Happy, happy Monday or Friday. Why did I say Monday? It feels like a Monday. I'm excited. It feels, this is that. It's crazy, man. I just, it sucks that it's a weekend because whatever happens here with the banks, you literally have to go into the weekend with any of uh, potential fear. The Fed futures are calmed down. I'm telling you. Uh, it's uh, yesterday with SIVB. It was a very, very uh, unique thing that occurred. So it's getting to the point now. Yeah, you even have lower odds right now. 
uh, on the Fed futures, so slightly lower, but it's uh, very, very weird. It's getting to the point where it's actually having a, a negative effect on rates, meaning it's more uh, serious in a certain way. So let's get into the report. You've got about nine minutes here. So economists are expecting uh, 225,000 down from 517,000 in the prior month. Unemployment range uh, unchanged at 3.4, matching the lowest level since 1953. Labor force participation rate also unchanged at 62.4. Average hourly earnings at 0.3 from the prior month, same as January, and reaccelerating from 4.7 uh, from on the year, up from 4.4 in the prior month. So that's the first breakdown. Yalla, SIVB is down 90% from Kramer recommendation. <laughs> so that's the official number. Uh, ironically, now Bloomberg, they have adjusted theirs. They have a lower estimate of 223 versus 517. They think labor force will be unchanged at 62.4 and unemployment rate steady at 3.4. Average hourly earnings to increase 0.3 monthly. Same as the prior year that corresponds with the year-over-year -year change of 4.7. And average hours worked likely to remain approximately at 34.7 per week following January surge. Uh, there's a lot riding on this data. It's one of the two major economic reports other than the CPI before the Federal Reserve meeting uh, set at the end of the month. Payrolls coming in stronger than expected or accelerating wages would indicate that inflation pressures are still alive and may prompt a more aggressive campaign from the central bank. Uh-oh, hot dog. Mm -hmm. Good morning. What's up, Firo? Good morning. Okay, you have a two-month subscriber and you just got your first time chat? God bless you. God bless you. Well, SVB is down a lot, but yeah, you'll notice, like, go to, like, Bank of America. They're not down as much today, and it's because a lot of people are coming out saying, no, 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 no. This isn't going to affect everybody else. No, it's not going to be this or that. But, I mean, who knows at this point? But like I was telling you yesterday, that's usually the first reaction of everybody calling it an uh, overreaction and saying it's just this, it's just that. You had, again, Peter Thiel and a couple of other, like, Silicon Valley uh I think even Bill Ackman made comments towards it, and people were just saying, just be careful of it. And T Peter Thiel said, limit all uh, banking there to 250000 Uh These month-to-month -month job numbers have a lot of noise to them, said Kara Murphy, chief investment officer at Kestra Investment Management. The Fed is uncomfortable leaning on the jobs number too much in order to determine a rate decision, but the fact that we've now had last month's number that looked really strong, now if we have the ADP that looks really strong, if we have a third point on Friday showing really strong numbers, I think the Fed can't look away. Uh, something to keep in mind here uh, is that gains in non-farm payrolls have exceeded the median estimate for nine straight months. The job market has consistently outperformed expectations, and by way of the benchmark, economists estimate that the U.S. needs fewer than 100,000 workers a month to absorb new entrants to the labor force of an underlying trend basis. So the numbers we've been getting lately are really strong. There's still a massive demand for workers. Uh, watch wages, average hourly earnings decelerated in recent months, even with other labor market indicators staying tight. That has led to a sense that maybe the Fed would be able to avoid a deep recession alongside tam tamer inflation and a softer labor market. But then something happened in January with payrolls and inflation reaccelerating across a range of indicators. If we get that expected pace of wage growth or something higher, it will signal that inflation is still a risk and not just a one month fluke. Uh, Crossmarks. Uh, Victoria Fernandez is also looking out for any signs of upticks in wages. There's anticipation that it's actually going to move higher and back up closer to 5% where we were previously at. She said, I think we will get some market movement if we have that. Uh, this curse... This, of course, is later than usual for monthly jobs report. The typical comes first Friday of the month. Uh, economist Stephen Stanley at Santana advises that this may have an impact on the February wage figure. Typically, when the survey extends past the 15th day of the month, average hourly earnings tends to have an upside bias. The February survey was late, so I'm expecting a 0.4 monthly rise. On uh, recent labor data has been mixed, but it still reflects a strong labor market. Initial jobless claims last week ticked up to their highest level since December, though that may have been a seasonal effect from New York teachers filing for benefits during spring break and what perhaps is even a bigger slowdown, continuing claims. Uh, jumped to the most in, since November 2021 to around levels before the pandemic. ADP reported a hotter than expected 242,000 jobs, and the job opening rate declined in January but remained high. Uh, Fed Chair Jerome Powell opened up the door to increasing the pace of rate hikes and speaking to the Senate this week, stoking expectations for a 50 basis point hike at the next meeting. He flagged stronger than expected data, including jobs data. If today's report comes in uh, above forecast, economists will see that 50 basis point hike growing more likely. 
Uh, Bloomberg's Anna Wong and Stuart Paul say that February's non-farm payroll will be closely watched for signs of support or undermining market pricing of 50 basis points at the March FOMC. If the print comes in as we expect, the monthly gain of 223, that signal won't be clear enough for the Fed to decide between 25 and 50, and it will wait to see February's, uh, February's CPI report on March. If the change exceeds 300,000, that will likely ensure a 50 basis poop point move and 50 basis poop uh, in March. Uh, Bloomberg's Economics believes the February jobs report won't fully incorporate the labor market softening that has occurred. We estimate that high profile layoffs already announced won't be reflected in the data until March jobs report consistent with the recent pickup in initial jobless claims, which won't come out until long after the March 21st FOMC meeting. Uh, Dennis Debauchery, founder of 22V, he says, according to our research, 300,000 headline and 5% average hourly earnings are needed for 50 basis point base case. So I'm glad to hear we were we were talking 300,000 last night. So that's good to see uh, we're not the only ones. We are not the only ones who are on that. Very interesting. Three minutes, Chad. Three minutes. Ba -da -ba -ba -ba. All right. Hold on, I'm getting a stream alert out. Make sure everybody's awake. You know what I'm saying? Gotta get you up bright and early. Uh, readings of non-farms have tended to beat forecast as of late, and today may be no different as the labor market indicators in the lead-up of the report are more positive than not. That bearish uh, for treasuries and the yield curve. Growth in the labor market will support consumer demand and fuel inflation, leading to more rate hikes. Yeah, get it. Get ready. You are you're an hour early. No, no, no. Two minutes. Two minutes, Habibi. Two minutes. The NASDAQ is green? Stop lying to me. Is it? No, almost. 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 Kind of crazy. Kind of crazy. s and is getting clapped. And get ready. Get ready. You're the go. No, you're the go, baby. SVB, the jobs data are not the only big story today. Markets are watching the struggles of SBV, SVB Financial, which stunned investors Wednesday when it said it would issue 2 billion shares and booked a 1.8 billion loss. The bank shares are plunging, spreading unease across the financial world. That's your last mention right there. I can't do it. It's at 30 bucks right now. That's crazy. All right. About one minute and 10 seconds, Chattadonia. We're either going to go to 4,000 or 3,000, dog. That's see, it. It's crazy, dog. It, it, it all depends. So I hope you guys are seeing anything above 300 is going to be a little bit more bearish. Anything below, people will calm down a little bit. But obviously, wages, I would say, are number two. And then the overall unemployment weight. So, so I would rate it headline number, then wages, and then everything all combined. And we'll see. But I'm sure one of them is going to surprise very, very weird. We are going to find out. So, Chad, 30 seconds. Watch the bonds. See if anybody front runs it. If you see a big volume on the bonds uh, in the next 30 seconds, somebody leaked it. So, let's see what happens, Chad. Good luck. I love you. God bless you. You're blessed no matter what. And get ready for a crazy day. It is about to begin. 20 seconds. Ooh. All right. 2.25. 300 will scare. If it comes in any higher, that's going to be terrifying. Mm -mm -mm. No front run. Oh, 311. Oof. And then uh, unemployment rate went up to 3.6, though. So that's kind of good. Wages dropped. And then average hourly earnings, 34.5. Labor force participation ticked up. And then underemployment rate, 6.8. That one's a hard read. So it's slightly above the 300,000. But then unemployment went up with it since more people ended up working and then the ratio and then wages actually fell. So month over month and a year over year. Huh. I think I'm leaning a little bullish on that one, but that it's not enough to destroy you, I guess. Mm, that one's an interesting one. So again, it's another beat. That's the only problem is you're at 300,000. That is still a that's still a very uh, high number, but. Again, unemployment rate has gone up to 0.2. So that's your first good sign. They revised last month lower. Uh, and then where else? The manufacturing was negative. Uh, or Yeah, everything got revised lower. Huh. Uh, not neutral. I think a slight bullish tilt on it. 
The only I don't I think the only thing that's bad is the headline number. That's it. Private payrolls and non farms both went up. Private payrolls not as much. Last time private payrolls was like what a hundred thousand above. This time it's only about fifty thousand dollars or fifty thousand jobs above. Uh, and then just three hundred thousand, just a shitty number. Not just the number we don't want to see. Uh, but unemployment rate going up, I think people are going to like that. And then nobody was expecting wages to come down. So the fact that wages came down, that one's interesting. But 3.6, I mean, this is like right below where you were at in October uh, or August. So the unemployment rate ticked up. So it's one of those reports with some cross currents. Yeah. I thought over 300,000 was bearish. It should be. But then the other two factors did good. So 300,000 is negative, so that's one point for the bears, right? But then unemployment rate went up, so that's one point for the bulls. And then wages went down, that's another point for the bulls. Uh, and then uh, labor force participation went up. So that one's now, I'd say it's 50-50, but leaning to the bear or the bulls on that one because now you have more people working, but it's reflecting more unemployment. So 50-50 for now. I mean, I'll tell you right off the bat, this reaction is tiny. Uh, honestly, I, I could agree with that. With the banks kind of weighing today, it, it could be a cuck. This is nothing. I mean, you're back to, you're barely higher than yesterday's price. So the yen got a pop off of it. I think a slight bullish tilt, but uh, with some of the volatility today, yeah, the other stuff could weigh on it. So, wow, the two-year treasury yields, they've slumped 18 basis points now from being down just seven points. Payroll gains were led by leisure and hospitality, uh, retail trade, government, and healthcare. Stock futures drop initially before turning green. Uh, the previous two months of payrolls were revised down by 34,000, so that undercuts the beat over expectations in January. Wage growth came in lower, but was expected lower than expected, but still hotter than January. So that's where the bears uh, you could take the average hourly earnings, even though it dropped today, it's still high. At least it's better than six percent. Uh, and then Fed swaps, did they move? Yeah, 56% now. So now we're 50-50 on the rate hike odds, but let's let this one marinate for a little bit and we'll see if anybody trips out on any other headlines or anything related to the banks. And then treasury yields are all dropping across the curve, especially the two-year. Mm -hmm. They're running it a little bit. A little bit. We'll find out. Yeah, the thing that sucks about this is that if this doesn't, like, really get you into a, a positive reaction and we kind of just cuck for the day, you, I mean, this is just going to push everything to CPI. But it's good, though, in the sense that this at least this could have been a panic report. So that's, uh, I think, what people might start looking at, myself included. Like, bro, this could we could have been down 1%. <laughs> right now like with everything going on we really really could have this one could have just totally destroyed us so the fact is it is kind of I don't think it's cooled down the situation but it's definitely some colder water uh considering what we've dealt with so we don't see a lot of payroll declines in these report but February information transportation warehouse both slip that's likely to add to the wave of layoffs fed is downgraded odds of 50 basis point rate hikes to under 50 percent uh, rate, rates fell hard in the wake of the data, extending steep decline. Sulfur futures uh, due in January are down 28 basis points, while the euro dollar yields in the red are about 20 to 39 basis points lower. Yields are sharply down the day before the jobs data. Sulfur futures due in January were 18 basis points lower on the day. Uh, with a move of 36 basis points priced in the swap market, a hike of 50 means the more likely scenario at the March meeting. Mm -mm. They did – so here's the deal. They revised the numbers this time, but they revised them lower, uh, which is very, very odd because the last couple of times that they've revised them, uh, it's all been higher. So actually now technically your strong jobs report over the last two meetings have actually been higher, believe it or not. And it's moving pretty slow. I don't know if you guys are, are realizing that, but usually by this time around, I feel like we start moving a lot more actively. Uh, but the right now, you so give it another like 10 more minutes and we'll see if this flips. But I don't know. It's, it's kind of weird. It's kind of creepy. It's either we're going to get a big, big volatile move or it's going to kind of be a little bit shorter and smaller. SIVB halted. Yeah, uh, SIVB is halted pending news. 
That's coming in right now, breaking. Yeah, SIVB is halted, uh, pending news, not because of trading. So remember, somebody was saying it yesterday, uh, or even bringing it up through the night, that they might even get like a buyout, uh, pretty much, or someone's gonna, a big bank is gonna end up owning them, or somebody's gonna try to come in and clean up that situation. But that's actually very big. We'll see how that plays out. Uh, bond yields going lower. The unemployment rate ticked up alongside the participation rate, which signals there were more people in the labor market and actively looking for work. Only two out of 61 economists in the survey predicting a 0.2 reading for monthly gain in average hourly earnings. So this is this really is a surprisingly soft figure. Uh, with the payroll figures, a bigger gain than forecast. Uh, the increase in the jobless rate and the easing back of wage gains have got to be encouraging for the Fed. There's no obvious case for reaccelerating to 50 later this month. It would probably take a very hot CPI next week to do that at this point. So there you go. Then as people are shifting a little bit, let's see how the market plays. But now you might start hearing that there. Essentially, if the CPI doesn't come in hot, we're not getting 50 basis points. So that's one out of two is down. This jobs report does not confirm 50 basis points. You have CPI on Tuesday, and that's pretty much going to be it. We'll see, though, in the meantime. I think intraday trading is going to be wild today. Yes, you need you need hot CPI for 50 basis points now. I could get behind that. And then again, they're talking about labor. The wages seem to be the biggest story. And then uh, surprisingly, labor force participation barely by 0.1. Mm-hmm. 300k is still big that's that was the number that was my number and a couple of other people had that number sadly it just came in 11,000 higher and then yeah SIVB is gonna be the this is your weird stepchild on the day this shouldn't you know we shouldn't have been dealing with this but like legitimately people are calling it a bank run it's not you know if you thought my thumbnails and my over dramaticism is a little excessive sometimes no not in this case uh, literally they are calling it a straight bank run I've, I've, I don't know when the last time you've seen your favorite investors and even like Peter Thiel and people just saying don't put put your money maximum two hundred fifty thousand dollars and then even the CEO yesterday was just saying listen we don't have a problem, but if you tell everybody we have a problem and everybody wants their money, then we have a problem. The two-year year is calming down, bro. Even yields right now are rocketing down, uh, which is a good sign for now. And I think this is just calming down. Like I'm saying, now non-farms are out of the way. I still think we need more digestion, but for the most part, the initial reaction to today's data that we just got about 10 minutes ago is simply now you need hot CPI to confirm 50, but... I wouldn't say this jobs report, pretty much if the Fed reported tomorrow, I, I think the Fed would do a quarter because now even the, the odds don't even know. Right now, the Fed future odds are saying, do whatever you want, Jerome Powell. But this data alone wasn't enough to uh, to cause it. SIVB is halted right now, uh, pending news. Mm-hmm. So you could start to see some signs of labor market softness in the data. The number of people who lost their jobs or completed temp work increased by 223,000. Number of people uh, jobless less than five weeks increased by 343,000. Bloomberg's dollar strength is touching a session low on the heels of a high, higher than expected unemployment figure and a 34,000 downward revision in the two-month net. So there's another thing to take notice there. Right off the bat, as people are referencing this, though, they are calling this a hotter report. So it does have those elements still. Don't 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 ignore the four percent or the uh, three hundred thousand jobs. Another very encouraging point: the Fed will be increase in the labor force participation that's gone to the highest level since March twenty twenty. Uh, Bloomberg's uh, chief in interest rate strategist Ira Jersey. Uh, says the Treasury market will look favorably on the wage data. Even though the headroll pay line topped expectations, February data shows a slowdown in aggregate labor income growth, which we think would be positive for the Treasury market and may undo some of the recent flattening, at least in the near term. Mm -hmm. The report does nothing to change Dark Powell. It keeps him at bay for now. But that's sadly, though, I, I again, I hate doing this to you guys all the time. But, you know, if you've been in the market for a couple of years now, you're, you're pretty used to it. But it's all about the CPI now. You know, imagine being so anticipated this week. We get the number. There's a little bit of good, a little bit of bad today. But, you know, now looking at the bonds and interest rates for now, this is all about CPI. 
So then we're just going to deal with SIVB and then the follow through of this and any other, you know, rebalancing. But that's it. But on its own, this is not enough for 50 basis points. I could get behind that. I wasn't even believing 50 basis points earlier this week, but this data kind of goes hand in hand where you need you need CPI to surprise the shit out of everybody. Otherwise, I, I think they're doing a quarter again. So note the average number of hours worked has also came down 34 and a half in February from a downward revised 34.6. So the job market is so hot that it's pulling people into the labor force, boosting participation rate. That should also shrink somewhat the job openings to job seekers ratio that's been elevated. So another day, another upside beat in payrolls with headline job growth coming in at 311 versus expected 225. That being said, there are some mitigating aspects of the data. Revisions were negative. Wage growth was lower than expected at 0.2 and the unemployment rate unexpectedly ticked up to 3.6. That looks to be a function of a rise in labor force participation. It rose from 62.5 to 60, from 62.4. Household employment increased by 177. All in, the number, the number is not a hawkish one. And given the prevailing concern about the banking system it's not a huge surprise to see fixed income rally a little bit more on this it certainly gives the fed an excuse to do 25 rather than 50 so taking more rate hikes out of the price understandably provides bomb to financial assets whether equities hang on those gains is another question altogether uh -oh, hot dog Notable is construction continue, continues to add workers despite a slump in housing. Construction employment grew by 24,000 in February with gains every month for the last year uh, note that with the increase in black unemployment rate is much bigger than overall. It went up from 5.7 from 5.4, where the overall went, rate went up by 0.2. This will reinforce concerns of Democratic lawmakers that the Fed's monetary tightening will disproportionately damage minorities. We already saw Powell facing increasing questions on that earlier this week. Two-year yields have moved far more from 5% to 4.7 4, 4 in just two days as investors start to become concerned about small banks. This is the biggest two-day drop since 2008. Uh-oh, hot dog. Mm -mm. The 10 years pumping, yeah. Dude, 1.2, even the two-year. And then First Republic Bank, they're still getting smashed. They're another victim of the SIVB. SIVB is halted right now, pending news. The slightly lower number than expected wage numbers are helping the stock market initially, says Matt Maley, chief economist at Miller Talbach. However, it's hard to think that it was a weak enough to change the thinking of higher for longer in the marketplace for very long. I could get behind that. I think today's report doesn't change anything in the midterm and just offers a little bit of short-term relief. I could definitely stand by that. Mm -mm. Okay, Chad, I'm going to go to the bathroom real quick. Follow me on Instagram at the Trading Fraternity. We still got 15 more minutes till 30 minutes. So we got a lot of time here. First reaction is slightly positive. It took you out of the gulag. You're only up a third of a percent right now. And there is a, it came in hot, but there is other pieces that are getting people to chill out a little bit. So we will see. Mm-mm. All right, follow me on Instagram, at the Trading Fraternity. I will BRB, my friends. BRB. The data, I'm just going to say that as I look at the green and the red blinking on the terminal, uh, John, it's simple. This is a disinflationary pulse and sets us up for what if we see on Tuesday some form of disinflationary trend? I reject any interpretation of this initial read whatsoever in terms of the there we go. I like expectation. I, like I completely there we go. reject that. They're because they're going to come to me and say, I mean, what do you think? <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, looking at this, it makes no sense. We had person after person come on this show and say they're going to be forced to go 50 basis points if you get above that 250 number. We got 311. We did not get a significant downward revision to the prior month's employment report. By all levels, this is a very strong labor market that still gets revised to the upside. So, yes. The Fed can say whatever they want, but the bottom line is, based on what Fed Chair Jay Powell's laid out for himself, it's going to be really hard well, to let me give this. you Let me give you a quick possibility here. When you look at the uh, jobs that were created, uh, construction jobs were at, uh, on the month up by 24,000, a bit of a surprise, but manufacturing jobs down 4,000. That's the first loss in a while, <laughs> and it's also a suggestion that people who had higher paying jobs uh, were struck from payrolls. Leisure and hospitality Hospitality is the biggest job gainer, 105,000. And that suggests that we're still trying to fill jobs that were open, but they are lower paying jobs.
jobs. And so maybe we're not seeing as much wage pressure as we had seen. And my, my initial reaction when I saw the number was, uh, now here we get the no landing guys coming back again. You know, <laughs> what if we have? So uh, that's your interpretation. Seriously, uh, I, no, I'm not going to. I'm going gonna, gonna to be with Lisa on this. It's a little hard to interpret, and I don't want right. to give you a quick answer. But I suspect people will say, well, maybe right. we don't have to have a hard landing, yeah. and we can bring inflation. I value revised data as we get to our esteemed guest, John, and it's real simple. There's over one million jobs in the last 90 days. The three month moving average with revisions yeah. is 351,000. There was a point where Randall Krosner ripped the chalk out of my hand and said, Tom, the demographics say we could go under 100,000 as normal. We are miles away from a normal job economy. It's really difficult to stay open-minded after the <clears throat> jobs report, especially in the first few minutes. But given experience, sometimes the first move is not the right move. But I will keep stressing that's the early interpretation of the incoming information so far. Seem to de-emphasize the headline number, which is a clear beat and in line with what people said would lead to the 50 basis point door That's remaining open. But the attention is firmly elsewhere at the moment. A lift in unemployment. Yeah, everyone's looking at everything else. I don't know, man. I think the attitude is very cautious right now. I, I think the bears are lurking, and that's the problem. I think everyone's still tripping out on this bank shit, and they don't know what's going on. But it seems like it seems like everybody is very cautious and does not think, you know, everyone's just worried that this is going to Raul at any moment. But it seems right now everybody's focusing on everything else. Uh, the jobs report came in hot, uh, but the other factors ended up being good. So that's kind of where we're at right now. But this time around, that's not enough to uh, get everybody up, you know, 1%. We're already up 0.4, actually. So I think compared to uh, where we were at, I mean, 38.90 to 39.35 on the futures, that's like, what, 50 points? So it's a decent amount, but you're still in the gulag from yesterday and, uh, you're what? You're almost like an hour away from the bell? Mm-hmm. SS, SSYS. Oh, I thought I thought that was SIV. But that's like $18 a share. So the market is now pricing in a 50-50 chance of the Fed moving 25 versus 50, said Francis Donald, global chief economist for Manulife. There's enough of the doves and the hawks to chew on these figner, figures, and it's not like this number changes anyone's preconceived perception of the labor market. It looks like Tuesday's inflation print will be the tiebreaker for market expectations and probably a Fed officials too. Uh, Catherine Judge, an economist at CIBC, she says that it all comes down to next week's inflation report. This will be the decider over the March decision. Overall, this data does not tip the scales on the call of 25 or 50, and we await next week's CPI print as the key deciding factor. Uh, employment of temporary service helpers, which is considered a leading indicator in the labor market, actually increased for a second month after falling for two months. It shows that the labor market remains tight. It seems like January's data was not a fluke. It was only revised down by 13,000 to 504. In total, revisions to December and January was 34,000, lower than initially reported. That is still a very strong labor market. And you're starting to see the wave of layoffs since late last year show up in the data. Employment and information has decreased by 54,000 since November. Uh, employment in the transportation and warehousing is down 42,000 since October. Kick the can Friday, pretty much. Uh, but I think we're going to get a little bit more. TD Securities, Priya Misra, says the market is reacting to average hourly earnings coming in weaker. I guess it lowers the pressure on the Fed to go 50, but the labor market is still strong and wages are running at 4.6, far greater than the 3.5 that the Fed needs. The Fed will not stop hiking until they see the labor market. Uh, until they, this, oh, wait, they will not, until they see the labor market follow. Oh my gosh, wait, where are all these going? Uh, we'll not stop hiking until they see the labor market weaken, so we think that the 210 curve should flatten. We should see the market keep some risks of 50 in March. Not a bad report for risk assets, but financials loom larger. We stay long on the 10 years here. The VIX, otherwise known as Wall Street's fear gauge, has tumbled 3.5%. Omer Sharif, uh, founder of Inflation Insights, says this is just what the Fed ordered. This report screams soft landing and looks to be a pretty good one for the Fed. Uh, contracts on the S&P are up as well as the NASDAQ. They're now trading at session high and Bitcoin, Bitcoin, Bitcoin turns positive. There's hot news. Well, it's weird. I mean, the headline number was hot. I mean, the jobs report is super hot. That's it. There's no other way to put it. Jobs report is their jobs. Their market is still running strong. And now you just don't have wages running up and you have a little bit more unemployment 
as people are looking for jobs and that small increase of people looking for jobs meant a smaller point did not get a job. So it's a, it's a very interesting concept here where the data came in hot, but everybody is looking at the other stuff. They're looking at unemployment rate. They're looking at the wages and then they're looking at even like average hourly worked and labor force participation. But for the most part, the broad factor, nothing has changed, but this wasn't like you had a shock surprise in all of the things we saw, you know, run up. Like, you know, you were watching inflation data come back up. We were watching a lot of things tick back up. It didn't do much, but that's why sadly everybody's saying the tiebreaker now is going to be the, uh, it's going to be the CPI on Tuesday. Diane Swank, chief economist at KPMG says, don't get so excited about the slowdown in earnings. She sees payroll gains as more important. Our Bloomberg colleague, Steve Matthews, passes along her analysis. This keeps half a point on the table because of the sheer volume of paychecks that we're generating, which is buoying demand. At the end of the day, what the Fed is worried about is how strong demand is relative to supply. The issue is not wages, it's aggregate demand. And this is feeding into aggregate demand, which is buoying inflation. Mm-hmm. Long-term play on SIVB. I would stay away from SIVB if you want to try to play any sort of bounce. Try to take advantage of a different bank. Uh, but SIVB, I mean, SIVB could get bought out over the weekend. So that's the thing. Somebody's going to come in and try to save them pennies on the dollar or they have a problem. But uh, the problem, SIVB, I'm telling you, from the time we ended the stream to right now, it, the situation got 50% worse. Hence, the stock is down 60% uh, simply because people are pulling money. That's it. Like yesterday, we were just talking about it, right? And we were like, oh, what if it does this? Okay, that's kind of a worry. People are worried about financials, yibbity bobbity boo. And then right at the end of the day, a lot of people were coming out saying, hey, pull your money out. Uh, <laughs> they were like, uh, and the and the CEO is like, yeah, we don't have a problem unless everybody pulls their money out. And then what did everybody start doing? They started pulling their money out. So it's a, it's a very, very interesting situation. But if you're going to try to play it, I would go for somebody else. Uh, the big banks aren't down as much, so we're going to see. I have my bank. My Bank of America got destroyed. I'm still in it. I, I still plan on holding it. Uh, it would suck if this spread to other banks, but for the most part, I'm I'm planning on writing it through. But this, I, I don't think this situation is over uh, in the sense that we're going to really find out what the real effect is. Permable moon man. What's up, baby? Good morning. Good morning. So right now, again, employment them numbers came in hot on the headline. Uh, employment Unemployment went up a little bit, surprisingly, and uh, wages went down. So small factors were good, broad factors were bad, and we are up a decent amount since uh, how low we were. I think we could still drop here today. I just think I, I, everybody's paranoid right now. I don't think – I think we still have to wait till uh, Tuesday, and that will decide the Fed futures, but today – cool down the Fed futures and then there's just a there's a very lurking sense here that not everything is all well but who knows that could feed into a bull a bull move today if everybody is so scared but at the same time it's not a you're you're, you're moving very cautious as uh, is the best way to put it and I think how people are even explaining the data today everybody is still kind of you know you know the number is bad but you have good signs and it you know most people were kind of expecting death in a weird way this could have been worse. So that 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 is what's keeping you up, I think. I think that's the only thing that's keeping you up right now is quite simply, it could have been worse. Like I'm telling you, we could have been down a lot right now if this report came in as hot as January and it didn't. So you ha- you kind of have people, all right, it's not that bad. It was bad, but it wasn't that bad. So let's see. Uh, Bloomberg's Jersey says that the growth of aggregate labor income employment x wages and x hours work showed uh slowed a lot in february thanks to lower wage print and a slightly shorter work week although the fed's not done it could take this data as somewhat more dovish the central bank still has two key data prints coming in uh with cpi and retail sales before they make their decision over the pace of hikes and where the fed members put their dots mm-hmm. yeah that's it as long as no other shoe drops today but i think people are worried about that did the bonds just come down? So see, whenever the bond market, just kind of like yesterday, remember, uh, we were up in the morning, energy and bonds were doing good, but low key, if any of this flips, I mean, then there you go. Yeah, Silvergate is up 30% right now. 
FRC, they're kind of tied there to SIVB. They're down. Yeah, Bank of America, the big banks are up right now. And that's everybody across Wall Street this morning. Everybody was saying, oh, we're not going to, you know, oh, we don't think it's going to affect the big banks. I think Muhammad El Arian, he even said the same thing. So we'll find out. What was it? FRHC? Or no, FRC? So expectations for the Fed terminal rate have come down quickly. Traders are pricing in a total increase of 81 basis points at the next four meetings to about 5.5 just two days ago. It looked like we were heading towards 6%. The decline in two-year Treasury yields has eased some for now. They're down about 14 basis points compared with seven before the data re was released. The early exuberance over the moderation in wages had sent them down almost 20 basis points at one point. Thing is, we still have CPI report. Nothing conclusive today. Yeah, so stocks might chill out if the bonds chill out. The 10-year and the 2-year are both calming down now after their initial bullish reaction. And then Muhammad El Arian says this makes next week's CPI even more influential for the Fed. Uh, Bryce Doty, Senior Portfolio Manager at SIT Investment Associates, had this to say. The jobs data provides a huge relief for investors uh, fearing the Fed raising by half a percent. While the numbers were stronger than expected, 311 versus 225, uh, expected earnings growth was mild at 0.2 increase and unemployment rose from 3.4 to 3.6. Even labor force participation ticked up slightly to 62.4. Uh, from 62.4 to 62.5. Given the Fed Chair Powell's fear of higher wages causing inflation, this should cause the fear. Hey, payday Friday, baby. My check layered. My bank's good. Happy hunting. That's it. You ain't in that SIVB. You good, baby. Horna. Good morning, Catadonia. <laughs> good morning. Thank you for the education. Thank you for being here. And shout out everybody's. A lot of people were sending me stuff too yesterday. And it's good, man. I'm glad you guys could be here for it. It's a it's a wild day. The market getting even wilder. And even today, though, I think we're still going to have a... We're going to have a little bit more in store. This one's not easy. Oh, see balls. <laughs> good morning. Good morning. Chattadonia, how you living, man? Good morning again. We already had a couple of good mornings here, but it's good to see you, Chad. I hope you're living good. I hope you are feeling blessed. But what's up, man? What's going on, Chattadonia? Good morning. Are y'all ready for news, Lake or Jay? What's up, baby? What's up, man? Y'all living good? Oh, we appreciate you, man. I appreciate you. That's it. It's good to be. Let's go, man. We got to. It's good to have a team to make it through the end of the year because this year is going to be crazy, bro. So I think we blessed to have each other. Amen. Amen. What's up, Force Driven? What's up, y'all? Again, baby. Just Chase. Good morning, man. Chattadonia. <laughs> What's up, baby? Nick Dean. RJ. RJGI. Darian Taylor. Banks Sinatra. Jesse Ramirez. What's up, Jerry Woods? I saw you early in the morning, Jerry. You still here, baby? What's up, Lateral? What's up, C-Bones? What's up, Nelson Rogers? Jose Ortiz, Lost One, Sajib, Anthony, baby, Keith, Matthew Bailey, good morning, Robin Wills, Jim Birch, Lurkin Bear, Key Rot. What's up, Benny Silverio? <laughs> Friday Fun Bunch, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. San Diego Meetup. I mean, let's, man, let's get through the banking stuff. Let's get through, let's see what happens with CPI, bro. What happens if the world goes into turmoil by, by next Tuesday? What happens if SIVB goes bankrupt? What if Warren Buffett buys SIVB? Blah, 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 blah. Who knows? We'll see, man. We'll see. We will see, but good morning. Good morning. Vegas this weekend. Maybe next weekend or the weekend after that. Uh, this week, I actually, I, I can't even stick around today. I got to go somewhere else today and do some stuff. By the end of the day, mm -hmm, they will bail us. I've, that's what people are saying. They're saying uh, Buffett or somebody's going to come in and buy it. It's not that expensive. I mean, think about it. You could go buy somebody all you need. If you could if you could uh, fund the capital needs, you could go buy $90 billion of bonds at a 70% discount right now, even though they bought them 70% higher. But the whole point is it's, it's not like they have it. They don't have a bad balance sheet, but somebody needs them, uh, if that makes sense. Uh, it's like if somebody has the money, you you could buy it. Their debt is bad, but it's I mean it's gonna mature and you get all of that money back at an interest rate. You just have to deal with any uh, deposit outflows and everybody pulling their money. It's like in a weird way, this is like a more legit FTX, uh, but but way way better. 
But the whole problem is, just like FTX, is everybody pulling out all their money now in the middle of uh, assets already in a tough position. So it's very, very weird. All right, so where are we at? Let's get into the news, Chatadonia. I hope you're having a good morning and welcome. We got about 30 minutes till the bell. Uh, the jobs number came in hot, but the other factors came in good. So that's the weird part. Uh, SVB uh, freefall continued as the company's silence about the planned capital raise spooked investors. The situation has turned into a painful vortex of lack of information. RBC's John Arfstam said VC firms, including Peter Thiel's founder fund and Verge investors, uh, urged investors to pull out. Uh, people familiar said SVB slumped 63 percent pre-market before trading was halted. SVB faces an extreme version of an issue hitting all banks. All U.S. lenders parked a chunk of their money in treasuries and other bonds last year, but SVB took a different level. An investment portfolio swelled to 57% of total assets. No other competitor among 74 U.S. major banks had more than 42%. The Treasury is monitoring SVB carefully. White House Economic Advisor Bharat Ramaruti told CNBC, Treasuries extended their surge in the wake of data as traders sought a haven. Futures were whipsawed and the dollar drop. Banking shares sold off with First Republic Bank, slumping as much as 21% pre-market. Gold advanced with oil. Non-farm payrolls rose 311,000 last month, more than expected, but less than January's blowout print. The data muddied the water as the Fed decides whether to step up the pace of rate hikes. The unemployment rate ticked up to 3.6 as the labor force grew wages uh, and grew as labor force grew and monthly wages rose 0.2. Inflation is set to stick around. Uh, research from the New York Fed shows revisions to PCE showed gains in the fourth quarter were strong enough and more broad-based than previously thought. Those adjustments, combined with another hot reading in January, point to more persistent pressures. The analysis is based on a model known as the multivariate core trend. Uh, no big bang from Hariko Karuda, the Bank of Japan, did zip in his last meeting, sending the yen and yields lower. Kuzea Ueda was formally approved as his successor. The ECB will step up their inflation fight by hiking more, uh, four more times to 3.75 and unwinding $5 trillion of bond portfolio at a quicker pace. That's what the survey shows. Morgan Stanley and Barclays seek a peak of 4%, while J.P. Morgan and Citi put a stop to 35 Neurotic U.S. stocks uh, hanging on Fed policy are boxed in a neurotic trading range that will only break once un economic data unambiguously points to a recession, Bank of America strategist said. Investors pulled $500 million from equity funds and piled $18 billion into cash and $8.2 billion into bonds in the week of March 8th. Uh, City is rebuilding their European leverage loan desk after a series of departures. Adani is seeking to sell 4 to 5% stake in Ambuja Cement for $450 million. Tesla tapped two Chinese suppliers to help cut material costs. Uh, chart of the day, crypto tokens including Bitcoin and Ether are feeling the heat from SVB fallout as traders fear contagion. Extended Bitcoin weakness may trigger an unwinding of the Golden Cross, which it reached in the February high. If that happens swiftly, it may even mean a repeat reversal of the early one in 2022 that coincided with a multi-month crypto decline. Uh, 1 p.m. Banker Hughes recount, 2 p.m. Fed budget statement, Janet Yellen appears before House of Ways Means Committee, and then SXSW conference in Austin. <clears throat> uh, the U.S. is working to close a loophole and restrictions imposed by Inspur Group that leaves companies like Intel free to keep supplying Chinese server maker affiliates. Argentina expanded, uh, exchanged a total of $21 billion in local debt swaps, alleviating, alleviating immediate concerns of potential domestic default. Canada added 21,000 jobs uh, last month, more than double what was expected in following a reading of 150,000 in January. Uh, Canada added 21,000 jobs last month, more than double what was expected in following a reading of 150,000 in January. Brazil's annual inflation slowed less than expected, keeping pressure on the ECB to tighten further. The rate increased to 5.6% in February uh, from 5.77%. Uh, ousted Peruvian President Pedro Castillo was given a three-year pre-trial detention for allegedly working a rig public contract while in office. Uh, the U.K. economy grew more strongly than forecast in January. GDP rose 0.3, recouping some of the 0.5 drop in December. Norway's headline inflation slowed to 6.3 in February from 7%, more than expected. Turkey abruptly stopped the transit of sanctioned goods to Russia on March 1st in compliance with sanctions. The Kremlin opened up Vladimir Putin's schedule this year around the G20 summit in India in September to make it possible for him to participate after skipping the last two. 
Iran and Saudi Arabia will restore diplomatic ties, the deal to restore relations, which includes commitments to reopen embassies within two months, sell dollars against Swiss francs. Deutsche Bank said, if you think your pricing of the Fed funds rate has peaked or close to it, it has the fixed income equivalent of being long two-year treasuries. Uh, China credit grew strong in February. Aggregate financing reached $460 billion. Uh, the broad M2 measure expanded 12% on the year. Consumer spending in China picked up rapidly in recent weeks. High frequency indicators suggest dining and travel in particularly are boosting a recovery, increasingly reliant on local demand. Japan's household spending fell 0.3 in January, uh, worse than estimated, though factory gate inflation slowed more than expected to 8.2. Xi Jinping was unanimously voted as China's president for a third term. The move gives him five more years of power. They had an election? <laughs> Uh, millions of barrels of Russian diesel are being temporarily stored on oil tankers. Of uh, That is by far the biggest pileup floating since at least 2016, Kepler said. The accumulation points to difficulties in replacing EU buyers of Russian fuel. Supply is expected to surge as Russia lifts output, putting additional pressures to find new buyers. Uh, two form traders at Bank of America Merrill Lynch unit were sentenced to a year and a day in jail for manipulating precious metals. Oil headed for the biggest weekly loss since early February. The gap between Brent and Dubai crude, a key proxy for demand in Asia, is rallying. Tin uh, lead base metals lower. Wheat rose. Competition for wheat sales from major exporters is heating up as spot prices from Southeast Europe and France edge lower. Uh, PSG is interested in buying State de France, the stadium valued at 600 million euros. Uh, John Texter plans to raise equity capital for his Eagle Football Holdings investment vehicle after a recent acquisition spree funded by debt. Hong Kong chip equipment maker ASMPT, ASMPT drew takeover interest from PE firms including PAG. Uh, SVB reaction, U.S. and European bank stocks fell on concerns of much broader danger. The sell-off shows how nervous the market is, said DWS Bajorn Jesk. This is a classic bank run, and when the bank run starts, you don't want to be the last guy there, said Ava Labs president John Wu. The fund Jenny Fielding is watching the situation, has not advised her portfolio companies on how to proceed. Uh, German financial regulator B.A. Finn said they're taking account of issuances at SVB and its oversight of the bank's branch in the country. Swedish pension fund Electa was SBV, SVB's fourth biggest shareholder at the end of 2022 with holdings worth $605 million. Uh, Merck key true to lung cancer trial meets primary endpoint. Flipkart founder Benny Bazal looks to recharge Phoebe with $100, $150 million investment. Caterpillar cut to sell at UBS, price target $225. Apple cut to sell at Lightshed, price target $120. Boeing and GMR to make uh, converted freighters to tap India cargo boom. UK CMA extends review in the Apple store. Uh, it's Oscar weekend, uh, and organizers are hoping to put a drama-free show on here a year after the slap was set up set up a crisis to respond to issues. That was a year ago that Chris Rock got slapped? That's crazy. Uh, everything, everywhere, all at once is a widely expected to nab the top award. The contenders for an upset include the Banshees of Iner Inertion and All Quiet on the Western Front. Kate Blanchett in Tar is a favorite for Best Actress. Angela Bassett may surprise for supporting category for Wakanda Forever. And Austin Butler in Elvis and Colin Farrell in Banshees may lead the battle for Best Actor. In Sports, American Chad Rainey is leading Golf Players Championship after the first round of Florida. Rory McIlroy is in danger of missing the cut after shooting over par. March Madness kicks off the new week, and you could start filling out your bracket for the NCAA after they announced their selection on Sunday. A luxury island getaways just got fancier, fancier from Greek to the Seychelles. At least seven new or upgraded island hotels are opening their doors this year and promise an experience that's a level up from mere relaxation. An LGBTQ revolution in India may be underway as the Supreme Court hears arguments to legalize same-sex marriages from Monday. It's a sign of a rapidly shifting social mores in the country and would doubt the number of people and would be double the number of people uh, globally with marriage equality rights if it passes. Uh, 1970 star Robert Blake, who went from acclaim to notoriety when tried and acquitted in the killing of his wife. He died from heart disease at the age of 89, the AP reported. The Beretta actor once hoped for a comeback, but never recovered from the long ordeal in 2001. And then on this day in history, Mildred Galars became the first woman to be convicted of treason against the U.S. The American broadcaster was employed by the Nazis to disseminate propaganda during World War II, including a radio show aimed at U.S. forces in Europe, interspersing nostalgic music and speculation about the fidelity of the wives they left home. She was released in 1961. That's savage, Mildred. That's crazy.
The first U.S. woman to be convicted of treason was a radio host. Oh, man. She said, listen to these old songs. And your wife is cheating on you. That's cr that's treason, bro. That's treason. That's crazy, bro. That's crazy. Well, that was today. Thanks, Mildred. Fuck you, Mildred. Okay, Mildred. Mildred, I don't like Mildred. Okay, I don't like Mildred. I don't, I don't like even with this jobs report. I feel like you got a treasonous jobs report. Now we got to wait till Tuesday. Oh, my goodness. So, Chad Adonia, I hope you're feeling good. I got some pre-market movers. Where are my pre-market movers, bro? Hold on. They're hiding. They were hiding here. I got you, bro. I got you. So, we still got a couple of plays, a couple of things moving today. Uh, all birds, bird share slumped 21% after the sneaker brand reported fourth quarter net revenue that missed. Banking stocks slid in the United States with SIVB leading the downside. Caterpillar falls 1.6 as UBS cuts their construction machinery maker to sell from neutral. DocuSign falls 14% after the e-software company gives fourth quarter billings that were weaker than expected. Gap falls 7.5 after the clothing company's first quarter results uh, missed estimates and fell short. JD shares extended decline in U.S. following Thursday's results with analysts saying the e-commerce firm sales are likely to remain weak. Shares are down 1.9. Oracle fell 4.9 after the software company reported cloud license on a premise license revenue. That was weaker than expected. Roblox rises 3% as Jeffries raises online games designer to buy from hold, saying that they expect continued growth through the near-term macro and competitive pressures. And Strata System shares rise 12% after receiving a formal nine-bonding offer from Nano Dimensions to buy the stock for... Uh, it doesn't own for $18 per share in cash. SSYS. And then Roblo did good. That's good. Roblo got an upgrade. Roblo got an upgrade. Would you look at that? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But S I guess that's still $2 on SYSS. SSYS. That's a tongue twister. But Chattadonia. That is your news for the day. We're early, bro. We're early. So again, uh, just to give you a recap from the jobs report, U.S. added 311,000 jobs in February, topping estimates. Leisure and hospi hospitality sectors led payroll gains. Higher unemployment, easing wages uh, offered Fed a mixed bag. Construction keeps hiring despite housing slump. Uh, the wages uh, ended up going down, but still up month over month. And then unemployment ticked up by 0.1%. ba da ba 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 all right. Is it bad? I need to go pee again. It's only, it's been 30 minutes since I went pee, right? I think so. So you guys should even be getting an ad soon. So that's great. You know what I'm saying? Mm. I think we good. I think we good, man. I think we good. So Chad, I love you. God bless you. I'll be right back. Let's see what they're saying. Any updates? Oh, is that Muhammad El Aryan? Oh, you just had him. Here, let me go back to Muhammad. <clears throat> okay, I love you. Follow me on Instagram, at the Trading Fraternity. I'll be right back. We've got so much to work through through the next 60 minutes. I'm pleased to say that we kick it off with two all-stars. Mohammed al Arian of Queen's College, Cambridge, and BlackRock's Rick Reader with one eye on SVP, down more than 60% in the pre-market, halted with news pending. When we get that news, I'll bring it to you. Mohammed, first to you. Your response to that jobs data about 31 minutes ago. Really tricky, John, and it highlights the fluidity, the unusual uncertainty, not just about economics and policy, but also what's being introduced by policy communication. This is a very, very difficult environment now. Um, and I, I feel for Rick and others in the investment management <laughs> industry that have to make decisions based on this. Well, Rick, you get some sympathy this morning. I'm sure that's welcome. <laughs> what do you make of it? Uh, uh, deservedly so. The, uh... Listen, I think that, I mean, the number is strong. I mean, you know, listen, there's some governors on this. I mean, you take some comfort with the average aerial earnings coming down. You know we are we're coming off the boil in, in terms of hiring. But, gosh, you, you look at these component parts, and we talked about it last month on the show. You look at leisure, hospitality, health care, education. You're still not where you need to get to in terms of fulfilling the job requirements or the or the number of people for those sectors. So you you know you've got some durability to this employment strength, and it came through again uh, again this month. So, like Mohammed said, you've got what is a solid a solid employment report. You've got solid um, hiring in this country, and it makes the uh, the Fed's job tough. In the immediate aftermath of that jobs report, Rick, it appears that we're trading on 
everything but the headline number. We're trading on a reduction right. in hours worked, an increase in the participation rate, wages coming in softer, unemployment up to 3.6%. Would you say that's the correct interpretation, the right move? So, so you know, quite frankly, I think it's. I think there's some of that. I think it's more of you know you got a little bit of uh, of whiff of financial instability in the last 24 hours. That's what's buoyed a lot of, particularly the front end of the yield curve, is people saying, "Gosh, you know, long and variable lag may just have sped up a bit." You're seeing that play out. This is a pretty unique situation on the West Coast. That being said, it's illustrative of you've got to think through. You know, how do you quickly slow down things like commercial real estate, residential real estate, et cetera? What's the impact on the system? I think that's a bigger factor than, quite frankly, a, uh, what is, you know, a strong, albeit slowing in some areas, uh, payroll report. Mohammed, January 26th, you wrote for Bloomberg Opinion why the Fed should raise rates 50 basis points. They didn't. The Fed chair earlier this week opened the door to a 50 basis point move. And to Rick's point, Mohammed, we've now introduced some financial stability risk and yields have backed away big time. So where are you now? So, John, you know my view. Because the Fed has been consistently late, Mohammed. the probability of a market accident and the probability of the Fed having to hike into a slowing economy and a recession is uncomfortably high. That is the reality. That is what happens when you fall so far behind. Um, Rick is absolutely right. I mean, the marketplace is keeping an eye on too many market accidents. Too many. And saying, you know what? The Fed won't have the guts to do what it needs to do for inflation. That is what you're seeing playing out because parts of this employment report suggest 25, parts suggest 50. And when oh, you've got man. that balance, you then look for a tiebreaker and the immediate dry breaker is what's happening in selected banks. Now, it's absurd, John, for me to say, of course, next week's CPI will matter a great deal, and that will be another tiebreaker. And it's absurd because we have become excessively data dependent. You and I have talked about this. There is no strategic or structural underpinning to monetary policy right now. So you've got a yield curve, this is the two-year point, good. which I is like going all over Mr. the place. Alarian. You've got expectations mm -hmm. for policy going all over the place. And that is not how you conduct either a very important segment of the marketplace or policy. Well, let's put some numbers on that phrase all over the place. Two days ago, the two-year yield was fine. All righty. So, Chad, uh, I think that was a good listen. I mean, as you see, everybody's just juggling today between the jobs report and getting ready for CPI now on Tuesday, but then also this thing going on with SIVB. I like what that first guy said. It's just kind of what happened in the last 24 hours is just financial instability is starting to kind of spread here throughout the market. Look at MTB now and Bank of America are down. Uh-oh, they flipped. So yeah, banks are starting to move again. And then even then another one, MTB, but it's going to get pretty wild here. We're already back down now to where the report came out, which is negative. So, like we said, the jobs report came in uh, hot, hotter than expected by almost 100,000 jobs. Uh, but there was only positive things in terms of wages and unemployment rate going up. Fed future odds have now dropped to about 50-50, uh, which is crazy. And then everybody is still worried here about all of the banks. Goldman's on the low now, too. So, we got about, what, 10 more minutes here? 10 more minutes. Chattadonia, what do you got for me, man? It's game time. Let's go. I hope you're in the game. I hope you're ready for the next couple of days. And welcome. Welcome to all of the craziness, my friends. Welcome to all of the craziness. But tell me, what do you got? What's your first play of the day, Chattadonia? What is your first play of the day? Yeah, FRC, we had that one up there too. KRE 49 puts. Any NFP too strong. UAL calls. SIVB calls or puts. Wells Fargo puts. Stay impatient. Cash puts. Buying Bank of America. 200 day watch. Watching the banks. Lift puts. So many puts. Puts, puts, puts. Sitting on my hands. Zero day calls. Zero day calls. Zero day calls. SQQ. Short JPM. FAZ share. Goldman Sachs puts. ZM calls. Cash puts on JPM. SQQQQ. Spy puts. Tesla puts. QQQ puts. Nvidia calls. SVB crying. Sell SPX. Bank of America call. June MES long. Still in eight free Apple dailies. Meta long. Uh, Meta lottos. QQQ. SJM. Nvidia 
it for now. Permaculture Bull, more Bank of America, Coin Short, FAZ, Google Puts, Spy Shorts, SVB, QQQ, Bitcoin Long, Spy, Zero Day Puts, Calls on Anything, FAS, All In on SF, SVIB, XOM, Try Not to Cry, Apple Credit Spread, Puts on Calls, I Be Out, Short Myself, Cash in Bonds, Daily Bank of America, Spy Puts, Hurting on Credit Spreads, Adding to the Bank of America Long Term, Holding Tesla Put, Call My Mom, Patience, Bitcoin Long, SIVB, Possible Capitulation, Starbucks NFT, uh, NVIDIA Puts, Dust, Still in AI, FRC, FRC, Enphase Calls, TQQ Hood, Cut Some Money and CVX Calls, ICUP, ha 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 Bill, zero day options, add to the field of the fire, ASRT, Oli, deep July spy puts, uh, bye bye bye, adding Bank of America, thinking BlackRock puts, long on God, uh, maybe NVIDIA, Palo Alto chain, looks nice, waiting 30 minutes to see how it starts, XLF puts, FRC, and MES long, LNG, FRC, SI calls, trying to survive, go long on gold, let's go baby. Mm hmm. Oh, that's a great question. Uh, so on last night's watch list, if you buy at a low point on a 10 year bond, you're locked in at that percentage. Does the same concept work when you buy it at a high and it drops down? Do you still get locked in at a higher? Yes, it does. So that's exactly how it works. That's why people are buying. That's why people are buying bonds today. Uh, because if you buy your let's say you buy a 10 year bond right now, that's giving you 3% or let's say you buy a two year bond. You buy the two-year bond at 5% today, even if they cut rates next month and they bring rates back down to zero and the two-year goes down to 1%, you will still receive 5% on that bond. And then vice versa. If you buy a bond at 1%, the two-year bond, you buy it at 1% and then it goes up to 5%, you don't get the 5%. You only get the 1%. So that is bonds are locked in. It's fixed income. You pretty much say, I'm buying it at this price with this amount. This is how much I will receive by this time. But then as that fluctuates, that changes the value of it. Mm -mm. SVB and talks to sell. That's that's the rumor going around. Same for stocks, Divi. Well, Divi is based on when you buy it, you get your yield. But the problem with the dividend is that the company can change the dividend. So the company could raise or lower the dividend. Uh, if the company doesn't, change the dividend and things stay stable, then theoretically, yes, it would operate the same thing. Yeah. And that's part of the fear. I mean, a lot of people are saying it today. Uh, and I, I think you, sh I don't know yet. Uh, quite frankly, I'm kind of on the fence. I'm, I'm still waiting, but, uh, essentially what people are saying is that this is how 2008 started. And this is where people are saying it starts with the banks and then the banks lead it off. And then once the banks start having this problem, that's where you start to get the clapping. But, a lot of people came out this morning and said, no, we, although we understand how 2008 was, we think it's different. And yeah, so you got to make your decision on that. I think it's still a little too early. Uh, like I was telling you guys yesterday, this is still now just day number two of the whole SIVB thing, but uh, it just, it really depends where it goes. And then the fun fact about SIVB is they had 57% of their assets in bonds. Okay. Most other banks, uh, or any other competitor that was close to a high number had 42%. So it's just pretty much, I think, I think the banks will be there if we go up pretty, like if you go up another one to 2% in rates, I think everybody, then it'll be 08. But at this point, I don't think every other bank has the same problem. So like I said, you know, SIVB is just very unique in the sense that they have a very weird client base. They put most of their money in the bonds and then they did it at a very, very higher price. That's kind of a, that's, that's the thing about them. Like they had risk management, but they just, they had too many other factors going on again. Like you have to realize it's their clients. Like I'm, I'm telling you, I will throw money on this. This you do realize what SIVB is a reaction of. Does nobody want to say it? Cause there's a giant elephant in the room. It, it makes a lot of sense with where they're located and everything else. There's a huge elephant in the room, and you should know what it is. You know exactly what this is. Exactly. Thank you. I'm glad. Thank you. God bless you, Chad. It's FTX. That's it. FTX. Why do you think crypto is getting murdered right now? Crypto has been leaning on all of this stuff. It's Silicon Valley. It's all of this tech shit. 
So anybody who is connected with the crypto stuff and why, what I'm talking about is deposits. So their deposits are going down and their clients are taking out money. These are people in tech. These are people in Silicon Valley. They're pulling their money out. What could, uh, you know what I'm saying? Where did all of like, wh why did it drop so much? So chances are that like dark hole we were talking about, the black hole of not knowing what happened with FTX could be over here. But in, in at the very least, the fact that their clients have to pull out money and for whatever reason, and then the fact that they are, that's what makes SIVB 10 times more riskier right now. It's just the problem, and that's what's developing today, is that since the close yesterday till this morning, people are pulling their money out even faster now. So the problem isn't, the bonds are half of the problem, but the other half of the problem is uh, everything else they got going on. But Chad Adonia, why talk about problems when you could talk about people who've made a lot of our problems a lot better, baby? You know who I'm talking about? The veterans of the United States of America, ladies and gentlemen, here at the Colt. Before we do anything, before we try to chase a dollar, before we try to enrich ourselves, we must pay homage to a group of people who have made the ultimate sacrifice, and we are ultimately grateful, baby. And I'm talking about the veterans of the United States of America. So on behalf of the Colt, we want to give a huge special shout-out all the active servicemen, past servicemen, anybody who has served this country, even the families, Thank you for your service. We love and appreciate you. And I encourage all of you to show love and appreciation to all of your veterans out there, baby. And shout out to the people doing good for their community. All the doctors, nurses, teachers, firefighters, police officers, the garbage men, janitors, anybody helping out. Oh, man. I just God bless you, man, for real. And thank you. Even if you're doing nonprofit, helping grandma out. Amen, man. That's what it's all about. I hope you know you're appreciated as well, too, baby. But... Ladies and gentlemen, please rise. Place your right hand over your heart. Say it with me. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all, baby. Send it the Jets! Oh, it's game time, baby. Or nah, let's go. <laughs> oh, man, Tatadonia. We here, baby. We here. I know FR FRC, bro. That's crazy. That's crazy. Where's Goldman? Goldman, oh, below 340. I feel like Goldman has more meat on the bone. But they all kind of look the same. But FRS, FRC is getting totally knocked. Bro, Bank of America destroyed. Yeah, Goldman still has some meat. Mm -hmm. There's a lot going on right now. But I, I think the easiest way to describe it, like that dude on Bloomberg said, uh, just quite simply, in the last 24 hours, the risk of financial instability has just has came out of nowhere. So now just throw that on top of... And like I was telling you, this might be the new narrative. We brought this up yesterday. Uh, but it's just like, this is now on top of everything. This is on top of your inflation, your jobs, your CPI and whatever Powell's going to do and rate hike odds. And it's honestly, it's making rate hike odds very confusing because now what you have to deal with is the fact that if, if a bank is going under the fed can't raise rates. So depending on how bad this banking situation gets now as what's going to like, I'll tell you what to watch out for. Pretty much if we watch banks by middle of the day today, if banks are dropping and the bonds keep catching a bid, then we have a very big problem because then that means you're going to have a lot of people try to rush to safety there. Let's see. Can we do this one? Mm -mm. All right, Chad, get ready. 15 seconds. Make sure you like that video. Oh, wow. We're almost at 1,000 likes. God bless you, Chattadonia. We love and appreciate you. SIVB still halted. Get ready for the day. Jobs report came in hot. Uh, wages and uh, unemployment were good. <laughs> Round one. Fight. Yeah, Fed futures are 50% right now. Right at the middle. So everyone's going to be looking at banks. Uh, again, Roblo got an upgrade. Uh, Google is somehow barely red. Is that, am I tripping out right now? 
Roblo's up like 4%. Apple's tech is barely down right now. This is only 0.13. So I guess we're still just near the lows of yesterday to keep that in mind. Again, you're below the 100-day and everything else. 39.10. So next level is going to be 3,900. I actually would not be surprised if we hit that. All right, I shorted 25 shares of uh, Goldman. That could move a lot, but I'm taking that short for now. I think we're going to probably make a move uh, towards uh, 3,900, and then we'll do the Dancing Queen, and then we're either going to bounce or flush to 38s. That's it. It's hard to tell. And again, the jobs data just took a little bit of the edge off today, but nothing for certain. Mm -mm. Silicon Valley and talks to sell itself after the attempts to raise capital have failed. That is the rumor coming around. FRC pause due to volatility. Banks, again, big banks have a chance to do good. That's the risk with Goldman in that short, but I think it should be good for now. And then the Netflix and then the win. Oh, I forgot that win is up. Keep calm. Pack W halted on volatility. Jeez. Bro, that's like how many banks have just been halted? <laughs> Shitty. This is city again. You could use a regional bank ETF too. Those are the ones that people are saying are gonna are having the most risks. Yeah, that's crazy. FRC, Pack W, Tesla is in the green by one point seven. Oh damn, they're at one seventy five. Uh, Nvidia is down. Treasury two yield extends decline more than twenty basis points. That's bullish, but like I'm saying, if these banks sell off. And then the two year keep coming up there, or in the or if people keep buying the bonds. That's not good. Mm -mm, let's see. And then right now it's only a fifteenth of a percent. It's actually very very small. Uh, I have your levels for you. It looks like the lowest today will be thirty eight seventy nine. Interesting. December fifteenth low. And then 3942, 41, and then 3918, 3909, 3900. And then if that, you flush 20 points. Google is positive. And we got the wind too. Uh, Boeing, Barrett, Boeing's at 200. WAL halted. Dude, another one? I guess they're all down 20% right now. Even Bank of America is getting clobbered. Goldman's holding up for now by doing Bob on I Nope, never mind. But uh, Goldman flipped. Yeah, Roblo just got a nice upgrade. USD JPY falls 0.7, lowest since February 24th. This is very wild. It sucks because just like yesterday, it took like two hours for people to process SIVB. So... Just we'll keep an update on everything because this situation is very fluid. And now you're getting all of these banks getting halted right now and keep coming down. So we're going to find out here. It's, it's going to get pretty crazy. JPM red to green. Yeah, JP Morgan looks good. 130. Dude, again, they lost 10 bucks off the top. Bank of America, I think they're flushing. J.P. Morgan's the only one going green right now. Mm. I swear I went back to red. There's Goldman. I think I'm going to do J.P.M. too, man.
All right, I shorted 100 shares of JPM, 130.12. So now we have Goldman and JPM shorted. And I'm still holding City and Bank of America to the upside. So pretty much went for the strong ones and holding the weaker ones in terms of uh, domestic banks. And then Spy's going a little lower. Goldman again. KRE, Regional Bank. There's that and then the KBX. It's like KBW or something like that. SCHW, they dropped the most. So like Goldman and JP Morgan haven't been affected. Not yet. So like Schwab is probably going to get halted. Schwab is getting murdered right now. SVB, deposit outflows, outpacing, sale process. Bro, this is literally FTX. <laughs> They're liter it's literally the same situation there. The yen is dying. I thought yen was doing good today. No, the yen is doing great. So the yen is, uh, this is the biggest strengthening in a while. I'm kind of mad I don't have it. This did not, Evergrande was a little different. This one is, just, oh damn, you just broke 3,900, man. 3,899 now. So if you can't hold here, I expect the Dancing Queen. Uh, but if it is going to start flushing quick, uh, just watch 3,879. Uh, that will be the next level from here. FRC unhalted. I think FRC is probably the weakest one. And then Schwab and then Pack W. SVIB will be unhalted once we get the news. So we don't know. SBNY halted after dropping a record 22%. Dude, this is wicked. People are tweaking out right now to sell off every bank 20%. <laughs> this is wild, Chad. It's a very, very wild move, Habibi. Very, very wild. And then Microsoft, they're down. A lot of big tech wasn't down too much earlier. Okay, I closed the win for $200 profit just because I took two of those big bank shorts there. I'd rather hold the bank shorts than win. And I don't want that one to go against me. The banks are going to be risky, though. That's the problem. As they die, you're going to be able to take advantage of it. But I am worried, even though I took those two shorts there, you just got to watch out for the uh, the relative risk where they just they flip instantly. And then again, it takes one small good piece of news, and they already dropped a lot in the last week. So it's not like you're getting into your short early. That's the problem. Treasury yields lower by 12 to 26 basis points as rally extends. First Republic Bank extends route to 38%, triggers another halt. And the Yellen says labor force participation rising is encouraging. And then Boeing below 200, that's good. Coca-Cola's on the high, even LMT's running up here. Bill... Tesla went negative. They were up 1.7 earlier. Shop is dropping. And watch out, we're still near the lows. And here's the thing. Uh, uh, 3898, if we stay below 3900, we're going to go to 37. 10, the banks are over leveraged. Reason they're willing to pay high interest. No, I have. I'm going to make, I'm going to try to do the video today or this weekend. I'm going to make you a tinfoil video for the weekend. I have the craziest theory about all of this. It's just a possibility. So you'll see, you'll see, you'll see. But as of now, though, you should be watching the bank stocks. It, does, it doesn't matter what it is. Like low key, you don't even need a reason. It's just understanding right now, this situation is still developing. And in the last 24 hours, this has just injected a level of financial instability that none of us were worried about. That nobody, I'm telling you, nobody in the world was thinking about this. Even uh, there was an article yesterday. It's just like, I even got hit on the banks too where most people, higher interest rates, that's usually the safe haven is bank stocks. So to, to look at them get clapped right now 
it's it's this is this has set a lot of Wall Street sc- scrambling. You know, to watch this many regional banks get halted and go down, uh, it is definitely not a coincidence. German two-year yield posed for the biggest drop since 2008. Like I was telling you, man, banks are selling, bonds are getting bid. This is not pretty. Bro, is that real on the 10-year? Wait, what? Bro, what's the 10-year at right now? Is that real? I thought that was just the yen. Bro, that's huge. <laughs> Chad, yeah, bro, the 10-year is at 3.7 right now. That's a quarter. Let me see. No, that that means no. People are rushing to bonds right now. So this this is definitely a panic bid on the bonds. To drop a quarter like that, you're you're getting panic on the bonds. I think it makes sense in the whole context of all of these bank stocks too. Mm-mm-mm. Is it TLT time? It could develop into that if if we keep we need if this panic continues if this continues for the next couple of days, this will and it'll keep going at this pace. That'll be a problem. But no, you're definitely getting risk off. That's crazy because even the yen jumped up like that. The ten year bro, we were at three point nine four percent yesterday, and now you're at three point seven five today. That's big. Yeah, defensives are doing really good. So the bonds are dropping, but just watch. This could be your first big bounce on the banks for now. And then SPY still near the low. You have not gone back above 399. You're at 39, 38.88. So 38.79 right here, 38.80. That's it. You're at, This is your next level here. And markets are definitely moving opposite of bonds and everything else now. That fear bid is real. SVB 2033 bond spread widens by a thousand basis points, signaling distress. So again, another new low, Eli Lilly on the high. A lot of medical defensive names are up. Energy, staples, and healthcare are the only things in the green. People are, people are running into safety right now. And this isn't even a reaction to the jobs report. I would hate to break it to you. Bank of America, watch Goldman. Yeah, bro, Bank of America, another five bucks. That's insane. Japan News was nothing. Kuroda didn't really do anything, and he blessed the new guy, and that's it. SIVV, they're still halting. Let's see. Let's see what the bonds do. J and J is on the high now. Wow, it's already a big gap on anything bond related. This looks like late September. Was this September twenty seventh? Yeah. See, but that one didn't last too long. It just really all depends. This is like one more. We need like one or two more days of this. 
or hopefully we'll see the SIVB news. But bonds are very intriguing right now. And then SPY keeps going lower now. We're down uh, almost 1%. NASDAQ is down 1.2, so it's leading the way down. Fire sale Friday. Goldman at the low. Meta's at the low. Everything's at the low. XLV, all defensives are running right now. Mm-hmm. Amazon well, down one LMT's up so defensives and again more consumer staple defensives are the ones holding Tesla 169 damn hey for the GS I got you bro it's good luck sorry for Bank of America I'm even shot me getting murdered on that one I thought Bank of America was gonna be my friend in these times of high rates. I didn't think that Silicon Valley was going to implode that fast after Bitcoin made a 70% run. How dare you, Bitcoin? How dare you? Yeah, Tesla's at the low. J&J &J and a defensive still working up good here. BlackRock down three. J I'm surprised JP Morgan's holding up the way it is. It could be a good time to buy banks, but it's also like, this is very early and we don't know. So if this becomes an overreaction and this turns into something where everybody cools down, then yeah. But as of now, you just see it. All it takes is one whiff of financial instability and everybody is going to run from your bank. This this is a bank run. I don't know if you guys recognize it. It's cool. You could actually get to say you witnessed a real bank run because that's exactly what's happening right now with SIVB and it's paying. It's hitting everything else. So, like, it just straight up, you had one bad thing happen, and people are like, oh, we might have this problem, and then everybody and their mom just goes and pulls out all of their money from that bank, and whatever little problem there was yesterday just, be got, just became 10 times worse. Hmm. NTRA, Amazon, all the big techs clap. Again, Yang is even going up. Johnson & Johnson, anything with a dividend in value <laughs> or anything that's borderline safe, risk on or risk off, everyone's taking it up right now. Again, staples are killing it. Consumer staples are up almost half a percent right now while we're already down 1% in about 15 minutes. Uh, 38.79 that's it this is my only level i have for the day everything else we go back to our previous levels i'd say 38.50 now 38.60 would be the next one but i mean just take a look here we shouldn't really be here that's it you get to 38.60 you break that 38.30 and then you're in the gulag of december and then uh that's it you give up all of your gains for the year so that's the problem with this right now if you enter into the next levels here which you can do by today, uh, you will be able to uh, to get clapped on everything else. Mm. Yeah, dollars going down. It's just all of it. I'd be watching the bonds here. That's going to be round two if we could get something and then just chill for now. Otherwise, this is not... I don't even think the opening market right now like, do you realize, uh, uh, like, this isn't even responding to the jobs report right now. <laughs> like, none of this move, and none of this move has anything to do with the jobs report. And then JPM bounced. Like, this, I think this was just the banks that we opened up. There was probably a lot of at-the-market selling right when we opened, and then everybody just started dumping with all of the banks. It's just like just like yesterday. They all just started just getting clapped. No, Japan has already done. Japan, I mean, the yen and the bonds are up with it, but 
pretty much just gave the blessing for Ueda. Nothing really came about. There was no real surprise. Mm. The move kind of calmed down. Banks are getting wrecked because of SIVB. And everybody's worried now. You're pretty much getting your first bank run. And now people are worried if that will spread to other banks. And then just not to mention, there's already going to be collateral damage uh, with SIVB in general. Uh, especially stuff related to tech, which is ironic about it or weird. So 38.78, right below the level is your low of the day. And then that's it. You sold off 1% right at the bell. Mm. Yeah, Bill is green. JP Morgan's coming back up. I'm now negative on that short. Bill's a good guy. And then the two-year yields are even dropping. There's still no Volmageddon. Uh, this isn't even Volmageddon. This is just a bad problem. <laughs> this one is like, you don't need a zero day. You don't need like, I mean, maybe you could blame it on liquidity, but this is just uh, this is just a, a, a decent-sized problem. And then everybody just started throwing salt on it. And now this new, uh, this new fear is uh, coming back. That's it. It's just it's financial instability you have not seen in a while. And now on top of your inflation, your jobs, and everything else in between, you, you this is a new issue you have not had to deal with in a long time. So you hit the low. We might bounce a little bit again. It seems like we had a initial bank sell off from the mo from the morning but you broke below 3900 you're 40 points away from the 100 day or the 200 day china stocks are coming up even banks that's a 2% rip from the bottom there on some of the bank stocks first republic still down sbny they're unhalted you know pack w i put palo alto they're still halted too. The FRC still halted. JP Morgan's green. You know, that one went up. What? We're up $200, down 70 now on it. That one flipped real quick. Raul's timing. So I think this is VWAP. I don't know. Looks a little tweaked out. And then defensives are still leading. Energy's up 1%. Healthcare, 0.5. Consumer staples, 0.3. Everything's red. Financials are down 2% already. Uh, and it's been less than 30 minutes. But there's your bounce. You hit the low. You're finally getting... That's a pretty big candle there. The last two of them. Tesla green again. Merck, Conoco, UNH, all of these are on the high right now. Three eight nine four, hideous. Again, there's still a lot of volatility here, so be careful. I think we're gonna start swinging pretty big. Welcome to Friday. Uh, Ulta, they had earnings. I think they just did good. Airbnb one seventeen, Roblo, Roblo gave off their four percent gains. Tesla is green now. A line on the low, ALGN. So two green candles, one big red. Mm. SVB stock sale has failed. Now exploring all options. Oh my God. Let me see. I've seen people post that, but I think that one might be from earlier, or I haven't seen that. The latest news on SIVB is they're halted, people calling it a bank run, and then in talks to sell itself. That was just market chatter. And then bond spreads widening by 1,000 basis points. Mm-hmm. 
Mm. All right, another low. Watch if the banks lead the way down. Otherwise, just take note of what goes down with this. And then your names are Johnson & Johnson's, your Procter Gamble's, your Abbey Vise. They're all doing great right now. Even Coca-Cola. But some of them slip. Pfizer. So even McDonald's, too. You think people are panicking too early? Yes and no. I mean, that was my worry that I said yesterday, that this could all, like, usually this ends uh, very, very quickly. But it's also, though, people made it worse last night. I didn't expect that to happen. J.P. Morgan's hitting a high. So, like, pretty much I wasn't expecting people. Uh, I wasn't expecting Peter Thiel and Bill Ackman and people talking about uh, pull your money out. And that it just led to a bank run. And then the comments uh, the CEO made just did not hold hold well. He pretty much uh, he pretty much sounded like Sam Bankman. He, or, you know, that's that's just it. I, I hate to call him Sam Bankman because I don't think he did anything too crazy. But even the CEO was talking about, hey, there's no reason to panic. People are panicking. He said, we don't have a problem unless everybody wants to withdraw. And then by saying that, everybody withdrew. <laughs> you, you see what I'm saying? It's like, it's like me in the morning. It's like when I tell you guys, keep it serious. And then I, uh, and I'm like, and I accidentally read a, a not serious comment. And then what happens? Everybody starts posting unserious comments. So that's kind of what happened. They were, you know, like he was just like, listen, man, we don't, there's no reason to panic. I need y'all to calm down. You know, I see y'all panicking. There's no reason to panic. The only way we would panic is if everybody panicked and wanted to take their money out. And then everybody looked at each other and was like, we should take our money out. <laughs> and then it was down 50% post-market. Uh, and then not to mention, you know, negative endorsements from like Peter Thiel, uh, somebody who's famous in, in Silicon Valley. Uh, and then even Bill Ackman and other people just going down the list. Uh, it just started to, the dominoes started falling. So it's there for now until we get a resolution. We'll find out. MTB's up. That's a bank. MTB and JP Morgan all doing good. Yeah, JP Morgan's up a percent now. First Republic drops 51. Oh my gosh. That's great, bro. We were looking at that this morning at 18%. That's actually hideous. Oh, Bank of America's employees received 80 RSUs. They vest on Monday. Can relate why it's selling so hard. Nah, this is like... This is just... Indiv this is financial instability. That's it. It's the reality of, uh, again, I have a crazy theory and I think it makes sense, but the reality of this is just simply you're watching people panic and it's related to the bonds. That's it. It's we finally found in America that there could be an issue if rates go too high. You know, everyone's complaining about, oh, wait, the Fed wants the job, the job people to lose jobs. Oh, the oh inflation. Ah, it's like no 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 no. The biggest fear potentially, it's not there yet, but SIVB is definitely a very very ugly canary in the coal mine, but it's highlighting that if interest rates get to a certain point, a lot of these financial institutions that own bonds at a much lower price, their balance sheets may look a little different. And that could lead. And then if you have any other liquidity, again, if you have anybody pull out money in mass or like SIVB showing today, then you have a real big problem. So that's what I think the problem is now. It has to do with bond yields. It's just showing that a economy could handle it up, up until a point. And I think we're getting close to finding that point. <laughs> you remember Powell said they want to find restrictive uh, fuck, I could make a guess right now just after watching this, but the problem is, or what makes this situation unique is that SIVB is very different than a lot of other banks. Like I told you, they had 57% of their assets in long-term long held-till maturity securities, 
Whereas like most other banks, I think on average, it's like 40% or less. And some banks are, are way less categ uh, collateralized than others, depending on, on what they bought. So, and then SIVB has a client base. Most of their money is from very speculative, uh, you know, investments. It's, it's Silicon Valley. So liquidity is interesting. Damn, JP Morgan's ripping now. MTB as well, too. Let's see where's Goldman. They're still kind of in the middle. A lot. Okay, you've you've recovered the initial bank sell off. Everyone's saying it's contained within SVB, and it should be. But if it's not, then there you go. That's that's the worry right now. That's why I'm saying it's still too early to react. But it's just like if we haven't uh if we haven't seen it from FTX, it's this it's this is literally like a different FTX scenario where literally Luna collapses and then a couple months later it leads to another one. Then a couple months later you find out FTX. Then you find FTX is related to Silvergate. Then you find FTX was related to Celsius. So it's like now, if, if it, even if SIVB is the only one, what would happen if SIVB got clapped further? There's not as many. S S SVB is in its, its a league of its own in terms of people who bought that many bonds and put most of their assets in bonds, SVB is the only one. And then bonds are trying to work their way up. Uh, Chad? <laughs> uh, Chad? Do you see the screen right now? <laughs> uh, Chad? I'll, ref I'll refresh this one more time. Uh, do you see the screen right now? Uh, bro, Fed future odds are to 28% for 50 basis point right now. So all the mother efforts saying Fed pivot, your shit's going to come back right now. <laughs> that's it. That's that's the that's the point now. You're getting, you're finally getting an issue where it's bringing down rate hike odds. This is your first time bad news has caused rate cut response. Oh y'all don't feel me. Mm hmm. No, that's that's a that's a weird sign. I think the people are buying bonds as a safe haven for now. I don't even think they care, even if they're too early. And then they'll just dump it. Worst case scenario. Yeah, that means recession fears have just skyrocketed. If you're telling me the stock market has came all the way back down here and 90% of the reason why we dropped was because of 50 basis points and now we're back to the point where 50 basis points isn't even priced in today, uh, it's, it's not looking good. Yeah, it hit 80% yesterday. It just flipped. Let me see. Where was it? That's seven to ten year. The banks are bouncing a little bit, though. They're calming down. Again, the first opening, it sucks because today was supposed to be about non-farms. I don't even think this first 30 minutes has had anything to do with non-farms. I think this is just the borderline reaction from the uh, from everything going on. Just with, I think that was a bank selling off 50% at the opening bell.
Mm, bought TLT calls. Short term ones might be decent. China stocks are catching a bit. I'm looking at bond plays right now. How are they getting premium? And then SPY is still bouncing, but bonds are going up with it. Well, they all got premium though. You're going to be spending 200% on anything, but I'd keep, I'd look for bond plays, but that very tentatively. Cause then if anything gets better, the bond plays are going to go to shit. Uh, but then if anything else does, uh, if anything gets worse, so this, like this whole weekend now, uh, you, uh, you, in a weird way, you better pray for a market green. Cause then if this is red and this is bad, Everybody over the weekend, that would be my, my bigger worry than anything else. Pill Billy and then Bill. Fed chase in two years away. Well, that's the thing. If something breaks, then there you go. You don't have to wait. All Fed policy goes out the window and then they react. Just remember, the Fed was raising, they were trying to raise rates or then they started cutting a little bit leading into even COVID. But you saw once if we'll find out, we'll see what the Fed does. But they are they're very close to, to reacting. If this gets really, really bad, but it's still day number two. It, it just I will tell you, I said this yesterday and then just looking at it today, though, it's like this situation is definitely uh, definitely sped up faster than I was even expecting. Yeah, this is where we pretty much opened at. It's 3,900 flat. Line out two. Three nine out two. Three nine out. Is SPX and future? So SPX and futures are just pretty much matched up now. And then these are about to expire soon. So everything should be right around the same levels. Yeah, China stock started rebounding. Maybe people are buying those as some of the safe havens. It's interesting because they were selling off earlier. Wells Fargo is now on the high. Bank of America bounced back up. A lot of the banks, I think Goldman, I think we're still up on that. We're down on the JP Morgan, but a lot of the banks are going up there. SIV tells employees there are conversations to determine next steps for the bank. Staff should work from home until further noticed. Mm -hmm. SVB China partners urge calm, say business not affected. Mm. All right, the bonds are going.
Vaughn's up so much. They cut cut rates, no doubt. Housing ever crashes. I mean, it depends on if the banks get fucked. <laughs> so I'm telling you, this is just such a weird... Uh, this is all very... I'm telling you, this is very new to people. It brings up a blast from the past, but this whole situation is very deep in the sense that it's not it's just not good and now you see why now this time around rate hike rate rate cut odds have an increase today is what i'm trying to tell you in the midst of all of this the odds of lower rates is increasing and you see why but that's not good this time around because that means there is a equal or opposite force uh that could warrant lower rates rather than trying to stop inflation this will be i mean you get if you have one more SIVB Maybe two more, that's enough to cause any deflation you need to slow the economy down. Pack W is rebounding. And then straight 3,900. All right. I bought 200 shares of TYD. That's a 10-year, three times bull share. Just 200. I would want to go with options, but I want to wait because the bonds are up a shit ton. So you guys remember with the bond futures, you trade a bond future on a day like today, this thing, you could get squeezed very, very fast. So I'm going to start with shares and then use that to confirm anything and then go from there. I just don't like, dude, bonds, I can't believe it's up 1.6 right now. So that's your risk, is that if anything cools down, you're going to lose an instant 3 to 5% on any bonds you buy today. So keep that in mind. Mm. Did SVB did it? I don't think so. Uh, I don't know why it says that. I think it's just because it never traded. It never traded in the morning. So all you had was post-market session, so pre-market. But technically speaking, it just hasn't had a, it just hasn't had an intraday candle. FRC recovering. What the hell? Hmm. No way they pay more than current price for it. Yeah, they'd probably buy it lower, but that's the point. I, and somebody could. I mean, I don't think they're a bad. I don't think it would be a bad investment if you had three, four to seven, three to seven billion dollars, depending on who it would be. They're much more attractive than like FTX. See, that's the difference. FTX, Sam Bankman spent all the money at Margaritaville. Been like, you don't even know how much money they had, but at at the very least, you know they still have. 60 billion dollars worth of bond assets like so that's the thing they're just going to get it back in 10 years at a much much lower rate so just if you have the cash you can't leverage it it's hard to make a leverage deal on that but if you have the cash for it i mean you could you could write out svb pretty big all right second candle
Retirement ad. God bless you. God bless you. Get the long term. FRC. Bro, is this real? Yeah, FRC is real. Hold on. FRC has recovered 30% now. Well, they had $90 billion, but then they sold $20, $28 billion yesterday. And we don't know if they bought it back or not. Mm. Yeah, FRC, very, very big volume. And then SPY's coming down now. We'll see if it takes the banks or the uh, banks or bonds with it. So that's it, man. That could be your kind of like the other day. That might be your only rally of the day if this ends up flushing really hard. So you got up. You didn't get back up to open. You broke 3,900 like it was nothing. You danced for a little bit. It could still hold up. But pretty much if you go below 3,878, I think today's going to be hideous. If we can bounce from here and then start working your way up, uh, that'll remind me of the last time we were at, uh, I think like right here, <laughs> but you're much, much lower. That's the only problem. I guess last time you were here at 3,900, where was it? This was your 3,900 break. We're at, or no, we're at 38, yeah. Even then, that was smaller. We need to go back here. Yeah, you don't really have good, uh, good data on this. This is all ominous. <laughs> you haven't really, uh, you haven't really had a bank run ever. I mean, you could cons uh, the earliest warning you saw was like FTX and shit like that but this is like a legit bank run <laughs> this is like a legit US bank run a bank based in California uh, a lot of people use them and it's just like you straight up just have people pulling money out left and right yeah maybe Greece Greece maybe like 2015 Non-farms came in a little bit hotter and there was a couple of good things, but the problem with them is that, uh, like today doesn't even, today's not even about the non-farms. I'll just tell you, I'll tell you now, the non-farm payrolls did not drop the rate hike odds. The rate hike odds bounced back here a little bit, but this, that's it. It's like we were, yeah, it's, it was very weird because like this was all like the non-farms reaction and then like right as the bell rang, it just turned into bank stocks and everybody unloading and buying whatever they want. I, th I think there was just way more orders of people ready to to deal with the bank shit than anything else. I don't I don't even think people care about the non farms today, to be honest with you. OK, it's working its way back down again. It's just doing this dance here. SBNY, 3 million volume up 100 points. There's a couple of the banks that were like 50% down. They're running up. I don't know, SBNY yet. Yeah, they even bounced 30% from the bottom. FRC, I don't know if PACW is still halted. They bounced a little bit, not as much. Travelers, some travel names are going up. Got to spend my first bank run with you in the chats, baby. Dude, it's weird. We were talking about it yesterday, but it's just like how this is all just like I'm, I've never seen the dominoes just pick up that fast. And this one, because it's not FTX, it's not like this is just straight up just Wall Street. So how fast it hit equities is just is insane. Ah, well, banks keep if banks keep going, you're going to bounce. You got to realize banks could bounce like nine percent 
and be back at where they were at a couple of days ago. But JPM still holding. Goldman still staying pinned. Bank of America is still down, but they're at least back up to open. Yeah, we have a big expiration next week. So after CPI, maybe that'll clear. That, that, that could actually get wicked. FRC halted again. Coca-Cola slipped. Actually, yo, 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 yo. Consumer staples have all went down on the bounce, though. So healthcare is even losing some steam. So that bounce wasn't good. All that bounce did now was bring down the defensives. Yellen is aware. Yeah, they said the Treasury is watching the situation. VIX is on the high now, but hold on there. You've literally, all of your names, you had three industries green now. You only have one left. That bounce kind of just low-key. It cooled some things down, but then it cooled down the wrong assets. And then now everything's coming back down again. 3890. The low is, uh, what, 30, 3878? Yeah. And then anything below there is 3860, then 3830, then 3800. So pretty much like 30 points at a time. Yeah, Russell is down 1.7 right now. NASDAQ, 0.9. SPY, 0.7. Dow Jones, 0.3. Only thing green right now is healthcare. And the banks are trying to fight their way here. Uh, watch China names. They had a little bit of a bounce. Volume's picking up here on the SPY, coming down a little bit. Zion Bank Core on the high. Like they should be dead. Zion, dude, there's so many regional banks. Feels like Evergrande, super big deal in the moment. Then everyone forgot about them to a degree. But it just, the difference is we're not China. <laughs> you see, you know, I remember, like, what did they do with China? They just halted the stock. The government stepped in pretty much. The government here is not going to do anything. This is just going to, it's going to have to recap wreak havoc before anything happens and the best case scenario you get is that it's kind of the silver lining if this gets bad enough then this just creates a, a reason for powell to calm down this is 2008 on steroids i don't think it's there yet and that's that has been the debate all morning is everybody saying this is the ghost of lehman the ghost of 2008 a lot of people are saying no. A lot of people are saying it is. I just, I think I'm right there in the middle with it. And I, I think everybody should be too, uh, in the sense that this is just now an introduction of financial instability that we have not seen in a while. And it could swing both ways. I mean, I think the risk is there, but I don't think it's too, I don't think, I think it's still a little too early to call it, uh, you know, uh, to call it 2008. Uh, or anything of that nature. There's a lot of people saying this. They have nothing to work, uh, worry about. There's people saying there's nothing to worry about. It's contained. Uh, if anything, someone's going to buy them. It's not like it's not like this is the worst thing, but it definitely can be. It like it, it reminds me of COVID back in the day. <laughs> it's like getting COVID, <laughs> but back in, but early on and when COVID started and then you get freaked out and then you're like, oh my gosh, somebody in my house has COVID. And it's like, if it spreads, that could be bad. And then we don't know anything about it, it but it also like, it might be manageable, but it's definitely a, uh, it's something that is in the market. It's in financial stocks and we just don't want it to spread because people are still kind of worried of, well, like, wait, where did this come from? What does this mean? So it's it's definitely uh, definitely there. Yeah, it's not Lehman Brothers. It's just this is more. There is similarities, I, I would argue. And what I mean by that is simp simply that rates are moving, even though they didn't make variable rate bets, rates are moving. And then now the losses you take on your bonds, on your balance sheet, there could be a point. 
that's like that's, I think somebody if like if any of you are really math nerds, you should go run the numbers. <laughs> like go through all of these balance sheets, go even over SVB, and you could calculate how much money they have to write down on their balance sheet for every one percent the ten year goes up, right? It's so it's kind of like the the one situation with uh with Liz Truss. So like you could just figure out the the math on this one. Uh, and it just same saying that now maybe the banks may enter into a situation where higher interest rates starts to hurt their their cash positions and their balance sheets way more than people expected. And then if anybody pulls out money for whatever reason, then we have a bigger problem. It doesn't cost them money. It's just unrealized losses in margin, if you think about it. So it's just like if you own a billion dollars of bonds and the bonds go up 1%, they are now worth 100 million less than what you paid for them, let's say, or like uh, 10 million less. I don't, you know, bear with me. I'm trying to keep it simple, right? So let's say they go up 2%. Now you're down 200 million. Now they go up 3%. Now you're down 400 million. You see what I'm saying? It's obviously moves, but that's all unrealized. So that's the whole point. It doesn't affect them. It's not like they're losing cash flow, but it means that their balance sheet now you start to take all of these unrealized capital gains. Yeah, unrealized capital losses. So now, let's say that happens, and now you're sitting on 40% bond losses, right? And you have to write it down. But then you got to, now the, you have a crypto issue, or now everybody wants to pull out their money uh, for whatever reason and go into this or go into that. Or you have another person go bankrupt, one of your biggest clients. Now you're getting less cash, and now your all your other liquid assets are sitting at X value, but they're at a loss. Now you're in a bigger problem. So that's why it's it's a big deal, but it's not a big deal because a lot of this is just unrealized on the balance sheets, and that's what they did the other day. That's what SIVB did. They had these losses for a long time, and everybody knew about it. Let me say that again to you. SIVB was down billions of dollars on their bonds for years, a year at this point, and everybody knew about it. At one point, they were probably down more in October than they are today. So what they did, they just, whether they said it, they should do it or it was because they needed to, they decided to take the loss on that bond today or yesterday and then said, okay, we need to do this, 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 this. So, but then that's what got people scratching their heads because then they're like, wait a minute, why did you need to do that? And most people are going to assume that it was a forced sale. And that's why people get worried about it. Yes, exactly. If they held until maturity, they'd be fine. But exactly the point, if they need the capital then you have a problem, but then why do you need the capital? That means there's another problem, and the other problem is depositors pulling their money out. I don't think the big question is how much unrealized losses there are. It's saying how many people need capital or what would cause banks to need capital and then force them to take the losses and then run into this situation all over again. They need cash to sell excess liquid stocks. I think that's what we got here in the morning. I think people were just selling off banks and banks were selling off anything that they can to shore up capital for a little bit because now you're, all your event risk and everything just got heightened. So welcome. They ran out of money. They ran out of cash on hand. Pretty much they owned a bunch of NFTs and they had a lot of money and then they ran out of cash and now all they had were these NFTs and they had to sell them. I feel like a schmuck comparing, you know, high-grade treasury bonds to NFTs, but I, I hope it gets the point there. Just illiquid assets versus liquid assets. That's it. Exactly. Non-liquid assets, they, they got to go. 
So they ran out of liquid assets or something threatened their liquidity position to the point where they needed to raise liquidity, whether it is selling their liquid assets or not. And bonds are liquid because the price could change. But if you don't need to sell it, it doesn't matter. It's like crypto, NFT, the price could fluctuate. But if you have no plan to sell it for 10 years, it doesn't really matter. So, but it just pretty much they ran out of short-term liquidity is the is the easiest way to simplify all of this. The assets, the assets are liquid if you're green. <laughs> if you don't have them, because that's the thing, treasuries are considered a very liquid asset because you could get in and out of them easily. This shouldn't change your price, but now... If you're down 70% on them, it's a little bit different. Gold is fine. Even their fungible tokens lost 70 that's a sad part. They probably own some sort of crypt. They have crypto exposure. It's Silicon Valley. Like, that's it. All right. This is looking decent for now. As long as you don't die, if you could get to another high, you're going to buy yourself some time here. And this will get you out of this first. Dude, that first 30 minutes was insane. It's been an hour now. The play is, I mean, if you really want to go for the risk and be involved, short banks, but there's a lot of risk involved, and then buy bonds. I mean, that's exactly what I did today here, but I do understand there's risk on there. Otherwise, just make sure you don't get too distracted and uh, don't forget that you still have Tuesday another event. But today was kind of a wake-up call because I don't even think the market is responding to non-farm payrolls. We responded pre-market, but right when the bell rang, nobody gave a shit. The payroll numbers were strong. There was only good things on wages and unemployment rate, but it did come in hotter. But like we were, we were saying in the morning, I was just like, it seems like it seems like Raul was alert. Like everybody was just paranoid this morning. I'm telling you, you haven't seen it in a while. But like even then, like you had like a decent way, like you would have reacted a lot different, but in a, at another time, but like you were just watching it. Nobody really want. Nobody really could say a direction this morning. Uh, even then, it's like, and then the data. There was good and bad about it, but everybody is. Uh, there, there's just a little, just more shadiness and people being sketched out. Airbnb's on the high now? What is this? Meta's even in the green. Tesla's on the high. Very interesting. Computers are smoking. Nah, they just need to buy time.
why the dollar tank because the yen the yen went up a ton but then this isn't good though this is another this is another day of dollar down bond yields down and stocks down so this is you're getting a sell-off everywhere SIVB probably in the bonds and even then I think they need to SVB working with Centerview, Sullivan, and Cromwell. Who'd that be? I think, are they looking at, for a sale? If China, if dollar gets pummeled, China stocks will rip. Uh, that is true. We've seen that at least in the last four to six months. And then you're still right here at the first bounce level from earlier. 3,900. That's it. You're doing the Dancing Queen at 3,900 after a brief sell-off right below it. This looks like one of these days we've had recently. Where was it? I think it was probably longer than 10 days ago. I'll do five minute touch points. Was it here? What day was that? That was January 19th. You had the gap into it. You went to 38.86. No, there was one of these days where we hit the level and you did this exact same dance here. Could be here. That was a Friday too. Very precarious. Wheat stocks up. JP Morgan up. At 380 support level, bigger volume, first hour. Schwab, no recovery. Should have paid a reasonable rates on deposit. Well, then I think you could even assume that too, though. Any banks that don't pay good deposit rates, they could be at risk because then there's a higher chance capital will leave. Again, especially with other... Uh, other other rates being offered just way higher elsewhere. VIX hold in. Don't distress test check for these things. They should, and I think most of the bigger banks, their their bond ratios are well lower than SIVB. That's the problem. So SVB is working with Centerview. They pull the capital raise, exploring alternatives, including possible sale. So that's being confirmed. You guys were saying that earlier. There's a confirming article on it now. So yeah, they pulled this. So they're not even going to sell the $1.5 billion. So that offering that they had for yesterday... No more. Very interesting because I think they were going to sell it at 105 and then it went to 50 today. Yeah, Schwab's 8%. And then some banks are coming down or they've already chilled up here. Micron on the high, Tesla's on the high. I love you too, Genghis. God bless you. Good morning. Happy SIVB Non Farms Day. Woohoo! Mm. 
AX still very weak. The bank sector is still down 1.3. The real estate's clapped a little bit too. They're next to it. It's chilled though. We've, we've recovered half of the losses in the morning on all the banks. But that could, I mean, everything could just pick up out of nowhere though. And dollar still at the low. Bonds are still climbing up. MS dropping. I'm seeing. I just want watch the bonds. I think that's going to be key today because usually at this time they probably calm down. Like 1.8% on IEF is huge. But if that keeps going up, then we'll, uh, I think that could just show you a little bit more of the panic. VIX is running again. So hold on. Those candles are getting big. That calm may be going out the window. That's weird. The VIX was moving right there. So you're not near the low. You're like near it, but still a decent a point away. But the VIX is already approaching the high. Again, new high. I don't have T row. 39, 38, 87, 38, 91 is where you're at. Uh, even Apple below 150. Surprisingly, just tech isn't down that much. It feels way bigger than 1% today. NASDAQ's down 0 0.9, the SPY's 0 0.7, but I guess this is, this is just all compounded from the last couple of days. Spy 52 million and shut up. Holy crap. I, I feel you. I'm mad I didn't get any of the yen. I thought I was waiting for, I mean, I was saying coming into this, I thought after the event, I thought it was going to weaken a little bit more and then strengthen. And then it just started rocketing up. YCL is not too bad, but that's a huge move on the yen. Bro, there's 52 million in volume on the spy. I think this is people selling banks and banks selling whatever they can if, if anybody is in a precarious liquidity situation. That's crazy, bro. 52 million, and it has been an hour and 15 minutes. I don't, do you guys understand that? That is crazy, actually. SIV, it's still halted though. You can't even get in on it. Garbage stock still in the green. <laughs> I go to Redfin immediately. Some of them, but some like even Roblo had a big upgrade and they're holding up or they gave it up. Oh, ad break already? Oh, it's because we started early today. So the schedule is kind of weird. Yeah. No, because we were live early. So our schedule has changed. MS note on SIVB.
UVXY VIX is running again. I'm trying to see here. Roller coaster. It just sucks because the, the volume is extremely high. So that means either people got it out of their system now or we're probably going to have a lot more to deal with by the end of the day. And then sadly, we still have to deal with Tuesday. TLT is hitting a new high. The 10 years not getting clapped. I mean, the 10 years going down, that's good. So part of it was the yen, but then also it seems like there is a safety demand on the bonds and then rate hike odds are declined. So the fact that this situation is getting worse and worse, it's leading to people expecting a slower path of rate hikes, meaning yields are coming down. Does PBS sponsor this channel? Brought to you by viewers like you. Oh, I saw a PBS license plate the other day. I was hyped. Offshore yuan jumps 1% most since March 6.90. All right. I mean, you're, you, bro, we are at a danger zone right now or leading into it. So this is where you bounced up from, came right back down. If you go below here, 30, 38.88. I mean, there's a little bit more downside remaining. VIX. JPM's still kind of working its way up here. And then bonds hit another high and cool down. Again, 1.8 is ridiculous. On the day, you you pretty much moved a quarter on the ten year. I think Silvergate is part of it. I think it's just borderline crypto too. Not sure it's unclear. Is it time for Chattadonia's public radio donation drive again? Oh no! Oh no! Where's my horn? God bless you, Tim Whitman. God bless you. Good morning, Chad. Welcome to this wild Friday. Oh man, I hope you I hope you guys are excited. Again, I'm I'm like excited. The the level of here, man, uh we just we finally have like new info uh to be responding to in the market. So today is going to be wild. I think there's going to be a lot on both sides too. So I hope you're in the game, man, and good morning. It's fun. It's a trip. It is a trip. SIVB they might get unhalted if they could if they could prevent it from being traded today it'll probably be better because then that way they don't lose valuation while they get to sell whatever they can i wonder if they have any stocks i'm sure they have some stock assets but the volume right now is crazy bro the volume right now on the day spy is 53 million by an hour and a half. i don't i don't even remember the last time i've seen it this high jp morgan getting another set of bids coming in Goldman's still pinned. Tesla. Okay, that candle already came back down. VIX is hitting a high. UVXY at the very least. Nope, even the VIX. So now you are not at a low, but the VIX is going up. Either people are selling calls or people are buying puts, but very weird your VIX is actually even reacting right here.
I think even daily spy puts are down. There you go. It's kind of cracking a little bit here. But then volume comes in. Yeah, Yellen is speaking before Congress. Uh, there's no more data today. Uh, that's it. You got it. You're going to get the monthly budget statement at two, but then that's it. The land flat. I mean, we're not down that much. That's the weird part. This doesn't feel, this feels way bigger than 0.8%, especially on this much volume. The only problem is that it's been an hour and a half. So you still have a lot of the day left. JP wins by getting their assets. They could. Like I said, if you have the liquidity, it could be great, but you are also going to inherit God knows what. Traders 1.5 million wager targets 3.5 10 year yield in a week. If someone bought a 10 year yield drop to around 3.5 ahead of next week's expiration. It appears consistent with new risk given limited existing option interest on the strike at 9:23 Eastern. 12,000 TY week three. 114 calls were bought via block trade at eight ticks. Said London trader. Premium on the position was 1.5 million. That would be a 3.5 on the 10 year. I don't know what the payout would be. A 923. Biden on jobs report in 20. Hopefully, I mean, if you could get people to think about the jobs report, I think it'd be better. But it seems like on the everybody's forefront of everybody's mind right now is banks. I thought the non-farms were slightly bullish, but overall sketchy and then nothing confident enough until we have CPI. And then pretty much it just today's non-farms wasn't enough to guarantee 50. And that's why the CPI... Everybody's waiting there for the uh, finale. Berkshire, where's that be okay? Yeah, bro. Even BlackRock paid for it. BlackRock looks worse than a couple of other banks. Actually, BlackRock looks really bad. What the hell? One day of panic, market art. It's kind of two days. Yesterday, halfway through, we started panicking. Remember, it was halfway through the day. Bank stocks dropped another 5%. They did it the day before, too. And then now this morning, just you could actually say bank run and it wouldn't be it wouldn't sound dramatic. OK, that's a big greed. Pack West Bank Corp pause due to volatility. And we bought them. Not, not yet. You're only down a quarter. The Dow went green. And then BlackRock just took a big candle. JP Morgan making its way towards the high. Tesla's hitting a new high. And then everything that's still red is there. But then the bonds are coming up with it. You think this is what the Fed wants? No. This puts the Fed in a difficult spot. Because now... if. If you start seeing financial instability show up, now the Fed cannot, they just can't raise rates how they how they would plan to. That's it. Now, the last thing you need is another problem to worry about. You're worried about inflation still. Trying to debalance out the job market, supply and demand. Last thing you need to worry about is liquidity in banks. And then who's getting murdered by bonds? So if it actually becomes a real threat, 
uh, to the economy and the Fed has to deal with it, it's not good. And then I'm waiting for the people to be like, well, that means rate cuts. <laughs> so it's it's a catch-22, actually. It wouldn't. I, I don't think it's it's actually the last thing we need. Yeah, but the cut would confirm something's wrong. But I at this point, though, at this late late in the stage, and then you know this last three months of recommitting to higher rates, it would just be very awkward. Uh, I don't I don't think at that point that would almost usher in stagflation guaranteed. Because then if you have to deal with that, and then the Fed has to stop because of because of the banks, but then. You still have inflation running up and all of that, and then it takes another six months for the jobs market to even reflect anything that happens. It's it's going to be a very awkward period until deflation comes in. It's either the banks need to get clapped enough to cause deflation, otherwise the Fed has to go lukewarm, and then now you have guaranteed stagflation. Goal would be the play. I hate to break it to you, man. Sadly, the best play would probably be gold, or would probably be dollars, not gold, uh, or even the Japanese yen. But that that depends on a lot of factors. Just just get ready for something like last year. You know, remember how last year you like you had you had a, the best trade of the year only lasted three to four, three to six months at a time. Whether it was commodities or this or that, it just it just depends. But this is not. Uh, this is this is very uh, sketchy. That is the only way to put it in terms of like how we could forecast the future from here. You're back up to opening candle. You spent an hour and a half dumping with all of the banks, 50, 50, 60 million in volume. We are now back up to opening candle. You fill the gap at 3918. So you're at least above 3900. SVB abandons equity ways and paralleling efforts to restore calm. So they're planning to raise 2.2 across common shares and convertible. That deal is now off the table, according to people with the matter. Not to be, uh, they asked not to be de identified discussing private info. SVB is in talks to sell itself. After those attempts of raised capital fail, CNBC reported a representative from Goldman declined to comment. A representative for SPV didn't immediately respond. A number of prominent venture capital funds, including Peter Thiel's founder fund, were advising portfolio companies to pull money as a precaution after the firm said it was hit by losses on its securities portfolio. Mm, that's it's every, everything we've already heard. You are ripping now, which is good for now, but let's see what happens if we fill the gap. Uh, which you're about to, you're now a new high of the day. Uh, but remember, you were higher pre-market. So you already filled the gap pre-market, but this is just taking you back to the opening bell. And that was on 60 million of volume. The BJ already spoke today. The yen went up, but they pretty much just a clean ending of policy in Karuda. It was like Karuda's retirement, and then that's it. Gave the green light to Ueda and toted uh, the benefits of easing. Uh, Apple kind of went vertical there, but still down a quarter. Schwab, I think they're just part of it. I think they have bond holdings and then low deposit rates. I think those are the things that make you uh, vulnerable. If you have low deposit rates or any other thing that could risk bringing deposits in, and then you have a higher amount of uh, bond holdings or long-term securities, then you are you are at your risk. No, I still have the ACAD. 
That one's for Padufa here over the weekend. Moderna announces expansion in 2023. NASDAQ 100 briefly erases losses. And then JPM new high. Sony comments on Microsoft offer to provide game on PlayStation. Hey, I'm Dizzle. Even Tesla is up too right now, but let's see how you can handle this high. This is right where we opened up at. It's, uh, it looks like a high of the day, but remember, pre-market, you were higher off of the jobs report. AMD is only down a quarter. Same thing with NVIDIA down 0.45. Moderna plans new offices. Huh? No. Now do we need a list of SVB-backed VCs? Well, all they do is have money there. So the only way they become a risk is if they get like, is if SVB goes bankrupt and then halts, withdraws. But they'll be good. It just really, uh, I would say anybody who has different like banking relationships or uh, kind of think like, Silvergate and who they dealt with but for the most part it shouldn't spread unless uh, unless that money is gone completely or they restrict people from getting capital okay 39 right below filling the gap your first red here in like 10-15 minutes And then Apple came down, JP still going. Goldman even came back up there too. Why is Intel up? I don't know why Intel is up 3%. Uh, greedy shorts if it starts to break down again, yeah. But then banks banks are recovering nice. The VIX is actually working today. But I think it's because I think today is getting people to actually make plays. I think people are actually either selling longer term calls and selling out of it or they are buying uh, puts with a little bit more time. Yeah, I still have those 25-inch and phase shares. They're down like 3%, though. What percent of cash did you put in the bill? I put all. I put like 60%, 70% of the cash we had, and then we got a deposit. The bill go up all day, every day. Very good guy, man. Very, very good guy. It'd be like what? It'd be like ten thousand? Could be like forty bucks. Yeah. Or no, no, no. That's not even. That'd be like four fifty. We'll see. But I think you're gonna get like two percent off of it, or at least one percent if you get the dividend. Bear Stearns moment, almost kind of scary. That's been the debate all day. So here's the thing. We got to make it through today and we're going to see how today is. Then we also have uh, Tuesday with CPI. But this weekend, <laughs> this weekend, a lot is going to happen uh, is the best way to put it. Is that now you know, I think the bank is excited to have a weekend, but they're going to be working like hell because now we're going to find out whether or not they sell the company 
what they could do or what they're able to work out, but that's that's where the real money's at. Damn. The Fed the Fed has already been uh there. Oh, whoa, 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 hold on. Hold on. Oh, speaking of the Fed, what's better than the Fed? Bradley Frizzle and the Peach, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to Friday. Welcome to the bank run. Or not. <laughs> oh, Peach Nation. Peach Nation. That's it. We need to go bring uh we need to bring the Peach to SIVB offices, man. That's it. Mm-hmm. Wow, that's crazy. So literally, U.S. regulators descend on Silicon Valley Bank to assess finances. That's crazy. So literally, Fed and FDIC officials have already arrived at the Santa Clarita offices on Thursday. Watchdogs are concerned about the impacts of withdrawals. U.S. regulators arrived at California offices of SVB as the troubled lender struggles to stabilize their finances, according to people familiar with the matter. Watchdogs from the FDIC and the Federal Reserve are looking at the impact of significant withdrawals and the people who asked not to be identified discussing the private transaction. Officials at the offices on Thursday sought more insight into the bank's predicament, the people said. The bank, which is known as SVB, played a key role in the Silicon Valley startup scene for years. Regulators' arrival doesn't mean officials will take further action or that the lender won't be able to deal with the situation. The FDIC and Fed have declined to comment. Representatives for SVB did not respond. And then FDIC examiners last week went to Silvergate. Mm -hmm. Interesting. So literally, the Fed has just literally arrived at their offices. Bro, I think this is your first modern bank run. I don't think you've seen anything like this. My goodness. Fifty minutes until their offices open up till the public. They said everybody work from home today. They might keep it closed. Cities on the high, Amazon, DraftKings, Tesla. Another high ticker rip right here. If you owned a company that uses SVB, would you pull out? Out of an abundance of caution. I mean, I wouldn't, I don't think they're going to run out of money. Uh, or, I mean, again, if you have to sell, I think they'll have enough money if they sell off uh, what they have. But I probably wouldn't, uh, you know, if, if it was easy. Like, you know what I'm saying? It's like if I could move that money out with relatively no cost. Uh, and it's not going to be like, you know, there's not well, like it's easy to do. I would move it out. Like if all it takes me is a, a click of a button, there's no big fees and it's not going to like disrupt anything. I would or I would go and buy a bond. My company uses them. The new high right now, Biden on. Bro, we're about to have a bank run. We are having a real bank run right now. And I don't know. I thought I would be more excited about it. You know, like if you told 2015, Josh. But this is just creepy. <laughs> it's just, I can't, it feels so surreal. Feels so surreal. Who's this? Oh, that's Leo. For nearly 40 million Bro, Leo looked like a crackhead. I'm sorry, Leo. I love you. Thanks to the child and I really respect your career. Child, child poverty but half. she kind of looked like a crackhead. Since we passed the Chips and Science Act and the Bipartisan Infrastructure Law and the Inflation Reduction Act, we've seen companies commit more than $300 billion. Companies from around the world commit more than $300 billion to invest in future yeah, manufacturing pee. and innovation here in America creating jobs. We're going to invest in America again. We're going to make it in America again. And the federal government's going to buy America. That's been my economic vision. But what does this progress really mean for families trying to get by? I'll tell you. 
It means more people with good jobs and the dignity and security that comes with the paycheck. And while we still have more to do, and there may be setbacks along the way, inflation is now down 30 percent from what it was this summer. Gas prices are down more than $1.50 since their peak. At the same time, take-home pay for workers has gone up, especially for lower — and this is important, in my view — especially for lower- and middle-income workers. This all adds up to just a little bit — I know you're tired of hearing me saying breathing room, but I think it's just, that's how people think about it — a little more breathing room for working families. And today's job numbers is clear. Our economy is moving in the right direction. Yesterday, I went down to a uh, hall in Philadelphia uh, to lay out my budget and outlines my budget. We built on the progress we made growing an economy from the middle up and the bottom up and the, not the top down. It's a plan that keeps investing in American manufacturing, innovation, and creates more good-paying jobs that don't require a college degree. It protects, strengthens, and strengthens Medicare, Social Security, two bedrock programs America has been paying into for every paycheck they've earned since they've been a kid. And we're paying for these investments. We're paying for it all. My plan, after it's all said and done, is going to cut the deficit nearly $3 trillion over the next 10 years, the plan I've submitted. Uh, and by making the wealthy and corporations just begin <coughs> to begin, excuse me, to, to begin to pay their fair share. You know, uh, when we talk about 28 percent tax rate, Ronald Reagan was 28 percent tax rate. You know, that wacko liberal guy, you know? The idea that that's an un unreasonable amount, but I get into that later. Anyway, it continues to lower costs for families. Building on the work we've already done to lower cost of insulin and other prescription drugs to make health insurance more affordable. It brings down home energy costs, bills for home energy costs. And our plan is a stark contrast anyway. to the MAGA Republican <laughs> plan in Congress, where they're doubling down on the same failed policies of the past that would give special tax breaks to the wealthy, keep the the tax breaks that were put in place by the last president, the wealthy tax tax breaks for big oil, tax breaks for pharma, at the expense of seniors and families. You know, it's kind of a top-down, trickle-down economics that never, ever worked. I know when I grew up, as you've heard me say before, not much trickle-down on my dad's kitchen table. So, you know, my dad used to have an expression. He'd say, don't, I don't expect the government to solve my problems, but I do expect the government to understand my problems. I solve them, understand them. Building a budget requires some really hard decisions. But all over America, families are sitting around their kitchen tables making decisions that are equally consequential. That's who my budget is for. It's about a value set, I said yesterday. Working people, middle class, the backbone of the country, small businesses who are responsible for around half of all the jobs in the economy. You know, big corporations, the Fortune 5, they're big. But small businesses account for half the people employed in the economy. My budget reflects what we can do to lift the burden on hardworking Americans. Today's news tells us that, thanks to our efforts, Brian 12 million Hon. more Americans have jobs. Yeah, and anyway, anyway. The job thanks, is thanks, about Brian. a lot more than a paycheck, as it's it's about A lot dignity. more than a, pay, than a membership it's check, about huh? Family's dignity. Yeah, dignity. And 12 million that. more Thank Americans you. can look their kids in the eye and say, honey, it's going to be okay, and mean it. You know, there's banks a, are still that's ripping a here. More dignity for 12 million Americans. And it's not just good numbers. People can feel it. People are moving back into the work. But this may be the, the part that pleased me the most about the report, the jobs report, is people who've been staying out of the job market are moving back in, beginning to move back in. Jobs are available. People are working again. They're becoming more optimistic about their future. And now the biggest threat to our recovery is the reckless talk. Reckless talk, my MAGA friends. This is not your, as I heard me say, it's not your father's Republican Party, but the Republicans in the United States Congress. Okay, you guys got to uh, add. They, they well, thank you, Mr. Joseph Biden. We appreciate you. Uh, we'll get back to the live 2023 bank run. Live 2023 bank run, ladies and gentlemen. Most of you have never got to experience this, and we're still at stage number two. So you don't even know if it will lead to a bank run. It could be a bank jog. So we'll find out. Right now, it's a bank jog, I would call it. So there you go. That's good. Biden on the jobs report, economic plan. There it is. Some of y'all got to add a very humbling experience. I'm glad you're back. So it's good to see you here. And uh, right now, you're only down 
a quarter on the SPY, 0.02 gain on the Dow, and down 0.45 on the NASDAQ. Uh, but at one point, you were down 1% earlier, and it feels a lot more aggressive. Uh, and the volume is insane. I'm telling you, right now, you have done $64 million in volume. We were, to give you context, yesterday, uh, around power hour, we were at $68 million in volume. So you've done all-day volume here in about an hour and a half, just under two hours. That's crazy. Joshua Baker, what's up, baby? 28 months, Malik, here for the long run. Learning and growing, man, amen. And this year is going to be wild. JP Morgan's still going, so banks are bouncing, and now everything else is selling off. My theory, I think banks are just selling shit now. I think any bank that had a, a remotely large balance sheet or could benefit off of SIVB, but either way, I think all this volume is just people selling equities, and then maybe the banks are saying, okay, we good, good for now. We got to do the whispering, Joe. Honestly, I was, that that kind of hurt me. Uh, you know what I'm saying? So I, I, I don't know if I want whispering, Joe, because uh, I, I don't know. That was kind of traumatic. I don't know about you. Biden says, I'm optimistic that CPI next week will be in solid shape. Oh, fuck yeah, Biden. Yeah, dude, come on. Don't worry. You don't know bank run here. Just fucking... Watch, 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 keep your, keep your, your stopwatch or what? Look at the clock. It's gonna happen. Just watch. It's gonna happen. Now, anyways. Yeah, Biden got the report for sure. SBNY is ripping. So that's another bank that's recovered twenty percent, thirty percent or more. I think SB SBNY was actually down fifty. I think. I would rather be anywhere else to win. This is amen. It's just beginning. It sucks. I hate these moments because it feels like you remember when we were first going over FTX and remember I was telling y'all FTX at the beginning and I was showing you FTT token at like $15 or $20 or whatever. And then the next day it dropped to $10 and then by the third day it was at a penny or whatever. That's what this feels like because it's just like it's this is kind of like watching a slow motion crash, but then it could also it may not even crash. That's the that's the point, you know. And I really hope, you know, I'm I love to share this with you guys. I hope we could go over all of it. Uh, but like I do hope none of you overly panic and I do hope that you are are, you know, being realistic about all this in the sense that it's just like we've seen this stuff in similar things many times, but what it all boils down to is is really how it plays out. So what looks so don't want to over panic. Things could change very, very quickly. It's still the early stages, but it's definitely not good. And there's definitely a reminiscence of other instances, as well as it just brings into question now a whole new level of analysis of, of many things that really we haven't discussed uh, in, a, in a while. Oh, 24 months. Let's go, Sam. Yo, and Charlie. Charlie out in Vegas, partying on the bank run in Vegas, still showing love. Let's go. God bless y'all. Y'all need a horn. Take it. Take it. Just brace it. You know what I'm saying? Just take it in. Take it all in. Happy Friday, man. CPI for next week, I don't know anymore because now everybody uh, everybody needs a two-sided approach to anything. I mean, granted, I think it's easy to stick to the plan and just follow along with what is important, but now you have a side bet running on the banks. So we don't. We, that's going to be the only X factor. Uh, other than that, though, if CPI is low, bullish, CPI is high, bearish, and then that's really uh, what's, what it's going to what it's going to come down to. But it just uh, right now we got to really see what happens here with any of the financial institutions. Damn, the Goldman went negative. So again, early bank shorts all went negative. Now I'm down three dollars a share, four dollars a share on JPM. Goldman we had like eight dollars a share. Now you're back to break even.
First Republic halted after clawing back losses, down seven. Bank of America running, SBNY. They're all running right now. The banks are actually, uh, wait a minute. The banks are about to go green. XLF is about to go green on the day. Oh, yep. This is one of those days. If the banks go green, then that's it. <laughs> I think this will be until you get the next set of news. Yeah, JP Morgan doesn't usually have days like this, but they also sold off, relatively speaking. No, that might be kind of peak fear for the banks until the next set of news comes out, if they go green, but it's still so early. Yeah, and then Biden says CPI will be uh, in good shape, solid shape. You have now filled the gap, have gone higher. You're into yesterday's power hour level. Yeah, XLF is about to go green. AMD went positive. NVIDIA, I think Tesla was already positive. Yeah, 12K on the NASDAQ has been holding. It went below it for a little bit. I don't know about the next MQM23. The M's barely went below it for the next month contract. So, yeah, I think 12,000 is holding. Way too much bad news to keep going up. Well, this isn't even – we're going up on the day, but, I mean, this has been carnage. Just don't forget, you had four weeks of decline, one positive week, and then you gave up all of it and, and plus tip. Uh, by the uh, end of this week here. So we'll see. Yeah, FRC First Republic has resumed trading. The market is, SPY is green right now. And NASDAQ is only down 0.17, but we were up a lot more pre-market. So pre-market, you were as high as 393.50. So you're still actually two solid points down from where we were at 30 minutes before the ding ding. Martin Scrally, baby. God bless you. Happy Friday. All this malarkey. Stay in the game. Oh, yeah, my thing's all messed up. So I was going to do an order earlier. Why does it look like that? I can't see it. Oh, there it is. You guys just get the bottom out. Okay, it's good enough. SIVB has not traded at all. And then I think their banks open up in five minutes or an hour and five minutes. That's the thing. Think about it. They're based in California. They have a literal bank branch. <laughs> they're, I don't even think they're open. So I think they're about to open up here soon. But they did instruct workers from home. Bonds sold off big. Wait a minute. I didn't even notice that here. So you could be up a little bit more. But bonds at that 1.8, they gave up. The yen, did they go down? Good. Let's see. If bonds go down a little bit, I'm, I'm going to pick up more on the day with that TYD. Four minutes till Euro close. That's crazy. Oh, and look at Matthew Arrivas. You are amazing. You're amazing, man. You're amazing. I'm glad you're here. I'm glad you guys are all safe. Hope you're ready for an exciting year. Now JPM's ripping. 
back at 0.6 for a 0.5 rate hike. All right, you could go 394.50. Otherwise, none of this matters, sadly. And then see if the bonds go lower. But until we get to pre-market highs, I don't think anything matters here. People can't withdraw from Wells Fargo. I, I didn't hear that. on my way to bank to withdraw everything well that's the <laughs> this is bank run part two now that's what sucks if this does if they don't figure this out now people will probably <laughs> start tripping out but that's probably why the fed and the uh, fdic are there right now so spies going up i think it's benefiting a little bit off of the bonds here but let's see see how we could take this home Mm, a lot of things are bouncing, actually. Yeah, TYD, I'm looking. It's still, it's still up there. That's why. Let's see if bonds hit a new low. Intel, yeah, Intel's up three. I have IEF here. That's the 10-year bond. Remember, the 10-year bond fell to 3.75 today. What a fun morning. Crazy. So maybe we're getting back if the banks are recovering. We could get back to responding to non-farms, but we got to get above the level here. We got to get above 39, 39, 39350, about a point and a quarter now. Because that's crazy. This morning, I just it didn't, that opening bell did not feel like a data reaction at all. And I, I think the volume coincides with it. Yeah, this is the first time you've seen a very strong inverse correlation in a while. I agree, 100%. And it's just like, <laughs> I'm just telling you, the bonds were at 4% yesterday, and then we wake up, and then this shit is at, uh, what's it called? This shit is straight up at 3.75 today. Like, that doesn't really happen too often. Usually, it's like, it takes like a week to do that move. Maybe like here, where was that? Like November, I think this was CPI. You went from like 4.11 to like 3.8. That was the only other time, maybe. But that's that's a pretty awful start, and it's still only 8.30 8, 8 now. And Euro closes in the books right here. Set on CNBC, they have mainly Silicon Valley money there. Why would regular banks that have more every day be affected? They're, they wouldn't be. The, the problem would be is if this happened to anybody else.
getting FOMO. I mean, that was a very good low, but I I wouldn't get FOMO or greedy long until you get above this level. And right now, all you have right now is the banks ripping. That's it. I mean, dude, JPM is down is up 3.6 now. That shit was hideous. FRC says very well diversified liquidity position remains strong. But yeah, like everyday banks, everyday people shouldn't get affected by this. The only problem will be is if other banks run into this issue with their bonds or liquidity or if people of deposit rates go down substantially. If people withdraw a lot of money or for whatever reason, people stop depositing with certain banks, that's the ones that get affected. But none of this has like, uh, there's zero implication today or yesterday. It's not like this is going to affect your money in the sense like, it's not like you're not going to be able to go to your bank and get your cash out. That's not, that is nobody's fear right now. The fear is just bond markets creating financial instability and then people who are mismanaged or aggressive balance sheets end up getting clapped and then it leads to just crazier shit. But then then you could start talking about that. But as of now, the threat to a retail banking customer is very, very, very low as of now. But this does have, this is a, it would be a big domino on an institutional level. And I mean, even then, I, I don't think it's just to tell you how fast this situation has developed. It's been 24 hours since we even reported on any of this yesterday. In the morning, we were talking. I, I was flipping out at SIVB yesterday, uh, 24 hours ago. And within that 24 hours now, members of the Federal Reserve and the FDIC have just arrived within the last like 20, 30 minutes at the offices of SIVB. So it's just an interesting scenario going on. And you've had a lot of people pulling out money. And it's just creating a, it's a, it's more of a Wall Street fear right now rather than a, a what's it called fear, rather than a retail consumer fear. But then again, if it fucks up something institutionally, eventually it spills over. But as of now, it's not a, like this is just a Wall Street fear. If anything, this is kind of your rich people getting shitted on right now. Yeah, the Fed doesn't just show up. I could agree with that. But that's not a... The Fed shouldn't be there. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, in a weird way, I would feel more comfortable if they were... I don't know how I feel about it. You know what I'm saying? Like, how would you feel if an ambulance showed up in front of your house? You'd be like, well, that's worrying. But then if, like, I'm really in trouble, that would be good to have an ambulance right there. So you're going back to 39. This is higher than yesterday now. You're still not there. I need a point and a half, bro. I need a point and a half. This means nothing. Okay, I guess I need half a point. Give me half a point, then you could start calling this bullshit. Other than that, though, I think this is what happens when you have 60 million in volume. You're going back to pre-market highs. I don't think this has done anything yet. I would still be on the lookout both ways. But it is going to be a shit show. But if the banks keep holding up, I think you might have had it's one of those days kind of where peak fear and then we wait till the news over the weekend then banks can resume next week. But unless something bad happens middle of the day here, because even if the banks sell off half now, they're not going to be as bad as this morning. So it just really depends. It's, it's, it's a very volatile situation. I wish I wish today was easier to read. Because remember, we're talking about this bank situation right now. You're watching the biggest bank sell-off since 2020. Uh, but this is in the midst of non-farm payrolls. Uh, and we were, <laughs> we were just talking about 50 basis points, and that went <laughs> out the window. So very interesting for now. And volume is extremely high. Bulls have to is that the 200 day oh shit that is the 200 day I don't know where they could get up there and sell off or even worse like right here if you get up to it and sell off that's going to make today even uglier
and Q, let's see. You pretty much wait. You could go for here or wait till it hits the 200 day. And then 200 day, I would pile on greedy longs or greedy shorts, depending on how you feel. <laughs> this is probably just going to move big from there. Not a recommendation. That's just kind of how I'm thinking about it. And that was Euro close. So right off, you closed high in the Euro close. Then you went up a little bit more. The last couple of days, we've been trending down into Euro close. Both greedy. I think you just pick. It sucks though if it pulls here, then I think the Bears are gonna win. So if you mean to tell me you made this whole squeeze to not even hit the two hundred day, and you're like right there now, and then you sell off before, I think Bears win. But if you get here, it might go up a little bit, and then I think everyone's gonna fight, and then we're gonna go from there. Yeah, the March seventeenth expiration is gonna be huge now. Because, again, people are piling. Even the VIX work today, which is fucking phenomenal. <laughs> but it's just like even the VIX broke out today, the highest on the year. It came down. But that means people didn't buy zero-day options today. That means they either closed out 30-day calls or they bought 30-day puts. And then move is still up, but it has calmed down a little bit. So it's a uh, – March 17th is definitely like this – none of this story is over. So now we still got to deal with inflation Powell story. Now you got a new narrative running alongside of it. And then March 17th, clear out all the money. And then those, those are, that's and even then the Ides of March, my friend, I was telling you that from the beginning of this month is that March 17th, that middle of the month, that's when everything starts to, that's when we really find out where we're, where we're going to wrap up the quarter for the most part. So this could be the 200 test. Maybe, though, it's that's another 10 points, but it just did that quick. FDIC creates a deposit insurance National Bank of Santa Clarita. What? They move to protect insured depositors on Silicon Valley Bank. No, that does not sound good. <laughs> FDIC says Silicon Valley Bank had $209 billion in assets. Silicon Valley Bank is closed today. So, boom, the bank ain't even opening up today. Bro. All right, let's see what happens here. Bonds are, bonds are catching the bid again. And then you're getting your little volatility here, but see if the other banks start to slip up right now. Mm -hmm. It's bearish and bullish at the same time. I know someone's going to get mad at that I said that, uh, but what I mean by that is simply it's bearish because clearly something is wrong and <laughs> it's getting to that point. However, uh, the good part is that if the bank is closed, you prevent anything from just a wildfire from spreading. That's the thing. That's what they do. That's why they halt shit. I forgot what we saw recently, but by halting it pretty much, it's you don't want things moving 30 to 50% at a time. So it's you're at least damage control for now. FDIC, SV Bank is the first insured institution to fail this year. Bro, what are they saying right now? So they failed. Dude, that's a crazy headline. The FDIC says that the SVB is the first insured institution to fail this year. So they're saying it failed. Can can y'all get like a Biden reporter to, to, to walk that back? And can y'all reword that a little different? Because my initial interpretation is that you just had a bank failure. <laughs> I thought this was just selling assets, dog. Fail is a very strong word.
FDIC is saying that. That's the headline I have right now. Let me double check. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. Here it is off the FDIC website. They create the FDIC creates a deposit insurance National Bank of Santa Clarita to protect insured depositors of Silicon Valley Bank. They were closed today by the California Department of Financial Protection and Innovation, which appointed the FDIC as a receiver to protect insured depositors. Um, at the time of closing, FDIC, uh, a receiver immediately transferred DINB all insured deposits of Silicon Bank. Whoa. So then now they're, they've already, so they've sent all of the money, all money that is 250000 has just been sent to a different institution. All insured depositors will have full access to insured funds no later than Monday morning, March 13th. They will pay uninsured depositors an advanced dividend within the next week. Uninsured depositors will receive a receivership certificate for the remaining amount of their uninsured funds as the FDIC sells the assets of Silicon Bank. Future dividend payments may be made to uninsured depositors. Silicon Valley had 17 branches in California and Massachusetts. The main branches, main office in all branches in Silicon Valley will reopen on Monday, March 13th. The DINB will maintain Silicon Valley's normal business hours. Banking activities will resume no later than Monday, including online banking and other services. Silicon Valley uh, official checks will continue to clear. As of December, they had $209 billion of assets and 175 in total deposits. At the time of closing, the amount of deposits in excess of the insurance limits were undetermined. The amount of uninsured deposits will be determined once the FDIC obtains additional information. And that's it. So bank closed till Monday. Sounds. It doesn't mean more banks to come. It's just this is, a, this is swift action. Yeah, I don't think y'all, bro, we were just speculating on this shit yesterday and then bank stocks start selling second half of the day. And by the time we wake up here within Euro close, you're telling me the FDIC has already shut down this bank, moved all insured depositors to another account and is talking about selling assets. What <laughs> this is not, this has nothing to do with anything else, but this is very, very quick. Mm-hmm. I'll give you my tin foil. You want my tin on it? I don't think the problem is that big, but if everybody moves their money out, then you have a problem. I don't think the problem is their bond position that everybody knew about. I think the problem is if everybody freaks out and then Peter Thiel tells you to pull out all your money, <laughs> then everybody else is like, oh, shit. I got, and then now, not only do you have interest rates threatening your deposits and then crypto, is that now you got everybody just pulling these deposits here, and I think that's what that is what we have going on here. So watch out, though, because you were rallying up until there. This All these candles now, this all has to uh, – you were getting an update on SIVB, and banks were rallying heavy off of that. Hmm. Uh, Silicon SBIV, S SVIB had uh, 175 billion in deposits. Mm -hmm. Men's Warehouse ad, Acura. There you go. You looking for a good vehicle? Proud of you. All right, it's starting to drop a little quicker here now. The Goldman Shorts coming back. We're still down on JP Morgan, but. I don't know if you want to go for a later day. You didn't hit the 200 day. That's kind of awful. My goodness. Oh, I know. That was big. Bro, that one was a big drop. Even then, all those dailies just doubled up. Damn, that greedy long, greedy short strat. This this isn't good. I think the Bears won. I mean, you could still today's stupid. You could still flip twenty points in ten minutes, but for, like I was telling you, if you can't get above there and make that test, it could come later in the day. But as of now, and then I think that SVIB news that I just read is uh starting to seep through the market right now. It's very aggressive. It's not. I don't even. I'm I'm waiting for the banks to move. 
that bro, that headline I just read you is insane. I mean, it looks like already within 24 hours, the FDIC is just is declaring it a failure, and they're moving money already, and they don't even know. That's the funny part. They said they're they said they moved all insured deposits to another account, but then they don't know how many people are insured or not. It's kind of contradicting. Flash crash that could come over the weekend. But I don't think it'll be stock market flash crash as much as it'll be like what you saw today where you just sell off heavy and then the banks could wind up down in the morning. It just all depends. That's the shitty part about this. I'm not there's a we're, we're juggling a lot right here because it's saying does it you know you have to balance between contagion versus just what is actually happening to them. Do you, does that make sense? So it's like it's not always like like right now. That's why like you could look at other banks and it may make sense to make plays on other banks right now. But this is also, uh, you know, you're also juggling just specifically what is happening and occurring to them. The Fed futures have declined. I mean, I could only imagine what a FDIC bank failure would do to the Fed. I think the Fed, there's no way we do 50. Fuck out of here. <laughs> Even then, after the job, unless the CPI comes in higher than higher than Hunter, then I don't, I don't, there's no way we do 50 basis points. There's zero chance now, in my opinion. Fuck, I, I would even short the Fed futures, to be honest. That does not seem like a possibility now anymore. It feels like oh wait, <laughs> fuck that! It feels like 1940. <laughs> Dude, we don't have bank runs. <laughs> this was a legitimate bank run. I can't. I'm shocked. I'm shocked. I was shocked yesterday, and I was saying, "All right, we don't know what's gonna happen, bro." In 24 hours, for this to occur is insane. The headline, the FDIC, you could go get the report, go on their website, you'll see it. But the FDIC just said that they're closing the bank till Monday. They're moving their funds. Any insured deposits are being moved over to a receiving account by the FDIC to protect them. And now they're going over all of silver or all of uh, SVB's uh, assets to see what's covered and what's not. And then they're halting all activity uh, to prevent anything from occurring. Yeah, you can post FDIC links in here. That's fine. And then they're even, I, they said something about selling assets, which is crazy because then that means to protect the assets, they might force the bank to sell the bonds, uh, all of the bonds, which is, remember, they already sold $20 billion. They're saying you have $190 billion of deposits. That's huge. crazy is uninsured above 250 i'm telling you everybody most i would argue most of the people at that bank had more than 250 which is the the fuck that's why i said this isn't hurting your average american this is hurting rich people in san francisco realistic that's why there's it's not a coincidence that fucking peter thiel is, is the one telling you to take your money to the fdic limit this is this is Silicon Valley's bank. This is the tech bank. So this isn't your business like you this isn't mom and dad. This isn't people who are, you know, most people at that bank I would assume make more than 400 500,000 a year. FRC Hall banks are slipping again. This is ugly now. Let's see, 3905, you're giving up Euro close and that first bounce. You're coming back to 3900. That's 30 points in three minutes, real quick.
A lot of uninsured money disappearing. That's not the problem for now. <laughs> the problem is deposits going down and unrealized bond losses. That's it. If you want to make it very simple and if you want to try to extrapolate this to anything else, you need a high amount of poorly purchased bonds and you need customer deposits withdrawing at a way faster pace. That's it. And that's why I think they're doing this. I think that why the FDIC is responding so fast is I think they're trying to calm people down because the biggest problem is uh, is if you actually have everybody pull their money out. That's the, that's the risk right now with, with banks is if the average American or any other client sees a high need to pull out money and not deposit within your financial institution, now that will exasperate any other issues they have. AP, bank regulators see Silicon Valley Bank and largest bank failure since the Great Recession. So they're calling it a bank failure now. I guess that, that headline initially, and now even AP is reporting on it, seems that we're going to take that at face value. <laughs> think we're going to take that one at face value. FRC, they could drop again. They're back down to pre-market levels. You had a baby Bear Stearns moment, borderline. I'm shocked that, that I don't know. We're going to find out what they say about it, but that did not seem like <laughs> bank failure <laughs> within 24 hours, dude. That's fucked up. You At least Bear Stearns, they had a quarter to like bullshit you and tell you to buy the dip. They had a quarter to tell you like, look, this is what we're doing. Bro, they didn't even have a... They didn't even have a, yeah, this is faster than Lehman Brothers. <laughs> this isn't even like, I'm telling you, bro, this is insane. It's not even like, you didn't even have any time for this. That was an overnight rug pull, which is weird. No, the government did not want this. This is not, this is a black swan for sure. If it, that's the case, if this is real recognized bank failure, this is not a, no, this dude, Powell hates this right now. This just made, if this actually happened, Powell's job just got 10 times harder. And it was already very, very difficult if we looked at it the other day. So this is, uh, this is not, this Powell is the last thing he wants. Peter Thiel. I don't know if Peter Thiel was protecting people or made the problem worse. But he either saved a lot of people or not. That's it. You had a period between 1 p.m. yesterday and like 10 p.m. today, maybe to just online bank transfer everything out. But that's it. Nobody could even wire out this morning. Why not let the bonds mature? They can, but they if you don't have money to operate now and then $179 billion of customer deposits... If half of that money is gone, how are you going to operate without selling a bond? It's like a ghetto margin call. <laughs> it's not like they were over levered. But then if all of your money disappears from people getting worried and then now you can't, your only money is in assets that are down 70%, you only have one choice. So they'll probably get bailed out now that I say that out loud, though. All you need is somebody to agree to fund them capital and then use that collateral. But then again, I just right now in this market, a 1.6% 10 year bond, hundreds of billions of dollars of that just is not attractive right now. Uh, but you just, that's, you just need somebody to be willing to short term fund you. That's, that's it. You need a loan shark right now. They're not too big to fail. They're actually tiny. Their deposits are big, but it's not like their market cap. Like, you know, $178 billion is, 
bro, come on. We could do that to Ukraine in a weekend. <laughs> but no, I'm kidding. But it's like it's 178 is not bad, but it's definitely not small. But it's not too big to bank or too big to fail. Yeah, 13th largest. That's not top 10. That's fine. It's just like, I don't know. I think some of y'all should be some of y'all should be uh some of y'all should be a little bit more like you, like you got to think about this. This is hitting the, this is the time now where the rich people are feeling it. Everybody's like, "Oh, inflation. Ah, the grocery store." And then you got Mary Dolly like, "I I make half a million a year. I didn't feel shit." So, this is your first if anybody's getting hit right now, this is just all the big money. This is their pain this is their pain corner right now. Because this is now, that's who it's going to affect. So I don't think it's too big to fail because most of the clients and most of the people I think are going to get hit, it's all going to be the ultra rich who invested in tech in Silicon Valley over the last 20, 30 years. Does that make so? But that's where it starts because once they get hit, it will lead into Main Street. But uh, it is, uh, if anything, this is just the big money getting, this is the big money getting hurt today. All right, you're coming back down here. I'm, I wish I, I I grabbed plays up here. I was waiting for the 100 day, but that was it. Now, if this can't hold, watch for 3,900 break. Next danger zone is 3,889, uh, but realistically, 3,880. Could you explain why Powell doesn't want this? Because this stops him from raising rates. This slows down Powell and raising rates, but what's the problem? You already know it. Inflation is coming back up. <laughs> so now Powell can't even, if you get a bank failure, and let's say it leads to another one, but let's say you just get one bank failure, last thing you want to do is tighten financial conditions for banking institutions and everybody else. So now you're like, okay, I need to bring inflation down, and I'm committed to it, but now the one tool that I have it's going to I can now threaten to take out a top 20 bank uh, or anything else in the middle. So it's kind of uh, it's deteriorating fast. This isn't what Powell wants. Like on it, it's kind of like, like if the election comes up and it's Donald Trump again versus Joe Biden, it's kind of like the election. <laughs> that's how I. That's that's Powell's decision right now. He's like, ah, shit. Okay, so as if I do Trump, then we get this, 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 this. If we go Biden, then we get this, this, this. So it's just like it's kind of. I don't think you have any real winners right now. I don't think you have any real winners right now. I'm good. I feel good today. I'm great. I mean, things could get better. I double trap myself, obviously. You know what I'm saying? Uh, as I put out one fire, I start up another one. Uh, but I'm very curious, and I'm excited for where we could go, though. But uh, even then, once we get past these couple moves, uh, I do think that this is going to give us a clear runway uh, to make some really crazy plays if this plays out. Uh, we don't know how it'll play out, but hopefully it just plays out within a nice time frame. What would be the ideal breaking point? Consumers taking their money out of banks or we find out banks have a lot more bond exposure and then the low, the higher yields ends up hurting them. But that I don't know if we could do it anymore. At the very least, Powell might calm down for a couple of months if this actually gets to that point. How long do they have to pay people? We don't know. They said they're going to try to give a dividend out. But as of now, you don't really have any idea. FDIC sucks. Like, it's even then, all that money could be tied up potentially for a couple of years now. And that's, we're talking $178 billion. And then we're talking some of the the biggest people in Silicon Valley.
they said deposits on insured. And then if it's uninsured, you get like a dividend and then you could resume certain banking activity. And then Gregory Beck and I think Daniel Beck and Gregory Becker, they sold out shares two days before or February 27th. <laughs> Oh, man. FDIC would have never thought it was this bank. I think you would have never expected... Dude, I would have never expected that from 24 hours of talking about this to waking up, the FDIC and the Fed are at their offices and then the FDIC is shutting them down, moving their money around. That's crazy. LT bounce in a little bit. Even the bonds are weird now too, though. You got to ask yourself what happens if the FDIC makes them sell $170 billion of bonds. But then again, they could sell them at whatever price because they're going to lose on them no matter what. <laughs> but it's just like, that's a lot of money. SVB posted three days ago, proud to be on Forbes annual ranking of America's best banks. For the fifth consecutive year. SI. I'd watch JP Morgan's now coming down. The Goldman is back up. And gold. You know the funny part with Goldman? Goldman isn't going to get the fees anymore either. So Goldman was supposed to make money off of them. But now they're not even going to get the fees for the sale. Bank of America just went, went, went red. This just shows everything is a facade. Uh, I think this is just a heightened... Uh, we, we live in a society where things move fast. And that's it. I think it's just fear. And then everybody pulled their money. I Again, the CEO just fucking jinxed it, dog. <laughs> the guy literally... Was just like, listen, don't panic. We He's literally said, we've been with you guys through your times of trouble. We ask you to do the same. Just don't panic. He said, there's no problem and there's no reason to panic unless everybody else finds reason to panic and pulls their money out. And then, well, everybody did that. He said, we're good. Just Yeah, exactly. He was like, we're good. Just don't withdraw your money. Because if you withdraw your money, we're not good. And then right as everybody heard that, they were like, everybody stopped and stared at each other for a little bit. And then finally somebody moved. And then Peter Thiel was like, get the fuck out right now. Draw down to 250K immediately. <laughs> and then everybody just started running. That was borderline Ellison comment. I don't know. I don't know what. I've sadly, I mean, the sad part was, is he was truthful about it, but cause I don't, I didn't think they were in that situation. I mean, the, the funny part, like I've been saying all day here, dude, everybody knew about this. Like this is like, you go look at their balance sheet and go look at how many unrealized losses they've had on these assets. This isn't anything new. So by October last year, 
they were at a way worse position when the 10-year hit 4.2. You see what I'm saying? So right now, we just came back to 4%, and they even had a rally on it. But it's not like this was anything new. It was just so, I, I think right now, the customer deposits drew down, and then this little raise offering to try to raise money, I think that led to now even more outflows, and then boom, you just hit the, the turbo point. Bro, put premiums are insane on any banks. JPM went to the air. You're coming back down. Danger zone is approaching, ladies and gentlemen. You're down three quarters on the NASDAQ, 0. 0.6 on the SPY, 0. 0.43 on the Dow. Only thing green is discretionaries, head scratcher. And then healthcare is up 0. 0.04 right now. Everything else is red. Not too bad. I mean, financials, though, have gone down back to 1% down after being up, and that's all on the FDIC shutdown news. So all of that, you had a little bit of a rally, all got smacked at FDIC point. Mm. Fifty to one twenty-five, bro. I was just, I had these dailies I was looking at. I was like, okay, I was looking here. I wanted to go both ways on the daily, and then it just that's it. That that news killed it, which was very surprising. FDIC bigger than the two hundred moving <laughs> average. Yeah, bro. They just shut down a bank. Even though it's only 72 hours, they just shut down a bank and said that it failed. A big bank. Ah! No, the China and UK units said they have no exposure. I mean, BlackRock has 4 million shares, State Street. It's weird because all these other banks still own them, too. Interesting. Their one-year default risk is even running up, but it's not even like it's shooting up. Mag I'm looking at their credit shit right now. But, yeah, this is what I was telling. So, look at credit default risk. This is for SIVB. This was October, November when the rates went high. And then now... It just shot up here to the all-time high, or at least in the last couple of couple of years. No, yeah, this is the breakout. Mm-hmm. for the LT on these dips. Not yet. I'm going to wait till after expiration, but I think we'll be good. I think we're going to get a lot of shit if this if this turns out any if this gets any worse from here. I mean, it could it could have been worse, but if it does get worse from here, I mean, you're going to be good, but you're not nothing's cheap yet. That's all. I mean, banks are cheap uh now or they're getting back to the lows, but 
we're now back to where we started. You're still above where we started the year. So let's go negative on the year, and then we could go shopping. SVB, small local bank. It can't be a black swan. I think it is with who it affects. And I, I some chads here, you guys are saying top 10, top 20. What? Saying they have a hundred percent debt outstanding. Who's this? B B P F H. What is that? Yeah, B P F H. Boston Boston Private Financial Holdings. Why no log? <laughs> No, there's no BPFH. All right, this is the danger zone. So if you don't bounce from here, we're probably going to hit a new low. Or you might get a little bounce to VWAP and then it sells again if they want to buy time. Walmart wall halt at the low. CNS Cohen and Steers these guys have a lot of their debt so they own a lot of F F S F S I V B debt Already at twenty twenty. Panic 101. It's funny. We were talking yesterday. I was like, it feels like borderline panic. And now this morning, they're like, hello, how are you? Welcome, welcome. What's Bloomberg saying? Um, regional banks fall on risk. U.S. Treasury yields drop. Did a quick one here. I'll go. What time is it? It's 9 o'clock, 9.15. I'm going to go to the bathroom. I'll be right back. God bless you. God bless you. Or you could hear what they're saying.
Follow me on Instagram at the Trading Fraternity. I love you. This is Balance of Power on Bloomberg Television and Radio. I'm David F. Weston. As we've been talking about, it's been a pretty eventful Friday already. What with the jobs numbers and then, of course, the dramatic developments with respect to Silicon Valley Bank. To tell us how the markets are reacting, we welcome back now Kriti Gupta. Kriti, great to be with you. So how are the markets reacting? Not well, David. Hmm. Not well at all. Look, risk sentiment is off, clearly, and it's off for two reasons. Ultimately, they seem like two different stories. The macro side with this uh, higher job sprint, 311,000 relative to an estimate of 225. But then a kind of micro story almost of Silicon Valley Bank, which uh, is officially due to be taken over by the FDIC, I believe, on Monday. Uh, the shares are still, of course, halted for uh, SBB specifically. But the reason this all kind of comes together is in the bond market. And this is really important because within 48 hours, we've had a complete repricing of what the Federal Reserve is going to do in just a few weeks, March 22nd. We went from a 25 basis point hike to 50 right back to 25. And that kind of volatility has shown up in the 10-year yield and the two-year. Uh, I mean, when I'm looking at 10-year of 373, lower by about 17 basis points on the day, the two-year uh, down by about the same margin at 468. The takeaway here is that people are hopping into the bond market originally overnight, mostly because of this kind of fear of contagion, fear of the financial system in the U.S. and whether or not Silicon Valley Bank was an isolated story. Now that we can say pretty confidently that it just might be an isolated story, you're starting to see the narrative around the Federal Reserve drive the bond market action. Well, an isolated story in the sense that it might not spread to other banks, uh, which makes it an isolated story. I think that's what you mean by saying that. Right. But I wonder if it's isolated in the sense that when you raise rates that much, it's going to affect things, including, for example, the value of some bonds that you have. Yeah. That won't be limited to the banks. There are going to be other businesses out there that are going to be facing a different world. Are there unintended consequences inevitable from what the Fed is about? Yeah, uh, liquidity is really where it comes to. And this is why the contagion question was even brought up, because when you are lending, uh, at the end of the day, this is what banks do. They lend, right? And they lend on a much longer time frame. But when you have IAA yields that move pop. this quickly in the upwards direction, specifically in an environment uh, like venture capital, which is what kind of Silicon Valley Bank was mostly invested in, those returns need to come much faster than, say, a 10-year or 30-year loan uh, that traditional banks would make. And that's where they kind of got into some deep water, essentially dealing with a much more fast-paced and risky a environment the than other uh, a traditional bank would very quickly. A wild Friday, no question about it. Thank you so much, Kriti, for bringing that to us. You can this catch Kriti again at 1 p.m. Eastern Time, where she's going to be anchoring Bloomberg Markets. Still to come, we'll talk with the U.S. nominee to be president of the World Bank. He's Ajay Banga. This is Balance of Power on Bloomberg Television and on radio. Yeah, IAA, no other news, but apparently they had a special dividend, declared special cash dividend the other day. SPV. It was everything. Everything kind of compounded. IAA is still running there. Not seeing any news, but that's strong. That's the most it's been up there in a year. Apple shareholders approved new CEO and executive pay package. Yeah, Cohen and Steers, they just own, they own the most. They own like 4% notes from SIVB. They own like $250 million. So they're kind of clapped by it, but not as much. But then they have a lot of like real estate. Run larger to exposure to SIVB. Run? Sunrun? Huh? Huh? Yeah, Run says exposure to SVB is large. 
That's probably just where all their money's at. I wonder, does Coinbase bank with them? IA, I don't know if it's a buyout. Sunrun's getting clobbered off of that now. IA just had a cash dividend announced. And then they just shot up 8%. Or, but the cash dividend was like two days ago. FRC halted down. Credit risk. No. There's other companies that it's hard to say. So again, CNS just owns a lot of their debt, but I don't their credit profile isn't that bad. I think really if people are gonna bring up even like Sunrun, it'll be companies. The VIX is hitting a new high. We've done that four times today. Every single time at this level, without hitting a new low, the VIX is going up and hitting a new high. The VIX itself isn't, but the UVXY has. US to end COVID testing for travelers from China. Woohoo. Can y'all test the banks, please? Thank you. Appreciate it. FDIC could have waited to the weekend. Nah, not at that pace. I, I'm shocked by it, but I don't think the FDIC has ever responded that quick. <laughs> Imagine if they did with FTX. Hmm. But that's the crazy part. To put this into context, this is about five times bigger than FTX. <laughs> this isn't $30 billion. This isn't $40 billion. This is like 190 or 170 of deposits. So it's at least like three times bigger, maybe four times, four or five times bigger than FTX. Yeah, Sunrun people mentioned exposure to SVB. IAA was a pop. No news on that. And JPM still holding. FRC got halted. And ES hold it. It could. I just it's gonna be a level of panic. That's all today is. It's like you're not reacting to the jobs report. Your your bonds are not not hurting you in the same way today. This is all just, I think it's going to be momentum from here and then a reaction to the, the banks. But my theory is that the, I feel like a lot of banks are selling stocks right now. They have to be. If not, SIVB has to be selling something or anybody else who's remotely worried about liquidity. If you have any other liquid asset that's not down right now, you're probably going to sell that one. But so I just think today is just going to really come down to the level of panic. TLT uh, bonds have been coming back up as we've been dropping here. ID, the bonds are still down. The Goldman came back up. Oh, where's Boeing? Uh, 
is it bad the bonds are going up? Today it is, yeah. If the banks keep selling off, it's not. I mean, it looks like people are rushing the bonds for security today. I mean, you technically just had a big bank fail. So that would make a lot of sense. <laughs> and that's why it's weird because the last couple of days, the bonds, you know, based on Fed policy, the bonds should be going down. And now they're going up here, a.k.a. And when we talk about that, that means yields are coming down, means bonds are going up. But it's just borderline kind of highlighting the the demand for safety right now. And if anybody's getting your money out of a damn bank or you're worried, you're probably going to buy a bond here. And then with Fed futures dropping, I mean, it goes hand in hand. Western Alliance says deposits remain strong. They said $61 billion as of March 9th. Western Alliance uh, issues updated financial figures, WAL. Western Alliance's CET up with 9.5% at higher first quarter. So they're giving guidance now. They're like, trust me, we got money. Yeah, they dropped 50% too. And then I don't know, is FRC still down? First Republic still 23% down. So watch out, man. This is the day we've held here for a long time. You're below 3,900. There's that candle getting worse. And then the VIX is still going up here. Yeah, wall is crazy. I think wall's still halted. So wait till they unhalt. We'll see how people react to the financial decision or their financial guidance. And then another pop. I think dollars down. Yeah, they're talking about the depositors. Let's see, this guy's talking about it. During whatever tenure you have there as president of the World Bank. Well, David, I think the, first of all, it's a pleasure to be with you. But I think that the whole issue here is that the model that we've sort of pursued for a while on, on poverty alleviation, on shared prosperity, it did great for a few decades. But over the last few years, it's kind of slowed down. And I think there are many reasons for that. There's, uh, there's COVID, obviously, but there's climate change and its impact there's the issue of come on man i thought you're going to talk about the fdic deposit alleviation has made it even harder and i think we need to look at our pact measurement is very much a part of what you have to do but but for a minute let's step back from this i think the challenges we just spoke about this intertwined nature of climate fragility what uh, you know catalyst not just the headline is i thought they were going to talk about everything else WAL resume. They popped up a little bit, but we'll see. I thought, like, all the headlines said, like, FDIC. I thought they were going to elaborate on it. And these guys, like, the climate risk and then the prosperity, the global prosperity. Oh, man. Ninety-seven percent of the deposits were uninsured. Well, that sucks. I think all it comes down to is going to be if uh, how much the bonds will go on a fire sale. So I don't know how much their bonds are worth now, but they'll just, if they have enough bonds to cover deposits, they'll be good. And then as no, no money just ends up leaving randomly. April 22, yeah. The VIX is near. The VIX is at a yearly high out of nowhere. He has not worked in a while. But that means people are buying longer-term plays right now. That's the one thing I could I could definitely extrapolate from this. In a zero-day world where all of the volatility has been on 30 days or less, the fact the VIX is moving, it's saying people are either buying more longer-dated puts or they are selling longer-dated calls. 
and they were then the open interest on the other puts are just staying the same. If banks sell bonds, wouldn't the bonds go down in value? Yes and no, just because there's a lot of supply. But here's the thing about uh, here's the thing about being down on your bonds. You could sell them for whatever you want. <laughs> Does that make sense? You just have to sell them at a competitive price. So right now, the cheapest yield is four point seven five. So your bonds are at one point eight. If you're if you're SIVB, you could sell them at anything, but anything above 1.8, you're taking a loss on it. Like so, think about it. You're going up to someone and saying, "Hey, I'll sell you a 1.8 percent bond right now at a four basis point discount if you buy a hundred billion of them right now." So they're just selling it to somebody for cheap. That's the only way they could get the money. They have a bond that'll pay a million dollars, ten billion dollars at 1.8. But if they need that money now, they're going to have to offer that bond up at a higher rate. So they could go wherever, whatever they could get for it, uh, low key. Binance says they don't have exposure to SVB. Funds are SAFU. Ah, shut up, Binance. No one asked. Binance, why are you getting involved? Binance, you're not even in this conversation, Binance. But fucking CZ trying to get into everything. He's like, it's okay. We saved it. You know, we did good. We did good. You know, we don't have anything to worry about. We got a wallet. We can show. No one's talking about you, CZ. No one's talking about it right now. CZ just trying to get the headline. They got greedy. They should have kept the money in bonds. They wanted more. I think somebody big, they just had one big deposit outflow, and then they needed money. And then they said, okay, if rates are going to be higher, let's try to refinance all of our bond purchases, and let's see if we could get away with dumping $2 billion on the open market. And that just didn't fly. Surprisingly, it usually does, but... <laughs> like, that's it. They just... I think somebody, it, there's another cause. Like, that's the funny part about this. It's not like this problem was new. I think if anything, if anything happened, it was simply because somebody pulled out money big. That's it. Or, or a group of people pulled out a lot of money all at once before Peter Thiel and before everybody was, was saying that. It means somebody, somebody had to have pulled it where they were like, okay, Let's do this next move. Let's let's sell our assets at a loss. Let's raise capital because the deposits is the only thing that was slowing them down. Or that would be the only reason to get rid of a position like that on bonds. And that's why I think people panicking and pulling out so much money today just made th that was the initial problem and then that's it i think that was the hole and then it just ripped open tesla still greed look at you tesla China and the manufacturing growth. It was us. It was uh, our bad news, our hot data. I think it was PPI we had. And then everybody getting worried about the uh, everything else, the uh, 50 basis points, all Peter's fault. It, it's weird because it's like, it's like it's Peter's fault, but he also probably saved some people. But I don't know. I think Peter Thiel is a, uh, 
Peter Thiel is kind of like the CZ in this situation. I, I don't I don't know. I just don't. <laughs> it's, it's hard to tell. I'm still, I think the most surprising out of all of this uh, is uh, the fact that the FDIC shut this all down in 24 hours. Haters will say banks fail because of zero day options. I don't know, man. This is like, this is some like GameStop shit. <laughs> that's, I think that's what the FDIC is worried about. That's my 10. Bro, this is like game. This is reverse GameStop. I think this is the reality of what would happen if a bunch of people all at once pulled out their money from banks. You would get a legitimate bank run and some of these banks would just get knocked way too heavy. That's I just you know like buy side imbalance. This is like deposit withdraw imbalance. That's all it is, because uh, that's that's this is insane. It will be an interesting weekend. We'll see. Hopefully, we close. If you close green, people will feel good. But if you close deep red, and then you have the weekend, then it gets hideous. GameStop was way different. Um, did I touch a nerve? I'm sorry. My bad. My bad. It's okay. I'm just talking about buy side imbalance, sell side imbalance. In this case, instead of buying a stock that there's not a lot of supply of, it's more so if people withdraw and lower deposits on on bank assets, it would uh it would have a very negative effect. People with 250 will start moving to short-term treasuries. Do you want to know the funny part? I could tell you the funniest part about it. So, like, even if you're like, oh, my God, I can't trust the banks. Oh, my God, I got to take all my money out and I got to put it into a treasury. Are you ready? Here's the risk. Your treasuries could <laughs> default by June. <laughs> don't forget about the debt ceiling. That's also another problem, and I don't know. So... That's all of them. I don't know how, how, it, how it plays out, but this would actually be the worst year. Yeah, you know, if you could pick any other year, you would be great. Like, you know, if you did this last year, if this happened, per we didn't worry about this. But now you even do have a kink in the bond curve that shows risk around June to September simply because of, of this debt ceiling crisis and the government funding. No way they would let it default. Yeah, but, you know, it's just there. Yeah, most people know it isn't. It's usually something you bicker about, and then it never leads into anything. But the only time it did happen was 2011, and that was when people were, like, really willing to catch the smoke. It didn't lead to a default, but it led to a credit downgrade. And ironically enough, uh, Joe Biden was in political office number two at that moment. So we don't know. And then this is his first term. First term presidents, you're way more likely to get a lot of crazy negotiations uh, when it comes down to it because you're either thinking about reelection or other things. But I still don't. I like I said, I said I'll start worrying about debt ceiling in June. But the irony about you know it's like you could take your money out of banks and put it in the treasury, but the treasury does have. A very once every couple of years unique risk that has popped up. Yeah, what just happened there? Big Reds, banks selling off again. Did Wall get halted?
Yeah, all banks took a candle. Financials are back down to 1.14, third worst on the day. Real estate and materials are doing the worst. Apple Cook, we see incredible amount of opportunity in India. Oh, yeah, isn't Apple having like a annual shareholder thing? Yeah, Goldman just gapped down. That was a weird candle. Microsoft's even dropping. Tech is starting to come down here. This technically would be bullish if the Fed can't raise rates. Yeah, but it's not like the Fed is cutting because they accomplished their mission. It would be the Fed not raising rates because they don't want to blow up a bank while acknowledging for the last three to six months that inflation is coming back up. Very, very, very weird. The finding the SVB exposure is weird because you don't know, like, it's like there's debt that's being held by other people. It's really, you could just go through the balance sheet and find their bonds. It's, you could go, I already did the uh, supply chain analysis to try to see who they've loaned to, but there's, there's nothing on it. It's very, uh, it's very obscure because all this boils down to is, is debit, uh, depositors and then their bond position. I took shorts on JP Morgan and Goldman. I want to look if I could find uh I'm looking at a couple of different banks here. I've been all day I've been trying to scan for a random exposure there. Most bank puts are up 300%. So I think I'm going to ride it through. I still have the NQ. I did trap myself on that ES, but we still have till Tuesday, but in the meantime, I'm going to try to take advantage of some bank shorts as they kind of we got to let them work their way in and out, but banks have been getting murdered. I think they're held till maturity assets are just it's just 10-year bonds 10-year and 30-year mortgage-backed securities so they bought real estate bonds and all that and they're just that's already they're already low nq go green i'm probably gonna hold it uh <laughs> at this pace if this actually trips out and i have a whole nother three months on my nq now but it's going to be, uh, I'm definitely going to hold that one up until we see something. But just get ready. These could be the big candles that we start getting here. Uh, it's funny because I was waiting for this beginning of the year to have some action. But now you're getting your, like these candles are getting massive. CDs are a little safer than bonds, depending on how you want to look at it, just because it's without the debt ceiling stuff. But other than that, the usual traditional standard is government. Government-backed assets are, are best in class in terms of safety or quote-unquote risk-free. It's daily. It's good. This is a good reshuffle, though, because some banks will probably sell stock. Some are going to do a bunch of other things, but this is definitely, in a weird way, this is what you needed to reshuffle everything from the beginning of the year. So now after, after this, we're just, that's it. Your fucking no landing shit is gone <laughs> because now you have to weigh in financial instability with financial institutions. So this is a good reshuffle. It just now, now you just got everybody. Now you're going to really have people think, okay, I'm up on certain assets from the beginning of the year. Should I take them or not? Is it worth this risk? So on and so forth.
What if today was the landing? Sadly, I don't think SIVB is big enough, but it's uh, it's definitely a bad sign. Yeah, the VIX is actually moving. It's working today. And then bonds are climbing their way back up here. And last time they hit a high, but prior, last time the bonds worked their way into a high, we were near the lows. I don't get it, though. The FDIC is dumb. Like, they definitely do not know a lot about the stock market. Because, like, bro, if S SIVB was going to fail and go bankrupt, you let it go bankrupt, and then it goes up 500%. I don't get it. I never saw the FDIC. FDIC did not rush in anywhere. They didn't come into Bed Bath & Beyond. They didn't stop no hurts. I'm just confused. Why didn't they just... They could have just let it go bankrupt, and then we could have solved this problem ourselves. This will make 2008. So I still don't think we're there, but here's what I'll tell you. In 2008, nothing has ever been shut down this fast. <laughs> That's all. That's all. So it's funny because I'm like, I don't think we're there just yet. But everybody is like, oh, it's 2008. I'm like, dude, this didn't even happen in 2008. What are you like? What are you saying? <laughs> this did not even occur in two. Nobody did this in 2008. Yeah, Troy sent me a breakdown of like ETFs that hold them. But here's the fucked up part. So it's like 200 ETFs have SIVB in it, but 6.9 million shares. I'm pretty sure BlackRock individually owns more than that. Kind of fucked, but BPay would have the most exposure to them in the ETF. SPI, yeah, so it's really small comparatively. Well, there's that, and then another chat sent me this. This is a really good chart. So here is unrealized gains and losses on investment securities. This is all that matters now. So these are people who have bought bonds, and ever since the bond rates have been going up, there's held to maturity in light blue, and then dark blue is available for sale, uh, which is like... Uh, what they got rid of yesterday. But this is the problem. This is exactly 750 billion of losses. And that was at 2022. So now we're probably going to get uh, to that level or more, depending on what Powell does. All right, watch out here. Is this why Powell switched to Dovish? Maybe, but the latest conference didn't help out because SIVB, they made those changes after listening to Powell. <laughs> Dude, it's fucked. So going back to the danger zone.
Yeah, this is a good chart. Zero Hedge posted this. Shout out to Twitch chat. Here are all the big four banks' net unrealized losses on bonds. But that's not even that much. That's $250 million. That's nothing. Comparatively. <laughs> so they have good, but Bank of America has the most. Then JP Morgan, I would say, is number two, or Wells Fargo, and then City. But it's not too bad. Is that billions? So still, though, it's even if that's two fifty billion for four banks, I guess then that makes they make up twenty five percent. Oh, two point five billion. That's then that's nothing. Two hundred fifty billion would be different, but like that other chart I showed you was seven hundred fifty across the board. That's everybody. And that's whatever is recorded and reported. The stock market was bluffing this whole time, but I think it just rates are hitting a danger zone now. And then if customer deposits leave, I can't wait to make this video for you. I, I have one thing I want to tell you. It's huge tinfoil, but it makes a lot. It's It's actually everything I've been telling you about, which is funny. So watch out here if this breaks. Not looking. Oh, my God. What a hideous book map chart, bro. This just looks like systematic selling. It just looks like a straight dink, 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 dink. Okay, Vons are climbing back up. Okay. I think I'm going to take the loss on tap. That was a flip from yesterday or two days ago. 250 loss on that. Anything else I have is more value. I still have the Tesla, Amazon, WWE that hurt, but I don't want anything else to get bigger. And then VIX keeps going up. Let's see. All right, big, big flush here, or at least big volume, but get ready. We're coming towards the 3880 low. Uh, I don't know if more news is circulating. And then IAA is up as voting shows Richie Bros holders back merger. Well, I think we're just getting to the level LNG on the high. That's it. This is just the day. Like I was telling you from here, if we don't get to the 200 day, it's done. And that's exactly what's happening right now. So, and then you had that little mini pop out of nowhere. And then this, this is just straight selling off automatically, man. So I think you still got a stupid bounce in play because it's Friday, but you're already at a hundred million on the spy. I think they're just orderly trying to get whatever money they can out of this. Mm. that's why. So you'll probably go, you probably have another, you have 20 points from the low if it does flush. Even Tesla's giving up some now. There's NVIDIA. It's weird. Banks are staying somewhat pinned. Like XLF is just holding, still down 1.2. Fourth worst. Actually, tech is worse than financials now. Mm. 
And then the bonds have came back here, even the volatility index. Zillow dying on volume. Yeah, just watch. This is a very important level. We don't want to do what we did yesterday. So it's already around like 10 o'clock right now. If you really start to flush, it was the same thing yesterday. Look at this. 10 o'clock yesterday, you come into the low, 944, and then that's where all of the damage started to happen here. SB SVB surprise deposit drop causes mayhem. Mm -hmm. So get ready here. Approaching the level. This is uh, same thing as yesterday. A bounce would be nice, but if we do start to pick up any heavy selling, this could set the tone for the next hour or so. JPM is 45 billion of unrealized losses on books, three times more than SBIV. As long as they don't have a deposit issue, that's that's fine. That's like it's it's you see it's, you need two things. Well, that or unless every American or a po population of America decides to pull all of their money from these banks, then that's the only way that becomes an issue. So none of the the that's the funny like a lot of people are down on bonds. It's not uncommon like uh, not you know if you think they were the only people who bought like think about how many times you see a bond auction right who's buying that and then who bought it in 2018 2019 2020 2021 all of that so it's just as long as you get a uh, like people are going to be down but you actually need them to uh you need them to have another issue that causes them to have a reason to take those losses now uh, and actually realize them. That was the catalyst to SIVB. Yeah, exactly. Main Street has yet to run on the banks. How could you not see this coming? I uh, I think we talked about it early, and we were bringing it up yesterday, but I didn't want to uh, jump ahead of the gun, and I was more focused with the uh, broader stuff, but we picked up on it middle of the day. I mean, I said, I was like, I think we're the only one freaking out about it. Well, I was we, were, we discussed all of these scenarios yesterday before it was even talked about on any, on any financial media, but I wasn't... Uh, I wasn't willing to go after, uh, you know, short everything play and that it was going to lead to a 24-hour shutdown by the FDIC. Uh, I don't think that was on anybody's bingo card. But we were talking about this like I didn't want to freak out, but I was saying, I was like, this is borderline looking like panic. We were saying that all day yesterday. The banks kept selling and we were discussing what this meant, uh, but very hard to foresee this as a, Oh, yeah, like this was obviously going to happen here. This is the start. It is, and that's the beauty of it, is that we don't really, you don't need to, it's great if you hit anything leading into it, but as long as we uh, actually know what's going on now, and then we see where this goes, uh, then... That's like there's levels to this. So I don't even I still think it's all early, uh, especially <laughs> considering it's only been 24 hours. No, these were high quality bonds they had exposure to. This was just this was a deposit issue 
that made them have to take their losses on their bonds. Yeah, somebody was on Fox. Some dude on Fox was talking about it on Sunday or like Monday, and they were saying, get out of regional banks. And then this all happened. Yeah, Larry McDonald. So get ready to hear that little bounce. If this fails, you're going to the downtrend will get violent. So just get ready here. You're two points above the level, maybe four points. But this is one you hit the low, do the little mini pop. If you can't hold that, it's, it's gone. It was the guy who made the huge withdrawal to kick it off. <laughs> nah, I think it was somebody related to crypto or FTX. Or maybe a, a tech company that needed money. But it's that's the thing. The source of this, the real seed, we don't know yet. And I don't think we will. And I don't think you're entitled to know. I'm still in Bill. Bill is a great performer today. <laughs> Every day. I think Bill went up more than usual today because of all of the volatility. And then everybody buying uh everybody buying up the yields today too. People ran to the bonds today, which is weird. The last two days, even yesterday, we got a little hint of it that we talked about, but this was a huge gap on all of them. I think we're pinned for the day. I think we got one more flush left in us here. And just the last couple of days here, by this time, this is where the death and destruction occurs. Walgreens getting cheap enough now, but now the problem is as some names that I would want to pick up get there, we, we have everything else just following right behind it. So I do like where Walgreens is at right here. I think you could go a little lower, but like, you know, people are, again, if, if you held cash from January till today, I mean, on a scale of one to 10, how excited are you? <laughs> you see what I'm saying? So it's like, we're probably going to have a lot of opportunities here uh, as we, uh, as we start moving forward. So I wouldn't be too quick to shoot with the long term. And again, the whole idea is you should be able to get a couple of percentage points uh, off of your off of your yield. So, yeah, you could nibble. I think if you want, I don't I want to go with I want to go all in with everything, but it's decent. But now everything is following behind. I would be looking to buy some of the banks, yeah, but I think it's just too early to make that decision now until we actually see what's up. Like I'm saying, I mean, no matter what, I, I hate that it's just such a big deal right now, and this has dominated the conversation here, but I really do stand by it. I just still think it's really early to make your, dis your mind up on any of this, where it's like this could either become very, very big, or this could get blown under, you know, you could sweep this under the rug in a couple of days. So that's what we need to wait for and really be able to assess how big this is actually going to be. So I think anything premature, you got a lot of risk reward on both ends. So 
you got to see. But spot futures are going to 3880 right now, right where we're at on the SPX. Eighty two points away. So watch if it leads to either big flush or air brakes. JPM was one oh sixth last year with no bad news. Would not be at one thirty with huge asset risk. So that's the paradox of today. All of these banks that had these losses. They were actually the worst in October. That's the that's the weird part about this. This is like I don't know. This is uh it's always existed. <laughs> it's like I don't know. It's like a it's like a mole on your skin that has always been there, and now everybody's looking at it and they're like, wait, is that cancer? I think that's cancer now. But it's like it's been there the whole time. So, like, unrealized losses on bonds for Bank of America, J.P. Morgan, it makes sense why those stocks were probably at that level because in October, the yields were highest. So these are when yields were the highest, all of these bank stocks were down. Everybody knew about this. You see what I'm saying? This is why today is so weird, and that's why I'm like, okay, this could easily get blown over. Or if there's a, a wave of withdrawals, then we have a problem. But this isn't like this is a, a new thing that everybody was like, oh, my gosh, how did we not know this? And now, like in, 2000, like in October 2022, technically, you could argue some of this was priced in, or at least it showed up on a balance sheet. But here's the funny part. Your unrealized losses on bonds are in fact lower than where they were at in October, November. You see what I'm saying? So this was October 18th to October 24th. Rates were almost half a percent, one percent higher. That's billions of dollars of more losses for anybody holding these assets. So technically speaking, you should actually have less leading into September, but even then the market was a lot lower. It's not like this is a good rate to be at, but all of these companies, Bank of America, JP Morgan, SIVB, every single one of them already had this problem and chances are they were probably recognizing or way higher unrealized losses uh, six months ago, just given where bond rates are today versus then. What percentage are they down? Some are down a lot. It just depends where they got them from. So like SIVB, what made them so bad is that they bought all of them in a very, they put a big amount at a wrong time. Whereas like other banks like Bank of America, JP Morgan, they're just constantly moving shit around. They're constantly hedging. Like they have a lot of different exposures. But SIVB, they bought their bonds at, I think average maturity is 1.8 or 1.79. Uh, which means that at 4%, I mean, you do do the math there. Let's say at what? Let's say 4% minus 1.79, 221, divide that by 1.79. You're down like 123%. <laughs> so tech, tech, you're you're down a lot. You're down a lot. That means, and then it depends on what price you're going to sell it at. And that will determine your yield for whatever the buyer is and they're getting paid on it too but that's if you want to sell it today you see but you're not supposed to sell it today right that's the whole idea their mind of logic is like i buy it i let it sit for 10 years i don't care what the price is at i get all of my i get 59 billion dollars back 90 billion dollars and then i get it back with a 1.6 percent return so you actually don't lose money if you wait till maturity but the problem is if you can't wait till maturity, well, then then if you, you're going to have to pick it before it's ripe and sell it for pennies on the dollar. It's like pretty much like 100 minus 1.79, right? 
So let's it's like they bought their bonds at ninety eight dollars and at maturity they get back a dollar or they get back one hundred. Are you following me? So that's that's where it's at right there. So if you have a one point seven percent yield on a hundred bucks, let's just assume it's like buying your bond at ninety eight seventy one, right? So now if you want to sell your bond to somebody and rates are at 4.75, right? Or let's say the 10 years at four, you're going to be selling that bond for 96 bucks. That's how you could offer somebody a competitive yield today where you're saying, I have a 1.79% bond today. I'll sell it to you for $96. 90, see what I'm saying? 96 cents on the dollar. You buy it at my price you're going to get 4% back plus the coupon every single month or every single quarter or every semi-annually or annually. And then you're saying, boom. And then that's if you could sell it there. If they can't get that supply, you either lower the price or if they could get 97 bucks for it, then there you go. So that's kind of a good way you could look at it. That's the easiest way to view bond pricing and understand that. Barclays expects half a point rate hike in March after jobs data. They don't even see any. They're like, okay. Mm-hmm. That's losing two and a half, not 125. That's assuming everything looks good on paper. <laughs> You see what I'm saying? It's not like uh, they're they're gonna really have to heavily discount it to unload that amount of money. You know, I'm just I'm trying to speak in a general way to look at it, where it's just like you, they bought these bonds at a price, they bought them at a one percent discount, but all of these bonds are going at four percent now. So you are have to to sell all of your amount there. You're gonna have to. That's that's just where this is all starting from where you have to at least be able to willing to sell things you paid a hundred dollars for, for a lot cheaper to get it out and get somebody to buy it. Because now why would you even buy that when you could go to treasury direct and find that anywhere? Yeah. Volume is at a hundred mil right now. This is crazy. 98 million. I even looked at the weekly volume. It will be, it's kind of like last week, but It'll probably beat the volume of the Fed. And then we have CPI. And then there's your flush now. So see if any of the banks start coming down. Low tickers, gassing. And this is what we were waiting for. A new low on the market. Damn, that just flushed through two different levels. 3880 to 3875. That's it. 3860 next in line. And then 3830, then 3800. The bonds are coming back up here too. They didn't even move on that. That's terrifying. Boeing's dropping. Spy going down. We bull add. Oh, you guys got ads. I need to go to the bathroom. I need bathroom in a carbo right now. Let's go. Second half of the day. This is not a good look though. This is setting up the uh setting up for a very strong downtrend to continue uh through the second half of the day here, ladies and gentlemen. It'll be on the lookout. Bloomberg Top right. Experts. Follow me on Instagram. Great Happy trading surname. I love you. I'm Shanali Basic, and this is Bloomberg Real Yield. Time now for the auction block, where there was a flood of issuance to get ahead of the uncertainty. European bond issuance topped 540 billion euros since the start of the year, the fastest pace on record. There has been over $60 billion in sales in March alone. On the other hand, in the United States, a bit of a slowdown this month, which tends to be one of the busiest times in the primary market. Sales are falling short compared to the last two years. And one particular name that stood out to me amid all the uncertainty is Uber. It sold a $760 million leveraged loan, and it comes after a $1.75 billion leveraged loan offering last month. But we're going to talk about the failure of SBB because it is certainly getting all the attention today. Earlier, PGM's Mike Collins weighed in. 
when the Fed hikes policy, uh, tightens policy too much, right? And you see the cracks start to come and you never know where it's going to be. I mean, I wouldn't have guessed it's the Silicon Valley Bank. You have this run on the bank risk out there. And there's so much um, debt out there in the world that, that investors own from insurance companies to pension plans, to banks, to investors that are underwater, right? That they have real, uh, unrealized losses, right? And if you have to crystallize that, as is happening at, at a Silicon Valley Bank, it, it gets to be really painful. Still with us is Megan Graper of Barclays, Brian Railing of Wells Fargo Investment Institute, and Aberdeen's Luke Hickmore. You know, guys, I'm kind of surprised that, you know, you saw so many cracks in the economy already, crypto, technology, and you're seeing two banks that have focused on those sectors really feeling the pressure from it. I'm wondering, are there other areas of, economy, of the economy, Brian, that you think banks could start to feel the pain from that will start to deteriorate the credit quality that we're seeing among the borrowers? I'm sure there yeah. are other uh, issues that will emerge, um, uh, further cracks, if you will. But it, what's really holding it all together right now, in my opinion, is just a really strong labor market. And until we see that market, until we see the labor market start to roll over, I do think that um, you know, we'll be able to hold this thing together for a bit longer. Luke, I think you had something to say there, too, way right in, because clearly there are cracks elsewhere that could start to ripple over. Bro, these guys are high. <laughs> these guys are all just smoking some good shit right now. <laughs> They're like, it's the labor market. That's the only real thing. What do you mean the labor market? They going to lose their jobs if it gets to any. What are you saying right now, sir? Man. He really pulled out the power card. Well, you are flushing right now still. So get ready. I mean, I'm just worried about the downtrend, but I think we could go as low as 38.60. That's it now. That was our, our only decent-sized pop we had. Well, now it's gone. That's it. 39, 38.60 or at 38.72, you're 12 points away. The faster it hits it, it may be better, but then that'll be more ominous. But if you could slowly work your way in there with air brakes, you'll buy time. But... Uh, again, that that's that rejection of that 200 day. I was telling you earlier, this is it's it's been dead since. Tesla, S Dow, bro. I love how the banks are staying pinned. Goldman's dropping. J P Morgan though, I don't know what. I think J P Morgan. I bet you they they're doing buybacks or something. Because that thing is holding up way too strong. But so is Wells and then even Bank of America. But then Goldman is the one paying for it and then the other guys. Then FRC is still staying pinned. I'm still in the Goldman, yeah. I'm going to hold those over the weekend. I mean, uh, I have other, I have all all sorts of stuff up and down. But I'm not going to, I don't, I'm down to take a smaller risk on any of the banks. I still have upside. I have upside banks, so now I'm adding bigger downside. And I'm just going to ride those through. Mm, which banks are entangled with them? That is a, a harder one to see, but you can see every bank owns SIVB. That's the funny part. But besides that, it's hard to see like direct connections unless... Um, we could really start piling through their filings. Mm, let me see, actually. But it just sucks because, like we're saying, this is not a... It's a very weird situation because it's just... They have a uniqueness to them. Damn. Oh, that's where the yen was yesterday. 38.70, another new low now on the market. Uh, you're not really air breaking. This is... This has been now a solid six minutes of decline from 38.80 to 38.69. So this, they're not slowing down at all. It's low key like yesterday around the same exact time, which is, which was ugly. Three, eight, five. Damn. I think we said 380 minimum off of the job shit, but damn. That was off of 50 basis points. Now you don't even have 50 basis points priced in. Again, the predominant 60 
percent is priced in for a quarter. Three eight eight six. Another low. That's it. You're probably gonna go to thirty eight sixty here, and then flush it out. Then you'll get a pop. That'll be the air breaks. And if it doesn't, oh, you better. I hope you prayed to the Lord, your Savior. Mm-hmm. They're still going. Vix is even working. Apple's on the low now. The banks need to move a little bit harder, though. I'm surprised. These are the ones calming down here. There's Goldman at the low. JP still near the high. This is uh, this is real estate stocks taking the hit now, and then materials, and then staples. No defensive is working right now. So all of your defensive industries are down. Let me see if I could get it for you. Yeah, new lows, and you even have the VIX on the high. You only have 38 names in the green right now in the SPX. 40, 484, or 464 in the red. 3865. So five more points. You've dropped 15 points in about five or seven minutes. Mm. Charles Schwab. Yeah, they have low deposit rates, so I could see that. But we are going to have to take this one step at a time. But as of now, financials are the risk. Oh my gosh, indicator flashing. What does that even mean? Um, <laughs> this book map looks so ugly today, too. It's not even a book map. This is just... This is like one at a time, sir. One at a time. So three eight six six. The low is three eight six five ninety four. You're trying to. This would be your first air break if it could hold up. February 23rd, they had their 10K. Again, new low right there, 3.86591. Jeez. Uh, so five more points, and then you'll get some relief. But if not, this is our dude. That was 15 points real quick. Uh, I'm going through their 10K right now until we bounce. I want to see this. Because everybody has questions on who they're associated with. But there is a lot. Another low. Three eight six four seven five. So it's going it's slowing down a little bit from earlier, but you're dude that this downtrend it's playing out just like yesterday. I mean wait to thirty eight sixty and then we go from there. Oh shit. I forgot I had that MES from yesterday. That's annoying. That one I forgot about that. Oh man. I totally forgot about that. But then I think I have an old MNQ. Mm -hmm. Let's see. Yeah, that one's RIP. 
So 3860, we'll see if it bounces. I'm going to get out of that one when it bounces. I got an auto set. RIP Biotech. It's just like yesterday. Same exact thing, and then you bounced where? 1115? Nope. So you got a lot. You're, you're bouncing at like 1055. <laughs> Sorry, Habibi. Sorry, Habibi. You will have a lot. You might have an hour of this. Because this, this is actually bigger than yesterday now. And then this is all on volume. Is that 3860? No way. Okay, dude. 3830. 3837 is the next level. I don't know if we'll go that low at this point. That would be uh that would bring you around like two and a half percent. They cover Raul is here. It is for a little bit. Much lower. 3837 is ridiculous here. That means you were for a week that you started out above four thousand to go down to thirty eight hundred flat, that would about be that would be what would happen. Mm. We have the Goldman still. ORN on the high, Orion Group. So there's a little wick off at 30. I was going to say, I was like, dude, that hit 3860, flushed it below two points. Watch, because if that fails and does one of these little popping locks here, it's not going to look pretty. But if you break below here and actually hold, 3837 is the next level. And then I'm surprised, bro. How is VWAP not even moved with this level of volume, bro? This is already a hundred and four million, and then we have what two and a half hours left. That is actually wild. So let's see. I mean, we started bouncing yesterday around 1050, so that means we could still have downside, but you did. You did 30 minutes of downside here in a minute. Yeah, you didn't get a bounce to like 11. I guess 1040. Now you're at what, 1030? You got your little bounce and then you dropped. But then you were already at 39.59. And then it took you another uh, hour to test the 200 day. And then you broke the 200 day and then that was it. Yeah, low ticker is still smashing downwards. So there's a lot of momentum there. Watch if the banks give it up. And then the bonds are catching a bit again, which, again, that's not good because we're watching the market go down. And then everybody is uh, is still buying bonds on that. Oh, where's that other one? Even then, I think the bonds, 1.79, NASDAQ and bonds are directly inverse. Oh, would you look at that? The divergence is almost closed. So if bonds come up a little bit and stocks come down a little bit, this would actually close up. Very interesting. I'm going down a little more. I, I feel like a schmuck. I totally forgot about that MNQ from yesterday. That's a, or the, what's it called? The uh, 
MES. So I'm going to take a $1,400 loss on that. Uh, but then I'm just going to stick all the money in the bonds. Scammers. I scam myself. Yeah, I did. I scared myself. I really did. Cuz those are green in the morning. I didn't I didn't even think about it. Um, uh, where was it? Oh, I don't know. We'll see. Give him a second. 39.58. I will do it. Okay, I bought 300 more of TYD, 3063. So now I have 500 shares total of that. I just don't like the risk with it, with it being up so much. But now even the spy and bonds are almost matching up. I don't know if I would short here uh, just because, like, we're down a lot in the last week. That's what you got to be careful of. So it's hard to find the balance. But, I mean, I think if you I think if you play light on anything, because the only thing that hurt me this week was going big, even that MES. I mean, that was decent size, but that could have been a lot worse if it was a lot bigger. But then the big ESs hurt me by going in too much with size. I think right now, nibbling, you could go either direction. But if you do try to take size here, your only risk is going to be these fluctuations. You're below 38.60, though. They're 38.57. I know if I held NVIDIA, it would have been good either way. But I scammed myself on a couple of things. Whoa, 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 whoa. Bro, low ticker's tweaking out right now. Nothing's happening. There it is, though. No, you just hit a new low. Low ticker and high tickers tweaking out. Volatility indexes are going up. Spy is coming down. You're going to have to wait a little bit, my friends. That's it. It's not, dude, you're not even respecting 3860. I don't know if you guys realize how crazy this is. You're about to go 2%. You're a quarter percent away on the NASDAQ. Spy is catching up there with it, too. Thirty-eight, thirty. That's it. Thirty-eight, thirty-seven. You go back to January six rally. Like this is it. You are end. Is this? What date is that? That's J that's December. Where did January start? No. So now you're actually below the high candle of the first day of the year. That's it. And you closed right. Thirty-eight, thirty brings the S and P back to break even. <laughs> Which January 6th rally? <laughs> That's funny. Uh, the stock market rally. The stock market January 6th rally. Yeah, January 3rd. So you closed right here. 38.39 puts the market break even on the year. And then you're already into the low candle of where we already started out with that. My goodness. That was hilarious. <laughs> Which January 6th rally? <laughs> 10 out of 10 for sure. But adding to the long term? In a little bit. I mean, we don't have to... Uh, the long term's in the best position possible. I mean, we wait in... We bought the October dip. We sold covered calls in January and February. We held our cash, and now our cash is in high-yield instruments. All we have to do is just you f have the names you want, 
wait till they get to a, a decent level, and I think you could start nibbling, and then that's it. But you should be in a you should be in the best position possible right now. So you should be able to your long term, uh, and then the beauty of what I showed you guys the other day is quite simply, if you're getting that cash on the long term, you shouldn't even feel anything right now. And what I mean by that is like you have no, you don't need to even FOMO into anything. So whether you want to buy something or do whatever, it's like at the end of the day, even if you don't buy something, you are going to get 4%, right? Or at least somewhere around there. And then the whole idea would be we wait and now let the CPI come in, let Powell come in, let everybody you know make up their mind on what's going on. Let's see what happens with a potential bank run, whatever it may be. But now you have your, you should be golden. Uh, even more so than you were after October. So I would wait a little bit, but like we've talked about, I think you could nibble at a couple of things if you want it. Like, damn, like 3M is below 105 right now. So that's actually one level, but I want it at like 100. And that's what I'm saying. You could just go after plays if you want, but just I would be a little bit more patient here. I'd be patient before you turn full bear, and I would be patient before you, you know, throw all of this cash you saved up at stocks to hold right now because this is weird. Uh, just everything you we're entering in March now and we're doing the same shit again because now it's like, we're back down here. Like, how does everybody feel about this right now? And it's just like, there's no point of uh, like, give yourself some time with it because it's just now you're at a shitty 50, 50 spot and it's showing how quickly things have changed. So you should be good though. Uh, because now like entering in the middle of March, you have so many people going back and forth. And now it went from no landing to soft landing to now all of this. So just take a little bit there. You'll be good. I'm sad. I feel man. It's okay. I'm mad. I trapped myself on the ES, bro. This one, this probably was more disappointing than my NQ trade. Uh, just cause now I'm making literally, I put out one fire and then I just started another fucking wildfire. <laughs> so it's, it's all good though it's all good man it's okay but either way short-term memory because if the, the year keeps playing out like this we're gonna be good we're gonna be able to find our way out you'll get a lot of them Biggest short position is in the NASDAQ. So that's good. Numbers have to be wrong. Not even. I already rolled the NQ. That's what I did yesterday. So I already rolled the NQ and now we're we're doing great on that. So I even I'm positioned good and then uh anything that goes uh like even the gap between the two has calmed down. So I'm glad we rolled over yesterday. We actually rolled over at a great time. I mean, what's the gap between them now? Yeah, like you made more on the next month contract. We got an extra six, seven points by rolling over yesterday than, than holding the other contract. Damn, new low, 38.55. You're running into the lows again. I should have rolled the ETH, all of them, man. I think ETH would have been good, but I was, dude, you're fighting a, a animal. That's why I'm like, man, to watch everybody just put their tail between their legs so fast. I'm like, man, this is the same shit. They just burned three months of time. <laughs> That's all it was. You had to be patient and willing to deal with the pain. And then that was it. And then I just double trapped myself again. But overall, though, this is uh, this is the environment we need. It's just the beginning. There it is. Another new low on some of the highest volume you've seen. 
Bargains everywhere. Not really. <laughs> That's the crazy part. We're just back. But you are about to, like, you are in the candle at the beginning of the year now. So if we go down another 20 points, the S&P is about to be negative on the year. 20, less than 20 points, like 16 points, you're there. So no bargains. You're just getting back to beginning of the year. But now, I mean, now how do you feel about 2023? Recession canceled? No. I haven't heard that one in a couple of days. At some point before continuing. Eventually, but it just all depends on the <laughs> on all of this news we're getting and how it plays out. There it is. Another new low again. You're kind of air breaking, but it's also looking like it's just tilting downwards. 3853. Yeah, I still have the Zim. No, this is just, this is good though, but we're just, it's a violent reset. Like that's it. The Bulls just got back down to reality and then you made the Bears wait enough time that it was still even difficult, and now nobody even knows. It's just it, bro, because that, that's a great comment there. It's like, imagine if you were really bullish, thought it was going to be a generational rally, and then now you're back to break even. What are you going to do for 2022? It's just it's going to start getting emotional again, and that's why I even think by middle of the month here, it's going to be uh this could be a, a very historic month. We're going to find out just considering how we've already moved, how we've started, you get the expirations, and you get CPI, then Powell, and then you throw in a bank run, and then that's it. The market is considering Powell rate cuts for now, but it's not. This isn't the rate cuts you wanted. Like, it's a... Uh, I don't even know. Like, trust me. It's like, it's like having a crush on a girl. And then she says, I'll never get with you. And then one year later, she goes and has two kids. And then she says, I'll get with you. And then she says, I also have $80,000 in credit card debt. It's not the rate cut you want, man. That's what I'm saying. So it'd be like, oh, well, I get the girl. Yeah, but it's a lot. It's a different in the last 12 months. I'm just so it's just going to be like. You got to deal with a lot of stuff now that it's like you could get the rate cut, but you are dealing with a with a with a much more is very, very different, man. It's very, very different. Two kids in one year? Exactly, bro. You have a stagflation baby and an inflation baby. I think they're twins. That was the funniest thing you've heard all week? Really? That's good. Unless, I don't know why. Do you, I hope you don't relate to it too well. I have great analogies. Thank you. Some people get mad offended. So I'm glad to hear some people are taking, a, taking it in stride. You know what I'm saying? It's always good to see. Always good to see. Okay, that little bounce ain't holding. Man, I hate these. I hate these little like mini gas yeah, gonna flush again. Oh, a book map still looks broken.
TYD is a 10-year bond ETF protection. That shit is just levered up. If you wake up to anything bad over the weekend, or if, if CPI even comes in lower, bond yields are going to rip, and then you'll get protected, or if there's more bond sales, and there you go. The damage will be in full tilt. This would be the this would be the worst cut if they have to cut because of a bank failure. I don't I I didn't even factor this in. Nobody has. It's <laughs> I'm telling you, it's hideous. Like, do you realize the messaging that they've sent for the last three months? Very specifically, inflation's coming down. Okay, but now it's not coming down, and now the job's not done, and now the data's going back up. So we're going to cut, but now we can't raise rates. It's actually the worst. This is borderline getting to the worst possible scenario. Oh, Jay. Jay's coming for you, Charlie. What's up, baby? Good morning. We're going to hit the, we're, it's honestly, it's playing out perfectly where you have hype that leads in the direct capitulation. I just, I didn't think it would happen by March. I thought like June, September, but <laughs> that was fast. I mean, we know that March is going to be very decisive. There's the flush. Eight the level, man. You're going, that's it. We're about to go break even on the year, man. 38, 39, you break even on the year. You were down 1.7 on SPY, 2% on the NASDAQ, and 1.3 on the Dow. I love how JP Morgan's still holding up. Mm. Ah. No, this is crazy. You're you're going negative. And no, there's nothing stopping it. In a weird way, though, I think the zero days are helping the puts come or bring this down too. <laughs> Remember, zero day options don't have to just buy calls, but you're going straight for the. I've never, dude. I haven't seen it. It has a target, bro. It's going for break even. It is literally going for break even right now. It, it did this yesterday with the two hundred day. It, it didn't respect any level. Bro, this thing is aiming at break even on the year, and they want it. 1.7. Mm. Urban hands. I want to short more JP Morgan. I'm kind of, but then I'm like, He's a dickhead, and he's going to fight back. That's the only problem. Yeah, lo dude, a 111 million volume with t two hours left. There is a rubber band to the upside at one point, but I don't know. And then now you're going to have the weekend risk of any news with the banks, and then one day to burn until CPI. CPI is the only thing that could save you now. That's it. In a weird way, it went from two days ago, CPI was going to kill you. Now CPI is going to save you. It's Dude, this is wacky. I'm telling you, I just, I think that's it. You're back to break even. Fear is returned with a very large hint of panic. And then now the same thing that brought you down is going to be the same thing where you're like, well, wait a minute. I thought we're down on 50 basis points. Now we can't do 50 basis point. And then, ah, no, I think CPI is going to save the market. That's the only hope. Other, well, other than that, you're done. If CPI is going to be hot, I think it might play out like uh, October 13th. If CPI comes in hot, you're already at break even. You're going to gap down to 387 or 367. <laughs> so you're already there. Like, don't forget that. So if, like, we have CPI and you're already here, 
and then you gap down here. I mean, you'll have a little bit more and then it'll it'll or maybe it won't gap up or it'll probably gap around Powell. All right, you're flushing one more time. Eight forty seven. This developed in this is 24 hours. That's it. It sucks because now this is where the market is just dealing with a lot of shit. You're not worried about what you were worried about two days ago. It's just it's everything all at once. So now you have to deal with Fed inflation, stagflation, the numbers, job, CPI. But now there's a side bank run on <laughs> just running right now. That is leading to potential reasons for people to get rid of liquidity. I and mean, now the whole entire January, February rally has been eliminated. And the stock market is a 10 points away from break even on the year. So there's a lot moving all at once. Yeah, Silicon Valley Bank, biggest failure since 2008. I can't believe the FDIC already said it's a bank failure. That's just the crazy part. And then watch out. That little relief there is not going to last probably. That was your first decent wick. But last time we did that, it lasted for two minutes. And then open up the door to another 10-point flush. You do that here, you're going to hit the level, break even. And then we'll see where things go from there. The dollar's on the high now. Still down a lot on the day. That one's a weird one. Mm. Everything, everywhere, all at once. Bottom is in. I think if you hit the yearly, we'll find out. But right now, you're still kind of, it's kind of like the 200-day average. I think FDIC acted quick because there's more at risk than we know about. It could be. And I think that it was just, if they let it run for a little longer, even if they wanted to contain it, it just would have made everybody's problems worse. But even then, it's still surprising that those guys got there in 24 hours. I don't... <laughs> <laughs> like, do you realize what happened? That means by the time the market closed yesterday, motherfuckers were already on a plane from New York to get to San Francisco and go over there and start talking with everybody and being able to even start looking through everything, internal documents, and getting to that decision and having a decision within minutes of their bank branches opening. So... That's the crazy part, uh, but I, I think they did it for, it would have made the internal problem harder to solve, but that's actually crazy that that, that has escalated that fast. Yellen said the government monitoring a few banks. They're talking about Silver Bank is another one, so you got to keep that in mind. Silver Bank is considered in a few Agents have waited all their life for this excitement. Nah. I'm telling you, this is... <laughs> like, some of you should be happy, okay? That's all I'm saying. Some people in here, especially everyone who's like, eat the rich, and like, fuck all this, and I can't believe this, and then all the rich people. Like, y'all should be cheesing right now, because, dude, this is just... <laughs> this is the worst bank to get hit 
if you have a lot of money because it's just like bro this just hit all of the all of the richest venture capital people this is just hitting like the tech companies and so like these agents are just like oh shit like this isn't even like a threat yet yet to any r normal person this is a threat to damn rich people who made millions of dollars investing in tech like that's it or anybody who gets venture capital funding and leaves their money there so it's not like it's uh you do you see what i'm saying so it's not like these agents aren't like they have a different problem they have to answer to p <laughs> to people with a lot of big money and that's whose money is at stake right now it's not uh it's like ftx part two but this time it's not sketchy crypto held in the Bahamas by a by a fake vegan. You know what I'm saying? This is just like, wait a minute. This bank has been around since 1987. Everybody from Peter Thiel all the way down to even BlackRock has money with these guys and doing certain things. So it's just like, this is the first time big money is getting really, really hit, uh, if you think about it. Yeah, apparently less than 3%. Yeah, I mean, you don't bank at Silicon Valley Bank with less than 250 grand. <laughs> like, it's a very... How many of y'all have a bank account at Silicon Valley Bank? I don't even have a bank account there. I even hit up one of my friends, and they got a shit ton of money. They got, like, big buku bucks. And I was like, you have money in there? And they're like, nah, we good. So it's just like, you have to... It's a very... It's a club that banks there you're not in that club okay most people aren't so it's it's just like it's not that's why it's actually quite interesting to see it mm-hmm it's a big tech bank that's all it is I wonder how much what's his name has there, like Zuckerberg. Ain't that we're moving to JPM right now? As long as they can, as long as there's no fees and it's easy. Even then, though, move the money to the treasury. <laughs> That's it. You have it till June. Any money, if you're worried about anything, if worst case scenario happens, the only place you could actually get your money back is if you deposit it into the treasury. That's it. U up until the debt ceiling crisis. I think anybody could be next, but also nobody could be next. It's a very, it's a, it's a very, I don't know. This is like trying to spot COVID in February, 2020 or like May. You just don't know. And it's just like, it's very, there's a lot of fear now. You're going to get your panic and all of that, but it's also very, uh, you just don't know. This could be the biggest thing in the world or it could be nothing. So it's still kind of early there. That's why it's just like the treasury, the treasury is the best place right now, no matter what, because then you get your return back by the government. There's your first red shoot or your green shoot in a long time. I might change. They all need money they can't get. Well, that's what I'd be worried about. And that's where it starts to affect you. Because you got to think about it is if they if anybody needs if anybody with big money needs money and they get shit tied up there with silver or whatever, silver SVB, we'll call them that. Uh, the problem would be that they would sell other assets. So this is what I told you about the Swiss National Bank about eight months ago when this Credit Suisse and the Swiss National Bank was going through their little inflation bout, they are one of the biggest holders of tech stocks. And what do people do when money gets tied up in one place? Guess what? Your E-Trade account is probably different than your SVB account or whoever, you know, you're probably not trading with SVB. You're probably holding money in a liquid investments there. But if they, if anybody else gets now fucked off of this, 
and they own millions of shares of other stuff, then that's who's taking. That's what I think is happening today. To be honest with you, I think that the the fact that we have such high volume is that I think other I think people and other banks are trying to sell shit at higher values today, just in case, so that they could have liquid cash, so that they don't turn into SVB. Margin call margin call shouldn't be hitting yet. It's only been 24 hours. You got like 72. This isn't even I don't margin's not the issue right now. <laughs> That's the scary part. This is just big money now getting affected in a different way and then let's just see how deposit activity plays out as a result. The bonds are really high right now. The bonds this is the start. again bond yields have dropped over a third of a percent in 24 hours. That's not on a 10 year. That's not, that's not normal. Uh, there are, it's only happened a couple of times, uh, even in the, in the last couple of months here. So only other time was like on the October, November bounce that you saw that happen. And that's when things were looking good and people were feeling good. But for that to happen on a panic day, uh, that's, that's pretty, uh, it's pretty wild. The bond yield drop is normal but not in that size after being at 4%. Not You don't really go up and have bond yields trend up for four weeks and then just instantly drop a, a quarter or a third of a percent. So that, and again, it makes sense with the Fed futures because what happened, the rate hike odds dropped as well. That means in the snap of a finger in 24 hours, everybody went from don't buy the bonds, the yields are going to go up to maybe we should buy a lot of bonds right now. Now, it's not over yet, and it, again, it's just beginning, but that in and of itself is kind of a, it's a nutty move that makes you, it, it should make you pay attention. It shouldn't make, nothing today should make you freak out, uh, even though the panic is definitely brewing, but everything that we're seeing, and this is what I brought up yesterday, I just said, you got to pay attention. This shit will make you open your eyes up a little bit, just because it's like, why, like, you don't think it's weird that yesterday, even today, Fed future odds dropped like that? and then the dollar goes down, but the market's going down, and then the bonds are catching a bid while the market's going down, and none of that has happened for a couple of weeks or a couple of months now. So it's definitely uh, people's impulse, rational behavior. What made people rationally want to buy or sell bonds has changed. How people are getting viewing the dollar rationally changed there, where people are saying, maybe it is in my best interest to go and do this right now. They don't go through S the Fed stress test? I don't think so, but I don't think this. I don't even think the stress test would have modeled this. I don't know if the stress test accounts for a 50% decline in deposits. Like, that's what I'm saying. Nobody, that's the, dude, I'm telling you, that's the tinfoil is that straight up. It's just like, bro, if everybody pulled their money from a bank account, I don't, that would blow up everything. A legitimate bank run would actually destroy. And because that's what, and that's why I'm saying it's like, is that going to happen? The odds of that are very low, but sadly, that's basically what happened with SIVB. Somebody pulled money out. The depositor, the deposit amounts went down. Their unrealized losses were high. And then an additional person said, pull out your money. And then within 24 hours, everybody starts taking their money out. That's it. You have to either sell your assets or you have a really big problem. Yeah, but the bank stress test, they model scenarios. So like the bank stress test by the Fed, they'll be like, okay, commercial real estate drops 35%, right? Or they say stock market goes down, loan loss provisions go up to 40%. How would you handle this, right? I don't know if they, they account for depositors 
fleeing in mass. I don't know if that is a criteria that they have. If I mean, we could go check, actually. Yeah, exactly. We don't have any problems unless you take your money out. <laughs> but if everybody takes their money out, we have a huge problem. See, so here's the stress test. You know, the stress test is a forward-looking quantitative evaluation of bank capital that demonstrates how a hypothetical macro recession scenario would affect firm capital ratios. They had sufficient capital to continue operations through times of economic and financial market stress. Uh, the quantitative assessment evaluated whether banks had robust forward-looking capital planning. And let's see. Can we see one? See, so like here's February 2023, actually. Ironically, this just came out. So how this works, let me see if I could get the scenarios. So the Fed test ensures that large banks have enough to lend to households, hypothetical agreements or hypothetical scenarios. The severely adverse scenario is characterized by a global recession accompanying by a heightened stress, stress in commercial and re residential real estate, as well as corporate debt. The U.S. employment rate rises nearly six and a half points from the starting point of the scenario to a peak of 10% in the third quarter of 2024. So this is the scenario they do a stress test. They're saying, what happened if unemployment goes to 10%? The sharp decline in economic activity is increased by uh, volatility in markets, widening corporate bond spreads, and a col collapse in asset prices, including a 38% decline in house prices and 40% decline in commercial real estate. The international portion of the scenario features recessions in four countries or country blocks with heightened stress in advanced economies. So here are the big banks they have on there. Bank of Mellon, BNKY, Barclays, BMO, Capital One, Charles Schwab, Citi, Citizens Financial, Credit Suisse, Deutsche Bank, Goldman, M&T, Morgan Stanley, North Trust, PNC, RBC, State Street, TD, Truist, UBS, U.S. Bank Corp., and Wells Fargo. Yeah, so six measures of ac economic ac no, nobody factors in deposits. <laughs> no fucking way. Not one mention of deposit in the whole entire stress test. I got DEP, depending, no depot. Um, what's another word for deposits? Deposits is a pretty, uh, <laughs> it's a pretty simple word. We are bouncing, but I mean, this is what we should be waiting for. Just get ready. Withdraw. Not one mention of withdraw. Outflow. Not one mention of outflow. I don't even think they have inflow. No. Intake. <laughs> Debits, maybe. No. <laughs> so none of these synonyms uh, are, uh, are, are mentioned there. Liquidity. Liquidity has some. So risk factors is uh, characteristics of different risks. These may vary depending on the specified market shock. More specifically, the calibration reflects a uh, variation of speed, which banks could close out hedge risk uh, in the event of market stress. Let's see, receivables. Um, a larger counterparty. Net stress losses. Net stress losses are estimated by applying global market shock 
to revalue securities, financing transactions, and derivatives, including collateral uh, posted or received. Okay, there's only two mentions, not, not even receivable. Yeah. So, it doesn't matter. <laughs> Even if you put S S if you put S I B V under the stress test, if you put them under the most scrutinized stress test by the Fed, nothing would have accounted for this still. They would have passed with flying colors, maybe would have got one mark, but I don't think anybody has really uh I don't think anybody has really expected uh, that level of uh of deposits leaving. That's it. Like, that's just not, it's because it doesn't, nobody expects it. Like, do you guys realize how crazy it is to say bank run? And the fact that I thought everyone was going to get mad at me for putting that in the title yesterday. Uh, but sure enough, everybody was like, it's a bank run. But that's all it is. That's just nobody, the last time you've worried about a bank run was fucking 1928. <laughs> like, you just haven't had a bank run in a very, very wild, wild, wild point. Disasters are never expected. They're not, but this one is just like this is a this is just a very weird reason. Like that's what I'm saying is like this. It, it's as much as this is about the bonds. It seems like it's mainly about people taking their money out of that account. And if that happens, then we don't really have. There wasn't really bank runs in 2008. No. I mean, people were trying to, but the problem wasn't that. It's not like people, you know, after the financial crisis in 2008, real estate's crashing. It wasn't like, you know, you were like, oh, my God, the, the market's going down because of the bonds. No, it was like, you know, lenders were calling you and saying, we're canceling your house sale where we can't give you a loan anymore. It wasn't like, you know, and then Washington Mutual went under and some of the other like banks just went clap, but it was never a result of them holding unrealized losses on mortgage-backed securities and then a portion of their biggest clients removing money. You know, exactly. It was leverage. It wasn't capital or, or liquidity that was just being held at the moment. I tell your friends to withdraw their money and sound crazy. Well, no. Well, that's that's what I'm saying is the, the weird part about this because we don't know what's going to happen. Do I think you should go pull out your money from your bank account? No. Uh, I would probably put it at the treasury. But at the end of the day, it's like uh, if this leads to that fear, who knows if everybody starts doing that. And if that did happen, that would that would be the only if you really wanted a 2023 black swan. It would be everybody treating their bank account like GameStop and everybody, instead of buying GameStop, runs to their bank and tries to withdraw the most amount of money they can until all of these banks are like, yo, <laughs> we can't, we, we, we got a problem. When you say put it in the treasury, can you explain that more? Um, I'm gonna have to charge your company a consulting fee. Unfortunately, uh, we're gonna I have to charge at least uh, half a percent on all deposits since you're getting four and a half. <laughs> no, I'm kidding, but I love you, Troy. Uh, what I mean by that is put it at the treasury. So like you gotta like you go to Treasury Direct right now. Uh, like that's a place you could put your money. Believe it or not. So like you log in and then you go buy a bond. So that way the money leaves your bank account. It's not held with a bank. And now the treasury of the United States has your money and you make an agreement for them to pay you back in three months before the debt ceiling. So that way now you're able to get in there and you're able to do it prior to, to anything. Wells Fargo news. I don't see anything. 
So do you, does that make sense by putting it at the treasury? So that way, instead of, you know, holding money in a bank account, if you go and buy a three month treasury bill, that money leaves your bank account and then it goes into the treasury. But that is the only place where if you're worried about of anything financially, you get your money back in three months. So then it deposits back into your bank account. But <laughs> or I think you could hold an account with them with money. But that way uh, it's it's there. It's just you're able to keep it there and then you're not uh, you're not really worried about anything. How does the treasury invest our money? You don't want to know. Um, they pay for a lot of things, but, and then you don't have to worry about it until the debt ceiling. And even then I really wouldn't be worried about the debt ceiling, but that's what makes it funny because that's like another risk. Cause like the only safe, technically, let's say the banks are in the worst possible shape ever. The funniest part about all of it, uh, would be that three months from now, six months from now, you would even doubt the treasury. <laughs> which is actually wild to think about it's just kind of shitty timing uh but that's the the whole logic here is that the treasury is the only place right now uh but i still trust the banks i mean i'm not moving any money around but yeah Who do you bank with? I bank with all of them. I got just anything you need, man. You let me know. Wheat. How are the Lambo numbers doing? I don't know. I do not know. Basically get like 1% in three months. Borderline, yeah. But even then, it's just that's <laughs> for a temporary period. Like after today, I would say the safest bank in the world right now is the Treasury. That's your only place that does not have unrealized losses on bonds. Or at least even if they did you know, Papa Biden got it covered up until June or September. If we hit the debt ceiling and it's not raised and the banks start to go under, would we, the government be able to do anything? Well, if we get to the point where they hit the debt ceiling and we don't raise it, we're going to default. So at that point, you have a way bigger problem. And that's like, that's what I remember I was telling you guys, I put this on the watch list. I said, the problem is if we go from good, bad to good to now worse. And that's really what happened right here. So it's like that situation you just explained there, like, think about it. At, at that point, you would have a whole nother issue. Now we're not worried about recession. Now we're not worried about inflation. You're not worried. You're not going to be worried about SIVB. You're going to be worried about the United States defaulting. Which shouldn't happen. I split my 750 into three different ones, so I'm insured. Uh, you should be. Mm-mm.
Boeing. Uh, Boeing's popping. Uh, Boeing and GME set up first Boeing freighter conversion line. No, we had that earlier. Wheat is on the rise. Watch war news. Check LMT2 then. FAA says Boeing addressed concerns with 787 deliveries. SJM, I could. They're actually very interesting. Yeah, Boeing's rocketing now. Of course, the one short I had coming back. <laughs> good Boeing news. Good Boeing news. Good time. That should help the Dow out. They approve restarting 787 Dreamliner. Where was it when that? I think the news it was at here when it came out. That's what brought them from 207 to 197. And they bounced back up, and now they got good news from it. Could be able to run a little bit. Yeah, I'm still an Uber. That one's clapped, and then the long term, we sold cover calls on it. Where is the bottom? We'll find out. We will find at least you're dancing around thirty eight sixty. But I think the bottom will be thirty eight thirty seven for the day. I mean you could even flush more. We still have an hour and a half, but thirty eight thirty seven means the stock market is back to break even on the year. So anything below thirty eight thirty seven means S P goes negative. Yeah, FAA approves restarting. 787 Dreamliner. Okay, I need to go to the bathroom, Chad. I love you. God bless you. They're talking more SVB. SVB, more SVB. Maybe, I don't know. Lawrence Summers. All right, follow me on Instagram, at the Trading Fraternity. I love you. I will be right back, and good luck. Good luck. I don't see if this is handled reasonably, and I have every reason to think it will be, that uh, this will be a source of systemic risk. 
Well, joining us to discuss is Duke professor and former chief innovation officer at the FDIC, Sultan Megji. So, Sultan, thank you so much for being here with me in our studios here in Washington. You know the regulator's perspective. Are they likely to view this as an isolated incident or is something that signals something more systemic? They really want this to be an isolated incident. They want this to be tech gone wild. This is big tech getting out of control, stepping out of their lane. But they're very much worried about the systemic side of this, especially with the economy and what we're seeing from the Federal Reserve. Is this likely to result in any changes in marking to market, for example, in the way that the accounting is done here? Uh, we're going to have to have the conversation. Whether or not anything gets across the finish line, that's a, that's a big question right now. Getting those kinds of changes without Congress getting involved is really difficult. Now, there's a concern here that there's some moral hazard into the system. On one hand, it's great to see that there's an orderly process here. On the other hand, you know, did these firms take on way too much risk? You know, they definitely took on more risk than the traditional bank, and there are certainly people who think that banks should be the most boring things out there. You know, they shouldn't do anything. They should just kind of sit there, take deposit, make loans, and, and that's all. And so there's definitely kind of an anti-innovation push against this, and I certainly think we'll hear a lot of people using that logic as a, uh, as a way to stop banks from acting like this in the future. You know, it's funny, when you think about innovation here, you already saw very blatant concerns. Of course, cryptocurrency industry was under pressure for about a year now. You have also technology that is facing greater pressures with the rise in interest rates. But when you're thinking about areas of concern, you just had our prior guest, Brian Brooks, also talking about more areas of stress. What do you think about when you think about that? Well, as we look to the future, the thing that I most worry about is how this kind of stress will limit banking access to early stage companies and companies that are in high growth mode. And that's really one of the features that Silicon Valley Bank did very well that's now not going to be available to them. So as we look to the next few years and we look to economic recovery, you know, most new jobs are created in small businesses. Most new jobs are created out of startups. And if we create an environment where we close off banking access to organizations like that, we're going to stifle innovation. Well, and in theory, if, if that door is closed, the door that remains open is the big guys, right? I mean, does this ultimately, by end result, just make the big guys bigger and maybe more risky? Yeah, 80% of consumer deposits live in less than 10 banks already, and we're just going to continue to see that concentration more and more in these big banks, and I think we're going to see that out of the Silicon Valley bank closure. All right, so give us the look ahead, maybe not that far into the future, but next week. What should we be watching for? What realistically what is going to happen? We be watching I think we're going to see a lot of banks shoring up their balance sheets and announcing it very publicly. I think we're going to see the regulatory community say a lot of very thoughtful and concerning things. And then we will then move into a situation where most of the banks out there are just fine and are going to be just fine. But some of these guys at the periphery are going to have to get very public about what they're doing to shore it up. And finally, just quickly, because this is something that I think took a lot of people by surprise. You've seen this before, obviously. Yeah. A bit, the FDIC having to come in, not in the middle of a day on yeah. a Friday. What does that signal to you? Uh, that it was really bad. Um, it probably means really that bad. over the last day or two, as I believe Bloomberg reported, there were people on the ground looking at things and they were trying to get other banks to come in and either make an investment or acquire SVB, but that failed and it probably failed at the 11th hour. All right, and fail it did. Sultan, thank you so much for bringing us your insight. Really great to have you here in studio. That was Sultan Megji, uh, Duke professor and former F. Sounds bad. And then Boeing, that's a nice four or five bucks. They hate us. Captain Obvious. I mean, it is weird. It is weird. My, oh, my. Chatadonia. What a day. What a day, huh? I don't even know BA Weekly. Uh, I could have. I was thinking even flipping out and just going with the shares there, but I said I'll wait. That one actually could have been a killer option. Let me check. 
Did they go up? Ah, oh, they went one cent to eight cents. Yeah, six cents to oh, those went up a thousand percent on the daily there with that news. Mm -hmm. No, the BA 205s, they were at six cents to 14 cents when we dropped the news. And then now they're at 60. Yeah, no, those are fire. It's been scripted tech layoffs now, banking. But it's weird that it's going after tech. I mean, remember, tech used to be very beloved. Tech is responsible for everything, even down to elections. So it's like, why is why why is tech being targeted? You would think they had a more strength, more or less. Burry's laughing. Yeah, everyone called him an idiot for like two days, and then no one said anything else after that. And the Goldman. I can't believe JP Morgan's still up though. JP Morgan is like one of the, oh, the only names in the green right now. Apple pop and lock. Boeing's still going. We still got 30 minutes till power hour. Apple is uh, coming back down. Kind of looks like the market. That's Tuesday's CPI. That'll be our final stop. Final stop, and then you burn a week dealing with the bank stress up until Powell. JPM, all the banks, they did decent at one point. Boeing just came down on those options. Options on Boeing are going nuts. 25 basis points is fully priced in. 25, well, actually, it's still 50-50. You don't even have 60% on any of them. Group Black submits bid around $400 million for Vice. Fifty. I don't think 50 will happen now. I didn't think that in the beginning, but the funny part about it is like, even if you don't have 50 basis points, it's not like uh, if you have to deal with this bank shit, it's not going to help out the market. You just, you need that CPI. No, the fear came back in heavy again this morning. The volume is wickedly high. The jobs report came in hot, even though there were some good elements. It was overall bad. And then uh, the bank stuff is just, it's spilled over. And the FDIC even shut them down. Oh, Janet Yellen says banking system remains resilient. Uh, we good. We good. Thanks, Janet. Well, Janet Yellen says it's good. She said we have a resilient banking system. So she's not really worried about that. That's that's good. Yeah. I think the market believes her too. TLT. I did buy bond plays. I mean, if we bounce here, the bonds should sell off. So I think there's a lot of risk in the bonds now. But uh, with any of this stress here, it's not going to be bad. <laughs> Jigglypuff, do you use gaslight? It was super effective. 
Uh, there you go. Amen. The banking system's resilient. The only thing not resilient is you. I don't know why you're freaking out. I don't see the Wells, the Wells Fargo reports. I think people are talking about it, but I haven't got a headline on it. Like it doesn't show up uh, on official news wires. And let's be real. Wells Fargo has been missing money for like four years now. It's not even like, you know what I'm saying? Like they've been, I feel like that happens every week with Wells Fargo. So it's not even like new, new news. Yeah, Janet Yellen says full confidence in banking regulations. Janet Yellen comments in a statement. She says banking system remains resilient and has full confidence in banking regulators. market will rally next week until Powell. Hey man, I'm all for hope. I feel you. Uh, but we need, uh, you need that CPI to come in cool or you're dead and I'll be right there with you. TQQ closes below 2050. I haven't really looked at it. So kind of hard to say. 2050. I... Um, I think so. I mean, because even if we go down, as long as it doesn't come down to, uh, you know, TQQ, I don't think the NASDAQ's at risk of losing the yearly gains. Only the SPY is right now. Yeah, so the NASDAQ still has a long, long way to go. Yellen says she's confident SVB regulators will take appropriate actions. Yeah, the NASDAQ still has meat on the bone. Down to 1140. Ooh. Yeah, I guess so. Chips. long fear the nasdaq i don't know we'll see by cpi but the nasdaq is the one with the most meat low-key but you would need more fur bro jp morgan is still going up hideous they're still they're almost i think 135 that's their where they started the year Well, Biden today says he was confident the CPI is going to come in good. That guy's a week ahead. I don't know. I kind of believe Biden. <laughs> I don't know. You know what I'm saying? I feel like Biden, I feel like he the type to like wink, wink, you know, you know what I'm saying? I feel like he's letting us know. I think, you know what I'm saying? I think he's trying to give us the olive branch. He's like, bro, trust me. Yeah, come on. Listen to me. That CPI is going to come in strong. You know, come stronger than the Vicks, motherfucker. What do you think's gonna happen? I'm gonna look like, you know, look like Arnold, Arnold, the guy, the one guy, the, the Terminator. It's gonna be strong. Come on, huh? You see the progress we made? Come on, it's dignity. You got dignity in the S and P right now. Come on, you're not just gonna show up to trade. I want you to show up to trade with dignity. I seriously, seriously, I mean it. It's not hyperbole. That CPI is gonna come in. It's looking solid. Looking better than Jill. <laughs> She's looking fine right now, huh? Come on, what are you tripping about? Simple. What, what, what? A little bank goes down? What, what, come on. When I, when I was a kid, I'll tell you a story about a bank. I was with my grandpa. He, said, he used to call me Corn Pop. He said, come over here, and I showed him that, and, and then my leg hair started to tick up here, and I said, why am I getting so excited? He said, it's cold outside. He said, it's not cold, it's sunny. He said, what do you mean? You want Sunny D? So I went to the fridge. I got the Sunny D. I said, how come it looks like Tang? 
And then I said, what? Then the monkey started swinging, and then he handed me the tang bottle, and then I put it in there, two scoops of the tang, and he put the two stoop, scoops in, and then he started to stir it up, go, da, 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 you, know, you know, come on. Seriously, I'm not joking. This is what happened. It's a real story. And then he came over here, and then I said, what happened? And then the Kool-Aid man busted through the door, and I said, you bet, who's going to pay for that? Huh? Because I said, someone's got to fix this. And he was telling me, no, it's not, it's not, don't worry, don't, don't, you don't, 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 don't make a problem, just drink the Kool-Aid. And I said, what do you mean? And then my grandpa came in and he told me, he said, that's a union wall right there. And he brought down the union wall. Seriously. There's no dignity in that. That's all, all I'm trying to say is the CPI is going to fucking kill it. Don't worry about it, okay? So thank you. And shout out to the, shout out to the, the, the Washington Wizards. It's a good team. It's a good team out there. Can't wait for them to win the Super Bowl. <laughs> Let's go. So, yeah, I don't know what happened there. I blacked out for a second. I'm not going to lie to you. A lot of things were mentioned. I have no recollection of what they were, so I'm sorry if you got confused. My bad. My bad. SVB is seeking to find a buyer by Monday after regulators closed their Silicon Valley bank unit. What effect will this collapse have on inflation? Uh, if you actually have a bigger bank failure, more or less, uh, you're going to... Uh, You'll get deflation, but if not, you get stagflation. The Peter Schiff was right again. Y'all bringing Peter into this? I don't know, though. All you fucking gold people. Okay. Oh, my, all my gold people out there. This is the closest you're getting. <laughs> I'm just telling you now. This is your first bank run in like 90 years. And like low key, bro, this is like the closest you guys have been to being like, yeah, I fucking told you. So honestly, I'm not even talking shit. I'm just putting my hats off to you. I'm just saying this is the closest you guys have been in a solid century. So fuck yeah, man, run it. You know what I'm saying? Run it. That's, I don't know. That's if y'all could give Peter the credit, but this is the closest Y'all have been in a very long time to anything where you're like, I don't know, maybe my gold is actually going to make me some money here today. Mother, what I tell you, huh? Yeah, they running on banks. You can't run on gold, motherfucker. Yeah, what's up, son? What's up, son? I got that gold on me. What's up, son? So y'all, y'all honestly get a W today. I'll give you that one. I'll give you that one. I'm going to hug your one ounce American Eagle a little tighter tonight. Amen. Amen. It's good to have. Mm. Oh, you got ads? There you go. Good. Fuck yeah, man. Y'all still haven't realized Peter Schiff is a walking ad. So that's good. I'm glad. I think, honestly, that's kind of some ironic comedy that following that gold comment, you get an ad. Honestly, I think that's the Lord trying to tell you something because I didn't plan that one out. I'm just, that's all I'm saying. That's all I'm saying. You got a day trade course ad. That means you are looking up a lot of stock market stuff today. Or your trading has been making you very emotional. Definitely there. Somebody got a tr somebody got an ad for like a vacation, and that's just that's it. You got you've been you have no idea what's even happening today. You thought SIVB was an island. You guys, you've been searching up. You're like, ooh, sounds nice. Now you get in Expedia ads and Booking.com. They're like, take me here, there, anywhere. Ah. Uh. Mm-hmm. We got Taco Bell ads. They just know. They're like, we can't sell him shit, but we know he'll give in to a cheesy gordita crunch. Let's get some brand awareness out there and make sure he sees our ad today. Mm. 
Mm -mm. Wall upside. They gave their guidance. You bought Shift Gold Euro Pack funds. You're still upside down on that after four years. You should have just bought gold. Uh, I feel you. Even then, I mean, I made, I'm up like 100% on my gold or something like that and my silver. But then it's been like, is I bought that shit in like 2015. Like That's like eight years right now. Like I low-key wish I grabbed Coca-Cola, sadly. But it's cool to have gold. It brought me a lot of coin flips and other things. So literally SIVB, the only thing higher than SIVB that was considered a failure was Washington Mutual. That's crazy. Hundred percent over eight years is like ten percent a year. I mean, people make fun of my math all the time, but you're close. You're close. I feel you. You're lucky you said that to me and not some internet asshole who's going to pull out a calculator on you. Because I feel you. I mean, man, it is 10% a year, you know, give or take. I Fuck yeah, I feel you, dog. I feel you. That's Arab math. That's how we do it. But, like, if I bought it, if I bought Coca-Cola in 2015, right, I would have made, like, 50% on my shares. And then I would have got all the dividends at like, that was like 5% of yield. You know, you would be up, I guess, the same amount. But then I would just have more shares of dividend. I wish my gold would pay a dividend. And then have like little gold coins come out of it. And that, But that's just weird. That's just, then I'm like a leprechaun duende at that point. So I feel you. I don't get that crazy. Nuclear attack warning broadcast to Russia. That's what Chad says. Oh, McDonald's would have been fire. I wish I bought McDonald's. But I was going through something at 2015. I just... <laughs> my mindset was a little different. I was a little younger. I discovered Zero Hedge. And, like, the world was going crazy. Then China had a surprise devaluation. And then, like, I was just like, hey, man, you know... Maybe I should learn how to grow my own food. Honestly, I was that's it. I just I was gonna do the Peter Schiff stuff, but I just I cut the middleman. I just bought a bunch of gold. That was peak ten. Oh yeah, easily peak ten. It came out a little bit. I saw a recap video. It showed me on my Instagram. It was like make a story or make a short of your memories. And then there's just a video of me in twenty nineteen or twenty twenty just loading up fucking water bottles from a Costco in the back of my G-Wagon. So that was uh that was close. I was getting close there. Rhythm Pharmaceuticals is 3.4 million deposits with SVB RYTM. Yeah, they've already been getting murked. JP Morgan could buy SVB, but, and then they're probably going to get it at a discount. Yeah, we were running out of hand sanitizer. You guys were like, I'll send you stuff, Josh. And I was like, how can I even collect it? How can they even ship things right now? Ah. But anybody who anybody who buys SVB has to absorb like a couple billion dollars of unrealized losses and then make sure their balance sheet would be there. But I don't know. It's a really it's a weird situation because they're really big. And then uh, but I wonder if it'll have any like concerns for regulators. <laughs> like I feel like if JP Morgan is able to buy them for pennies on the dollar, and then, like, I feel like you have to redo the whole entire stress test for J.P. Morgan and all these other things. And then it's going to be like, well, what if they have access to this? Would that be a monopoly? Like, I don't know. 
I think there's value absorbing them. Hell yeah. It's not bad. They just people withdrew their money. They own 50 or 60 billion minimum of bonds. That's it. The company is going to get $60 billion of cash back at some point. But granted, they have $190 billion of deposits or $170. And if everybody wants their money back, then now you're negative $120 billion or $110 billion. Yeah, exactly. It's not like FTX where they're like, yo, we got $10 billion of cum rocket coin. I Listen, listen, if you just keep your money in there, I'll sell it to you. I'll give you a discount on our equity. And we are, bro, we're fully backed. Our bad, I got the cum rocket coin. I got my own FTT token that I did, that I made. Uh, you ever, you ever hear about a Shiba, a Shiba Inu? I got a, I got a couple million in there. You gonna, you gonna be good, dog. Just listen, man. Just don't even worry. It's like, we, we were already like, we, I'm telling you, like, I don't even need to file bankruptcy. Listen, how about this? Just uh, what I want you to do is just, uh, you could take like 30 minutes to think about it. Meet me at the Margaritaville and we can, I'll have the papers for you. I just, I just typed it up on, on Microsoft docs actually. Okay. It's on notepad, but still, I'm just saying you sign here. I'll give you a preferred equity offering. You know, I'll give you a preferred equity offering. And with that preferred equity offering it's still backed by all of our high quality crypto assets that we have been holding. So it's good. It's good, bro. It's good. Trust me. The U S won't even get affected by this. They won't even get affected by this, man. Trust me. It's fine. So it's a lot different. SVB actually has like the highest grade debt you could own. So it's not like they, you know, it's, it's a lot, it's a lot different than FTX. <laughs> like I'll send you the details of a Snapchat. What? Sounds legit. It is. I don't know. That's the crazy thing, man. This is like a weird version of FTX. This is like just I don't even know. I can't believe this all happened in 24 hours. Man. Dollar to gold ratio is twenty thousand, so one dollar is one ounce of gold is twenty thousand dollars. That's expensive. Where do I put my money? Cash. I'm telling. I love it. The irony of all even the videos, bro. Like, <laughs> I'm mad I got trapped on my ES, but then I'm like, dude, it's just what? Like three days ago, I'm making you a video. Like, hey, put your cash into the cash assets. And then all of a sudden you get all these inflows, banks start raising their deposits. And now everyone's like, oh, we have a lack of depositors. Uh, what? <laughs> like, it's crazy. The world is over. Nah, yeah, man. I don't know. Like, again, I'm, I, I totally get fascinated by this stuff. I mean, we called this out yesterday. But we weren't in the in the sense of like, oh, my gosh. And even today, I feel the same way where it's just like this is a big deal. I think you could learn from it. And I, I hope you're all up to date on it. I mean, we made a video on it yesterday. We talked about it a lot. But, you know, the reality, especially if you've been in these markets for a while, you just know that everything, uh, you know, it's not you don't want to react just too crazy just yet. And things can change in, in many different ways. So I hope the level of composure I mean, I'm excited, uh, like, you know, and I think it's fascinating. And uh, we've spent maybe five hours talking about this today. Uh, but, you know, it's just keep in mind that easily it could it could go as quickly as it came. And it's still like we're on the cusp of panicking. But I wouldn't really uh, I'm, I'm not I'm one foot in one foot out and I'm not really quite there just yet. Treasury Chief Yellen is closely tracking SVB situation. Road to steady growth will be a bumpy one, says Rouse. Who's Rouse? We have faith in our regulators, Rouse. Who's Rouse? I think this is somebody with the bank. 
Oh, no, that's Biden economic advisor Celia Rouse. Yeah, bro, that's crazy. Dude, I'm telling you, in 24 hours, you got the Fed showing up, the FDIC shutting shit down, the Treasury, and damn, uh, the Biden administration is even on. They just on it, bro. So I don't know. It's like, that's how you know it's a problem, but then it's like, at least they're they're up to date with it. Well, we got three more minutes till power hour. Let's see what happens. And she said nothing to worry about. And same thing with the Biden administration. Power hours sell off. I wouldn't be surprised either. Even Bowen, I think, is coming down. A little bit. They just killed the premiums on those. Is that September? They kill premiums like the, the one slightly out the money. Like the stock is still up a good amount from the lows, but now the premiums are going back to the first candle. So premiums are right here. Stock is right here on the weeklies or on the dailies. I mean, everything right now looks September, October from how the bonds are moving to everything else. And we were even talking about that September move earlier. But this is definitely looking like we're in September, even with the data and everything else. Every dude, anything financially related, it sucks because I, you know, in a weird way, I am kind of tempted. What does Bank of America pay out? I just don't want to be that asshole who buys in 2.9. Yeah, it's still 3%. Shit, man, I get a better yield giving my money to the treasury. <laughs> Why is it so fucked up? Vintage Wine announces sale of Tenma Vineyard, VWE. Uh, Morgan Stanley, 3.4. But yeah, you could get better returns still. The banks aren't even like, I know Bank of America is at book value, but if you really wanted to try to snag something, and get it cheap and hold for the long term. It's not like it's not like you're still getting the the craziest rate there as far as the dividend is concerned. Meaning you could probably have a little bit more equity downside. Today's volume, I think it's banks shoring up their balance sheet. 
I think it's banks and even SIVB. And I think people both de-risking and hedging and then anybody because everybody's going to get asked this shit in the next 48 hours if you're a bank. And like that one guy was saying, they're going to start saying it publicly, but this is the highest volume in almost three months. Well, this is the highest daily volume in almost a year. The only other time was in June. And then we still have power hour. And then also October. But nah, you're probably going to get some of the highest volume here. Uh, where is SVB located? I know they're in Silicon. They have one in La Jolla. Yurts and shipping containers for Airbnb is great. I know a lot of people make a lot of money doing that. Santa Clarita. Tasman Drive, Santa Santa Clara. Silvergate's headquarters is in La Jolla. Is it the same thing that happened in 08? Well, you had a bank failure, and then it kind of occurred after a market rally, but kind of. And then, I mean, Washington Mutual, I don't know. Did they update it? I think it's on the wiki. Hmm, this is a good one. Oh, it's making me go in order. So here's 25 bank collapses. But Washington Mutual. So September 2008, sparked by fears of WAMU's collapse, depositors withdrew roughly $16 billion from the bank over a period of 10 days. Washington Mutual, then the sixth largest bank in the country, lost 10% of its total deposits during this slow-motion bank run. The FDIC took receivership of the bank, then sold their subsidiaries to J.P. Morgan for $1.9 billion. In the period of one month, WAMU went from the Walmart of banking to one of the largest bank failures in history. Uh, IndyMac, this was uh, July 2008. June, July, August, September. So WAMU was two months after IndyMac. Mm. They woke up in the first and largest bank failure in recent memory. The FDIC seized the bank assets over $30 billion and closed the doors. Continental Illinois Bank and Trust. Uh, where, when was this? It collapsed in 1984 due to losses uh, stemming from the acquisition of Penn Square Bank. First Republic of Texas, 1988. American Savings and Loan, 1984. Bank of New England, no. Yeah. I think everything else is, uh, again, this, I hope you see the number one and two bank failures. They sound a lot like, uh, they sound a lot like what you just had today. <laughs> Omar, it's my 22nd birthday. Thanks for changing the trajectory of my life without even knowing it. Call Real Estate Takeover 2023, baby. <laughs> wow, Omar. Happy birthday, baby. God bless you, man. I know you're killing it. with. I can't believe you're only 22, bro. That's crazy. That's crazy. That's actually wild. <laughs> how bad is this i mean well based off what i just read you you had indy mac in july and then wamu three months later so that's kind of how i'd be looking at it 
Uh, yeah, we actually were already in power hour. Power hour has actually started to sell off here. You got 53 minutes left. Omar, the Egyptian prince, Habibi. Omar, Magali. That's my Habibi. I can't believe you're only 22, Omar. Happy birthday, bro. Dude, God bless you. Let's go. You are so lucky. You know that? Is anybody else in here 22 years old? If you are, you're lucky. Okay, I hope you live the, the mat. You know, you're only 22 once. I think you could say the same thing about every age, but still, you know, 22. Wow. Wow. You're 25? I don't care. Um, 22 is a very special number. So that's good. <laughs> He's like, what the fuck, Josh? I'm 20. 25, bro. You're about to end, enter your midlife crisis. So it's okay. The 22, 21, you still got hope. 25, I mean, honestly, I need to start. Tr you 25-year-olds, you better be on hairline watch very soon. 22, you ain't even on hairline watch. 22, bro, you killing it, bro. You're killing it. You know what I'm saying? 22, bro, that's it. You're just straight, man. 25, your hairline is about to... This hairline keep on slipping, slipping, slipping. Damn, Salvador, you 24? That's crazy. That's crazy. You turned 25. You're a girl. Girls don't lose their hair, do they? I never really thought about the hairlines for the ladies. But either way, hairline watch after 25. So that's it. You got three years to worry. You're good. Yeah, 22, 20, 23 maybe. But 22 is great. 22 is great. God bless you. God bless you. Javier Mota. Mota. Is that really your last name? Doesn't that mean weed? Mm -hmm. Mine has it. Girls lose hair for sure. I don't know. I feel like girls have way better hair, though. You guys are lucky. This is my year to grind. Yeah, man. I mean, dog, 22, you could fuck around and st like you have so much time. Like, you have no idea. You could fuck around and make a 10-year investment and you'll still be barely 30. Y'all don't feel me, man. That's why. Don't listen to your young friends. Trust me, man. Just like, listen... Cause I'm like not super old yet, but I'm not like, I'm definitely not super young. So just like, you better listen to these motherfuckers in the middle. Okay. That's all I'm going to tell you because that's it. The young people are going to tell you, no, nah, man, why would you do that? Just I'm going to buy crypto. What? I'm just saying, but like none of the old guys are going to tell you to buy bonds and they may be right about now, but still, mm -hmm. it'll be good. I feel so old right now. It's okay. So do I. Dude, did you not see my hairline on my snap the other day, bro? I had a fucking 22-year-old in here saying, is that edited? And I'm like, ah, fuck me. It's not even edited. How can I edit? Who would edit their hairline to make it look worse? I don't even get it. Mm-hmm. So, nah, man. It's you good. We're all old. There's nothing wrong with being old. You can act hella weird and have no shame about it. You know that? That's what I started. That's what I started to realize. Like, I just start staring at people now. Like, I start farting in public. Like, that's it. And, like, as long I don't feel ashamed at all. I'm old. I could do that now. I'm not even that old, but, like, I, I am old. So, like, there you go. So, no, nah, hell no. Nah. You could do whatever you want. You could do whatever you want. That's it. I hella be looking at people. I hella just start making weird comments to people, trying to start conversations. And then my girlfriend is like, sorry, he's he's old. He's not. I'm, I'm sorry about that. I embarrass her all the time. Mm-hmm. I fart in public. Like, I'll sit like, bro, I farted at the gym the other day. And then I looked at the other person like it was them. And I said, that's disgusting. What's wrong with you? It's okay. You're getting old. That's what I told them. And then I walked away. Yeah, I hella be staring at people. I didn't realize how much I used to stare at, stare at people because I just started wearing glasses. And before I had glasses, I couldn't tell if I was looking at somebody or not. So now I realized... I was making such direct eye contact with people and I had no idea previously because I didn't have glasses because now you like 30 feet away. I'm like locking eyes with you like I'm like, oh, shit, we're having a battle. But like before I had the glasses, dude, I was just staring and I had I wasn't even looking at them. I was like, I, I thought, what? I can't even. I was like, I don't even know. I'm like, that's weird. You kind of look like somebody. I know. Actually, everybody looked the same because I can't see shit. But yeah, so it's now I've realized. Mm hmm. Yeah, I got glasses. I wear glasses to the gym, too. I didn't know that wasn't a thing, but I'm like, fuck, yeah, I need to look at these weights. I need to pay attention. 
It looks like I'm out of range for this channel's age group. Oh, no. The only thing we don't have here is like young, like below 15 years old. Otherwise, bro, I think we have the most widespread demographic of ever. I love it. That's why YouTube don't like us because we speak to everybody. It's very hard to put us in a box, bro. I have just as many like 18 year olds as like 30 year olds and 60 year olds. It's a trip. You have no idea, bro. So, you know, it's a good community and I think we could all learn off of each other. We could all have laughs with each other as well. But, you know, you're surrounded by a very diverse group of people. Yeah, you got a lot of 20 year olds. You got 40 year olds. We got 60 year olds. It's beautiful. It's beautiful. You relate to the blindness? Get glasses. I'm telling you. Just do it now. I ain't taking these things off ever since I've got them. Dude, <laughs> I was driving the other day. I forgot to put my glasses on. And I was driving. And I realized how blind I was. And I was like, oh, shit. This is mad dangerous. And then I started tripping myself out. Because like I could still see. But then I started thinking about it. And then mentally, shit just got blurry. Volume is not decreased dramatically. No, 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 no. Volume's actually picking up right now. Believe it or not. Bro, is that 140 million? Am I reading that right? Oh my gosh. Bro, this is at least, this is like top 15 days of volume. Bro, this is more volume than October 13th low. Sunrun doesn't expect material exposure. MCB Metropolitan Bank. They're hitting a new low. No, just in the last year, but that's crazy. 147 million. This today's volume is going to surpass everything all the way up until uh what's it called? Up until uh what is that? September 9th. And even then we're about to go higher than that. Low key, the only other volume was uh what May 14th, 193 million or 169. Damn it, where and then what's that? 100, 172, and then 164. So, yeah, no, this might be the highest volume in 12 months on the day. What age do you get the old man locker room confidence? I don't know, but I'm there. I was there uh, the last time I was in Vegas, bro. I went to the spa, bro. I was just letting it hang. I'm not going to lie to you. If anybody would look at me, I'd give them the head nod. Like, what's up? Uh-huh. So I'm already there. Uh, so I don't know, but I think maybe around... Uh, uh, honestly, I don't know. I, I really... I wish I could put a number on it. Mm-hmm. That's not an age thing. No, I, th I think it is. Because <laughs> it's like, if you took the amount of people who were like above the age of 50 who did that, Compared to like 20, then nah, nah, you would get a statistical difference, man. That's good. You guys got to add at the time to remind you. SPX, here it is. I mean, we could come down from here. grew up doing school school sports you're more comfortable kind of it depends but like I wasn't I was the kid who would never shower but then like I, I thought about it the other day bro like maybe 10 20 years ago I don't know I don't remember when I was back there but like school sports teams are sus <laughs> I'm just saying we were doing a lot of weird shit 
that's all. It was acceptable. Or like nowadays, it's even more acceptable. But even then, like depending on, you know, it's just it's just I, that's like I just know the the phrase uh, originated from our high school basketball team. We said it's only sus if you're sus. So there you go. There you go to give you context. But nah, so but even then, I still never never was really like I was like, I don't know about this. Not this. I was expecting the jobs. I didn't think the jobs report. I mean, I knew it could have been a big reaction, but I mean, it's clear that we are dealing with uh, a random, uh, a random black swan based on the bank stuff. Picking up now. Honestly, this is like speak now or forever hold your peace. This is it. You're like near the lows of the day, not too far from the lows of the morning. I do kind of want to rebalance some shit, but I feel like a schmuck reacting into the lows. But this would be your moment. TEPV. I like fuck the gamble. Okay, Baba's awful. That sucks that the meta came back and then dropped. No. Only thing would be if I wanted to get rid of Tesla, book that loss, and then call it a day. Mm. Okay, well, there you go. Stock buyback. I know JP Morgan's doing some. Doc UDN. No, I cut out the NVIDIA, dude. I had a, it was bittersweet. I should have, I could have done it way differently. I'm kicking myself for it. Cause I could have, I should have trimmed the Tesla and held that one. I don't know why I didn't. But then like, if I just changed the order of which I put in the order, I, I didn't even have to get rid of it. It was just stupid. About a 5% CD today. I'm a schmuck. How, uh, how long duration? There wasn't an Intel buyout, but something happened with Intel. They're up, what, 3% or something? So get ready. 1230 is either going to be ramp capital or dump capital. And we are on track to have the highest volume in 12 months here today. Webull came out and said they're going to have 4% cash management. They waylisted. I would be careful <laughs> with Webull cash management. Even then, though, I mean, right now, clearly financial institutions are the, the worry that we have. ONCS. 5% at a three-month maturity. That's great.
SIVB has been halted all day. <laughs> now, the learning lesson would be I'd, be I'd be skeptical of where I put my cash. That's the learning lesson of today. The potential broader fear that it's going to develop here in the market. But we'll find out on the next episode of The Stack Market Hates You. As traders prepared for the jobs report, little did they know the biggest bank failure in years would occur. <laughs> yeah, we think the strong jobs market, and if there's a strong or a weak jobs market, that's really what's going to set us apart here until the strong jobs market g goes down. It's going to be... <laughs> it did what they expected, but nothing happened. I, I don't know if the jobs are right now in the power of the 50 basis point, but now we don't think the 50 basis point, but now the quarter, but the bank, did the banks have the money? <laughs> they were all lost. Banks were selling off. And J.P. Morgan went to the moon. <laughs> uh, I still think the economy is entering towards a hurricane recession, but we'll gladly buy up all your assets at a very discounted price. <laughs> CPI next week. Find out what happens on the next episode of The Stack Market Hates You. <laughs> I don't know. I, was, I thought that's how Jamie Dimon was down. <laughs> I'm glad you knew I was going for Jamie Dimon. I'm so thankful that you knew that I was trying to do something related to Jamie Dimon. I'm, I'm really, honestly, thank you. Thank you. Honestly, that got me very excited. You have no idea, man. I appreciate you being able to find that. You know what I'm saying? Because that one, I didn't. I was, I was thinking it midway. I was like, I don't know if this one's going to hit, man. So thank you. I don't, I don't even know if I could reproduce it. I don't. No, I don't know. I don't know. It just it came out there. Thank you. I'm, I'm very appreciative of that. Apple. Apple's still at 148, higher than its shittiest earnings in 10 years. So, I don't know. How bad do you think? It's what I said uh, on the watch. Dude, I said on the watch list on Tuesday or Monday, I said 380 minimum. And then otherwise, we go back to lows. And that was without forecasting. Uh, that was without forecasting a uh, a bank run. So, other than that, though, we still got to wait. Just CPI. That's the only thing I think that could save the market now. Other than that, I think uh, we'll be well on our way uh, towards the lows of the year of last year. Uh, that's 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 the only thing. Appreciate you in the call here for three years, baby. Ex 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 Odysseus. Ex Odysseus. <coughs> God bless you, bro. Thank you, my friend. Thank you. Thank you. BBBY popping. I'm telling you, bro. I'm the FDIC. I'm surprised they didn't just be like, yo, let's let the company go bankrupt and then all of the traders will buy it because they'll think it's a short squeeze. How come nobody's short squeezing the banks right now? Is that not, does that not apply? We did not miss the bottom. Yeah, I, I did tell you that. So now that it has came true. So about two months ago, some of you were mad at me and you said, Josh, did we miss the bottom? I made you a video that said you did not miss the bottom. So now if you would like to feel like you did not miss the bottom, this could be your one opportunity. Otherwise, you could wait until October 13th. The funny part is this is 100 days almost exactly from October 13th, 100 trading days, which is wild. F this weekend. What do you see manifesting on Tuesday? Just bank problems. I think Tuesday, based on any of these days where we've had high sell-offs or high volume sell-offs, you're usually, we're going to go down here. That's why I think by t by Monday we'll go down and then Tuesday is just a wild card. But at this point, I really think uh, in a weird way, I'm, I'm much more bullish on the CPI now just because that's the only, <laughs> you're already, bro, you're already dumping 
but then I don't even know if it'll last. The problem is if this is a bigger issue, uh, then you're going to wind up with a way bigger problem. So yeah, anytime you have these big volume days, it's usually followed by another, another day. Like this time, I think this one was around CPI, big drop, then load up into CPI, then you bottomed out and then you went from there. BLPH is on the high too. So I think tomorrow, Monday is either gap down or wide range and cuck us staying around here. Maybe you get close to the 200 day, maybe. And then it's all about Tuesday, but I am getting a little bit more bullish on the CPI now. And then I think Powell, because now this changes even Powell's speech to a degree. You see what I'm saying? So like in a weird way, I don't even think the CPI matters. I hate to break it to you. And what I mean by that is that it will be, it could help the market out. If it brings us down, I think we're still there. And then regardless, what I'm trying, what I'm really trying to say is that if by Monday, Tuesday, we are still dealing with these bank problems and these bank fears, I don't think anybody is going to care about the CPI. The CPI just turned itself into to auxiliary rather than being the main event. I don't know. Can you, do you agree with that? Do you guys disagree, agree? That's what we learned today. I mean, that's what, at least what I figured, because that's what I was worried about in the morning. And then it sure enough happened where I think you'll get like a pre-market reaction and everyone's going to do their thing. But then uh, it's just all going to come down to everything else. So 1230, get ready for ramp capital up or down right now. I'd keep your eyes on this. Half agree, agree. Uh, initial reaction. If it was hot, hot, people would panic. But at that point, the bigger panic would be leading into the banks. But then uh, I think it all is going to boil down to Powell. The only thing you'll do, like we're, like if we gap down on Monday, if we gap on Monday or even just, we're probably going to stay within here till CPI. I think that I could give you a fair assessment with a high degree of confidence. But then again, if I'm wrong, we're fucked. <laughs> I'm telling because anytime I ever give you a range and it's right, it's it's very solid. But if I'm wrong, this shit is going to get fucking rocked. Uh, but it, I don't think you'll go lower than 30, 377. I think 380 is a solid low. You're going to stay within this range and then the beginning of the year. Uh, but then it's like after I think you're going to stay around here till CPI. You, I think you hold this range till CPI. Last time you, you fell a little bit lower to 370. I think that's the last time I told you about one of these ranges. Uh, but then uh, CPI will determine it. But then after that, you'll probably stay within the 100-day range up until Powell. And then it's only Powell because uh, now I think Powell's speech is, is – this is different. You're not going to – you're going to hear about this from Jerome Powell. And this was not mentioned in any of the last 12 FOMCs. And now – this is your first sign of a uh, of negative tightening effects. Mm -hmm. SIVB will get bought out for the simple reason the Fed doesn't show up at your door. Well, that's what happened with Washington Mutual. That's what happened with everybody else. So Washington Mutual, it was the same exact scenario. Theirs just took 10 days. This one took 24 hours. And then the FDIC comes in, they shut you down, take your money, and then they sell off everything else to whoever wants to buy it, if there is a buyer. And I think somebody will buy them. Uh, I just don't, it's a great investment. To, but then again, I haven't looked at their balance, you know, as of uh, as of late. Ramp capital didn't show up. Ain't nobody show up right now. And now it's turning into a red. Elon buys it. If he didn't buy Twitter, then yeah. And then everybody would have hated him less. If Elon buys it, dude, people get so mad in Silicon Valley. 
They're going to be so pissed. They'll be like, now he owns our bank. But yeah, I don't think Elon has any money left. Unless you want him to, then I'm selling my Tesla shares. Yeah. Peter Thiel will buy it. Well, that's some, I mean, people are saying that not he's going to buy it, but some people are blaming him. People are saying this was a targeted attack because <laughs> this was pretty shitty. Now before CPI, maybe, but we didn't hit 3,800, so, or we didn't even hit the break even on the year. And this is where I think we might, we might deal with that either today or tomorrow. We'll find out. Any early market on closes? Where are my market on close boys at? Bloomberg guess says Thiel comments were illegal. I think if he had a financial position to benefit off of it, but I don't think, I don't think you could, uh, if you were advising uh, anybody within your companies to get out of it, I don't, I don't think that's illegal. If he had a short, then yeah. 560 to the sell side. That's not bad. Consider, but then again, I don't. Is there even a market on close? There's 147 million shares traded hands today. Does how does anybody have anything left? Can we just do a close? Bloomberg says Thiel caused the run. Well, that's that's what people are talking about, too. There was him, but even Ackman said some shit. But as long as he didn't profit off of it, it's not illegal, I would argue. And then watch out. We're slowly slipping here. You only have 30 minutes remaining, 25 minutes, and you're near the danger zone. Again, 38.60. This is not the level I would have wanted to be the support, but hey, <laughs> we'll take it. This happened after the stress test. The latest stress test on the Fed, I read it to you. Not only did they not mention anything about depositors, but that was that occurred in February 2023. Could his comments been on purpose? They could have been. If Thiel, I mean, again, a lot of people in Silicon, like Thiel was the founding father of Silicon Valley. Uh, Silicon, Silicon, I don't care. Um, but he uh, he was, dude, he's been big there. And then people got mad at him when he backed Trump and went to a Trump meeting. Uh, so I feel like if Thiel wanted revenge on Silicon Valley, this is it. <laughs> this definitely was it because he just fucked all of them. Uh, but it's, it's hard to say whether or not, uh, it was, uh, it was him, uh, or if this was like his intention or not versus actually trying to preserve people, you know, and, and give them solid advice, which turned out to be true. No, we're talking about Peter Thiel. Because he was early, though. He was early on it. He was, well, bro, I'm telling you, at like 1.30 p.m. Eastern or Pacific time, he was saying that. He came out quick and was just telling everybody to get their money out of there. And he said, don't hold more than 250000 
Well, the stock was already down 60% by the time he said that. That We already reacted to that. Just go watch yesterday's stream, bro. We were like, I flipped SIVB, and then like 30 minutes later, I'm like, wait a minute. They did this, and then little by little, it started coming down again, and then like three quarters through the day, the bank stocks went from negative 2% to negative 5%. And then we just started selling and we were like, OK, this is borderline looking like panic. The bonds started going up. The dollar was still down. So it was pretty wild. Uh, you know, that's it. You know, if he bought puts on XLF, that would be illegal. If that point, because then you could argue he benefited financially from it. But that's so a lot already happened by the time he said it. Here's a headline from Bloomberg. One problem for Silicon Valley Bank is that customers had too much cash. And now they don't. <laughs> My goodness. Well, there you go. That is the irony of that situation. Amazon's into the lows. Even Tessie's coming down. The Wells Fargo thing is people on Twitter, but I haven't had like a real, like official news article about it. I can't believe the VIX is at 26. That hasn't happened in a while. Yeah, damn. So a Chad just sent this to me. His wife's law firm is affected by this. They got an email saying that the FD and FDIC impounded all financial assets of SVB and that ripping, rippling payroll was using impound payroll taxes. What is it called? Yeah, rippling payroll. They're not publicly traded. So then literally you have to go contact your bank and authorize ACHs, but people's payrolls have been uh been halted because of this or they've had an issue at least till Monday. Stocks are coming down now. 1240, 20 minutes left, 10 minutes till the 10 minute rigged. You're below the 3860. The final test of the year level may be in play right now. Get ready. Mm -mm. All I did was short the banks. They did decent today, but we're waiting for them now. I might want to go for a greedy short. I was thinking about it 10 minutes ago and didn't take it, but we will see. If you bounce from here, you're safe, but if it flushes, that's it. And this is big volume on. This is going to be the biggest day of the year. I could say that. I think 170 is the biggest volume in the last 12 months. I think you're going to do more than that. Stocks are moving more than Jerome Powell, more than congressional meeting in March. This is bigger. This is bigger than anything you've seen. That's the craziest part about all of this. This is moving bigger than the biggest CPI days of last year, more volume than any Powell day, more volume than Powell before Congress. This is, that's it. Monday can be ugly, but then Monday is going to be the preliminary wait for Powell. It all just depends on uh, it all just depends on what the news is over the weekend, and then if they get bought out uh, by somebody and who does it, and then if we find out if anybody else has the same problem.
Yeah, you're at 151 million. So you'll do 20 million in volume in 20 minutes. What's up, Bank of New York Mellon? BK. They're one of the big ones. I don't think they're totally clapped yet. They're definitely more stable, but... No, BK. I think that's a, a, an ironic ticker. Ulta just had good earn. Our Ulta, there's a couple names. There's 30 names that are green today. TLT almost double. We did buy bonds today. I got a decent position on that, but I don't know. I feel like we could do more. And they're, they actually haven't moved all day. Bill is affected by SIVB. 3M That's good for now. Watch out here. That little mini green after this flush. Bro, you have five minutes here till till the close or the 10 minute rig, and you're like right in between hitting a new low and then touching the 38, 37 and going break even. I've screened for a lot of bank stocks today. A lot. I went I like Goldman for the downside. We're already up on that almost ten dollars a share. And then I, st I still think JP Morgan is just because they have meat on the bone, but it's everything else. It's very hard to tell who's going to get affected by it. And a lot of it is a, a lot of assumption. And then not to mention now premiums are really, really expensive. AXSM have material deposits with the bank. AXSM, they're getting clapped now. So they're a biotech. They said material deposits with the bank. So that means all of their money is halted for now. That could be decent. They're already down 8%. How much time do we have? We got 15 minutes. All right, you're still not flushing yet, bro. 10-minute rigged is going to be insane. Get ready. Yeah, and 3M103. It's beautiful for now. Bro, even Jeppy is actually, I'm glad. So imagine, imagine everybody on Jeppy just by waiting here this year. Now we're getting towards that low. Actually, Jeppy looks very attractive. AXSM is getting murdered. I was looking at the daily options. They all just went crazy now. They they went 480 from a dollar, but you only have 20 minutes of time or 10 minutes.
well, Chad. Let's see. Thank you, Marco Triple M. God bless you, my friends. God bless you. All right, I got something for you. I got something for you, Chad. I think I found something decent. Mm -hmm. I hate it, but I think it's decent. Let me try one more. No butterflies. I found, I think I found the, it just, it all clicked. If for any weekend risk or anything else. Sadly, it's an option, and it's sadly the thing I don't want to buy. So I just bought one set. Let me see the other one. Oh, Biden posed to further tighten U.S. chip making exports to China. All right, I made two plays, two options. This is just pure panic insurance, and then it actually makes the most sense. So hold on. I don't even know what I paid for these. And they already went up before I even even I haven't even sent out a stream alert or anything, so be very careful. Fed emergency meeting, stop lying. But if it happens, it'll be crazy. US plans to coordinate with Netherlands. And Japan on new rules. Oh, wait, that was 10-minute rigged. You got your pop. You have gotten your pop. What's the play? Just don't judge me. It might bring back fear for a lot of you guys. And just don't. I'm mad because I made an option play. Am I going to say the play? I might just run an ad. I might just run an ad before I say the play. Okay, hold on. I had to do research. I had to actually make a play finally on the options. I had to sit through all of this all day, putting out one fire, getting out of a trap, even forgetting about plays, and now I got to prepare for a bank collapse, bro. You want to ask me? For, I'm going to get you the damn play, bro. Okay, I'm going to get you the damn play. Okay, I'm going to get you the damn play. Okay, but thank you all for showing love. And be careful. Don't trade this. Not a recommendation. The play even went up before, but I did it. I did it, okay? Yeah, shout out to Twitch chat for being patient. They were bullying me yesterday, though. Oh, yeah, huh? 
Okay, I love you. Not a recommendation. You will lose money. I made plays on uh, UUP, dollar. Dollar June calls, and then I grabbed some for April as well too. They're actually down today, and then now they're down. The dollar's down with the yen, which makes a lot of sense. If anybody is going to fucking trip out on anything with the bank, the dollar's just going to skyrocket. That's it. Whether people pull money out or whether they run out of liquidity, I've been saying the dollar is going to be the ultimate winner, but I just don't like the options on it. And actually, in a weird way, they're kind of cheap, uh, but they're not really cheap. It's a, it's very, very weird. And then I'm just hoping that it actually profits. But uh, you do have to uh, to get it there. But I like I think the dollar is the only real everything else is down a lot. Banks are up 300% on any options. So the dollar, I at least, I went with options because I want leverage. It's a pure insurance play. So I think you could lose money on this play. I would say uh, this play, you should be expecting to lose money on it. Uh, just keep that in mind. But it just, I think it all boils down to uh, the, what's it called? I think this all just boils down to whatever happens. Fed emergency meeting being tweeted on Monday. I don't see that. Again, just remember, you motherfuckers were telling me we were going to have an emergency rate hike on Twitter. So calm down. Okay? Calm down. Mm -hmm. Check Twitter. I went with UUP June calls and then April 21st calls and you shouldn't play them because you will lose money and this is an insurance play and I'm expecting UUP is just difficult as shit to make money on. The problem with the dollar as a hedge is the retreat into bonds. The dollar is going to get clapped. It could be, but I mean, the way I'm looking at it, before you buy a bond, you're probably going to switch to a dollar. But I definitely, that is going to be the problem. But then the other problem with bonds is that you might get a massive amount of bond supply from people trying to trying to sell it. Yeah, hey, you, you, this is just pure insurance. Like, that's it. It's just if you wake up to, and then actually today you woke up with the dollar down. So this kind of just gave you a gift over the last three days. Because then the premiums were discounted. Uh, and then that's it. Even then, though, they still kind of had a little bit of a premium to earlier. It's on Twitter, the Fed emergency meeting. Um, I don't see it. No ZN. I bought the ETF because I don't want to. The future, if you buy it up when it's up 2% right now, if that goes down, I could lose. you could lose $10,000 just if it retreats. So I went with bond, uh, bond uh, ETF. Federal Reserve website, where? Minutes, press release. They announced member of community deposit institutionary. They announced termination of enforcement action. Emergency Fed meetings are awful. Last time that happened, the world found out the economy shutting down because of COVID. That was your last emergency Fed meeting. There where? Closed board. I'm going to slap y'all if it's the closed board meeting. Man. No way y'all doing this again. Which link? This one? This is minutes. Recent press releases. Minutes of the Federal Open Market Committee. Recent postings. Advanced notice of meeting under expedited procedures. A closed meeting of the Board of Governors will be held under expedited procedures. 
considered review and determination about advanced discount rates. I think this is normal. I think it's the same thing. Uh, can I go? Can you show me in February? Review board meetings. Now, how much time we have left? Oh, shit. What? Bro. Oh, see, so y'all distracted me with the same fucking rumor every time. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, our plane has been halted uh, due to SIVB. Uh, no landing here today, or I don't know what's going to happen. Uh, the FDIC is taking control of our plane here today. So uh, good luck. Hopefully you have a parachute, and uh, we'll see you up here on Monday morning. And get ready for CPI on Tuesday, and uh, good fucking luck. Uh, we love you, and uh, make sure you're subscribed, and uh, thank you for all your business. Uh, thank God you're not on Spirit Airlines or SIVB Airlines. Uh, we'll see you there, and have a wonderful weekend. One minute! <laughs> Let's go, baby! What a day. What a day, my friends. What a day. The Monday is going to be even crazier everybody's going to be worried. Just wait even till after the bell. I'm sure like after the bell, you're going to start getting a bunch of headlines too, man. That's even the crazy part of all of it. So we are going to see what happens, but not too bad of a close. Honestly, that could have been a lot more detrimental. They'll save it for the gap. You got 10 seconds. Wrap up your plays. Finalize it. Six, five, four, three, two, one. Ding 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 Oh Arna let's go baby Oh wait wait what that what Whoa 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 run that back baby Let's go Chatterdoni I need a GG get ready for next week you made it through a crazy week. History in the making. The last time you saw a bank failure was 2008. Welcome, Chad. Good game. It don't matter if you made money or lost money. I know you learned something. Everybody who stayed in the game. Everybody who contributed. Good game, baby. All my laggers. All my lurkers. All my lovers. Why you being so shy? Oh, my goodness. God bless you and GG. Are you kidding me? Let's go. Let's go. All the members. All the non-members. All the stream alerts. Better have me the money, then have me some fun, bitch. I'm back on you, don't really. Let's go, Twitch. Let's go. Amen. What's up, Twitch? Y'all held it down. They all held it down. Let's go. Good game. You ready for Monday? Oh, uh, we gonna have a wild year. Let's go. Good game, everybody. I'm glad you made it to the bell without crying or dying. That's amazing. Let's go. I need me to rock. You won't see me a lot. Monday through Friday, you need me to talk. Let's go, baby. Chatadonia, how do you feel, man? How do you feel, Chatadonia? Oh, my gosh. Chatadonia, wow. Could have been worse. That close could not. This is bad, dude. That's it. The bell is over. Like, listen, I just, I hope, uh, you know what I'm saying? It's like, listen, man, I'm just, today what has happened, bro, is that you just, you just looked up your girl's phone location and found out that she is at her ex-boyfriend's house, okay? And she hasn't responded to your text in like 17 hours, okay? And that's, so I'm listening, I'm gonna be hopeful for you and I'm gonna tell you, listen, maybe don't overreact. We need a little bit more information, but as of now, homie, it's not looking good, okay? This does not look good at all. So I don't think you should go quickly to panic. You never know. Maybe her ex-boyfriend lives, maybe her ex-boyfriend lives right next to her mom. I don't know. Maybe. I don't know. I don't know. But I'm just trying to tell you, uh, yeah, this ain't this this one is not good. This one's not good, Chad. But we made it. Okay, we made it. I hope you don't overreact. It hasn't spread yet. Uh, but we have two more days after this. But Chad, I hope you enjoyed this, okay? And I hope that you are ready for next week. And honestly, I just hope you're ready for the rest of the year. 
Uh, again, I mean, we've been putting out fires and making them back and doing all of this shit, but when it's all said and done, you're going to need a crazy mentality to get through the rest of the year. This is just the beginning, so I hope you stay in the game. I'm glad to see y'all here. Oh, y'all ran it up on the likes. Hit them with the horn. Let's go, baby. Amen. <laughs> Amen, man. Amen. 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 God bless y'all. But for real, thank you for liking the video, but let's go. Let's get ready for this. I think there's going to be a lot of excitement, a lot of good, a lot of bad, a lot of ugly. And I think uh, the opportunity is reserved for those people who maintain that stamina and discipline and stay in the game, Chad. So get ready. It's about to get wild. Uh, I hope you remain here. Uh, I think the next couple of days here, we're going to have probably some really crazy coverage. So I suggest you stick around or you get your stream alerts, whichever comes first. But check out all the links. But that's the day, Chad. I just want to tell you thank you, okay? Honestly, thank you guys for being here. Thank you to the real ones who support day in, day out. Encourage other people in the chat. You encourage me. You contribute. You bring something to the table. You bring information. You engage in with good information. So God bless you and thank you. We love you all, man, for real. This community is amazing, and I hope you've been able to benefit off of everything uh, that we put out here day in and day out, man. That's the goal, and we are able to help each other out. So God bless you, Chad. Thank you again. I need you to enjoy your weekend as well, but check out all the links. Just fill out the prayer request while I pray for me. I'm going to pray for you. Me and my mom's going to pray for you, and that's it. I'm not going to bore you with any links. You should be I hope you explore. Feel free to explore it, okay? Just feel free to explore it. That's all. Just explore the description, and you'll find some things. Again, if you didn't watch yesterday's watch list. All right, ladies and gentlemen. Oh, that's it. See, we talked about it. So this was yesterday, talking about this 21 hours ago, but you could go and take a look at it. I hope you're able to get something out of it. And uh, I do have a weekend video I am going to make. I might have to make it while I vlog, though. That's what's going to be weird. Okay? That's what's going to be weird. Okay? So we'll see what happens. We will see what happens. But Chattadonia, check out the watch list. Check out yesterday's video. Uh, and just get ready, man. But that's it. That's the day. That's the day. So I have good news and bad news for you. And honestly, I don't know if I have too much of good news for you. So, yeah, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Okay, here's the good news. The good news is that you get a weekend video, and it will be very informational, filled with tinfoil, and it will, it will be on the go, so maybe you'll get a vlog to it. That's why. That's the good news. That's the good news, okay? The bad news is that I cannot stay with you today, Chad. I cannot stay with you on our on our cherished Friday. I feel offended, to be honest with you, because this is a thing. I feel like this is our thing. You know what I'm saying? Like, this is, I know you just washed your cloak, man. I know, it sucks, bro. Yeah, God bless you, baby. God bless you. What's up, Josh's dad? I don't want to be your dad, because then I don't want to pay child support. I already have enough Tesla shares. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, those that already listen already know. You should be aware. I've given you the update, which is kind of dope that some of you already know, but yeah. I feel bad. This was our time. No, but I'm going to give you some fucked up tinfoil on a, on a watch list, vi on a weekend video. You're going to like it, man. Uh-huh. You're going to like it. You're going to like it. Uh-huh. So, Chad, I love you. God bless you. But before we go, before we go, let me hear. Let me give you one. Let me give you one. <laughs> let me give you one. I'll, I'll play you a song. I'll play you a song real quick. Real quick. You'll like this one. Please. <laughs> Allow me to God show you, you something. That's Jimmy, man. It's a cop. <laughs> 2020, baby. Straight up, man. I just hope you in the game. Ass, ass, yeah. <laughs> I ain't seen this in a minute. I ain't seen this in a while. Seeing like this a little different. No minutes to the word on viral. Thinking that the Chinese did it. Or maybe we started the virus. Maybe they want you divided. Maybe they profit on fire. I ain't seen this in a minute. I ain't seen this in a while. Seeing like this a little different. No meaning to the word gone viral. Thinking that the Chinese did it. Or maybe we started the virus. Maybe they want you divided. Maybe they yeah, profit on yeah. fire. Yeah. Yeah. This one different, you should listen, take a minute, cause in seconds, people tripping, fed decisions, reminiscing of the time we saw this last, not in a crash, but in collapse, not contained across the map, first the strain and then the grab, damn, this is the system deflating, but it's coming off as inflation, that's why the dollar's still strengthen, the money ain't moving the dollar, 
but you made your mind up real quick. Cause when the three months on the fall, that's when you don't buy the dip. Ayy, so what I'm on though, break it in two. Feast in the famine, the cycle ain't no. That's just a view, it could be your way, yeah, it could be your toe. It could be a plot and it could be a cool. Either way, I know I'm gonna get through. I got some armor and I got the tools. I'm playing patience and yeah. I make a move. I ain't been a bear in a minute. I ain't been a bull in a while. I ain't feel them in a minute. I let these bitches got bias. Yo, why the two don't have prices? Chill when you what? But I feel when you negative. Millions of dollars won't make you a better man. Should be a way hey, to the way that I'm I ain't seen this in a minute. I ain't seen this in a while. Seen like this a little different. No minutes to work on viral. Thinking that the Chinese did it. Or maybe we started the virus. Maybe they want you divided. Maybe they profit off fire. I ain't seen this in a minute. I ain't seen this in a while. Seen like this a little different. No minutes to the work on viral. Thinking that the Chinese did it. Or maybe we started the virus. Maybe they want you divided. Maybe they profit off fire. Hey. This one different. You should listen. Take a minute. Cause in seconds, people tripping, fed decisions, reminiscent of the time we saw this last. Not in a crash, but in collapse. Not contained across the map. First the strain and then the grip. Damn, this is the system deflating, but it's coming off as inflation. That's why the dollar's still strengthening. The money ain't moving at all, but you made your mind up real quick. Because when the three months on the fall, that's when you don't buy the dip. Hey. <laughs> oh, man, Chad, let's go. It's going to be wild. So, Chad, it's going to be wild. God bless. God bless. And, Najee, we're going to talk, man. I'm praying for you, man. And everybody, I feel you, man. And uh, you're not the only one, man. I'll tell you that, too. So let's go. We just got to stick through, get strong with everything, man. And let's bring this thing home. And that's it, man. I hope all of you have a good weekend and really control the mental, man. For real, man. Uh, you got to go through what you got to go through sometimes. But all of this is leading us up, man. And it's it's crazy how everything is already playing out. And it's crazy what we don't know. And it's crazy that we're going to look back and we're always going to compare these moments. So, Chad, stay in the game. Don't fall back on the mentality that took you already far enough. And you'll be good, man. And remember, just listen and see. And then just keep putting it in there, baby. And don't worry. Everybody, there's ups. Everything's a cycle. Just remember the circle, okay? If I could end you with anything on a Friday note, can I just remind you guys of the circle? Everything in the world is a circle. The whole world is a circle, believe it or not. You look at a clock, it's a circle, time, right? Everything is a circle. If you actually go take any pricing, you could actually identify it with a circle, believe it or not. It's wild of how it works. That means everything is like a washer and a dryer. You're going to go through high moments, high moments, high moments. Then it's going to start going down, down, down. Then you're going to go through the low moments, the low moments of the cycle. And then you're going to go up and then you're going to low, 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 low. Then it's turning up, turning up, turning up. Then you hit a new high and then you go back around. Then you hit a new low and then you hit a new high. So just don't forget about the circle, okay? That's what I'll tell you, Chad. Don't forget about the circle. So no matter what, whether you think things are good, whether you think things are bad, just everybody is at a different spot in their own cycle and everything moves in there. And if you understand that at the times when it's low, you're going to be good. If you understand that when the times that it's high, you're going to be good. So just always remember that, okay? Okay? <laughs> Amen. Amen. But Chatadonia. I love you all, man. I'm very sad I have to get going, but I will give you an update. I hope you all enjoy your weekend. Be ready Monday, Tuesday, when the whole next week is going to be wild. So the beauty is we will be here, God willing. So I hope I see you here, Chad. I hope you're locked and loaded. God bless all of you again, and peace out. Wait, don't forget why we're here. Why we keep going, why we don't back down, why that faith, hope, and love ain't never going out of style, why it's good or bad, we always going to be thankful, and why we understand everything got its moments in time, baby. Why? Finger to the sky, baby. To God be the glory, and through the grace of God alone. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Chad, I love y'all. Enjoy the weekend, though. Honestly, be calm. You're going to get any news and whatever, but trust me, uh, you, you got a lot of time. We have a lot of a lot of things to work on here throughout, so please enjoy the weekend. This may, Maybe this will be the last weekend you could enjoy before it even gets realer, so, you know, just, just take it easy. Take it easy. All right, Chad? I love y'all. Peace out, baby. Peace out. Amen. Amen.
Yeah, what about, what about, what about, what about, hey man, hey man, hey woman, hi. What's going on? Hey, listen, if I'm never with the FDI, the F, the FOM, the F, the F, the fuck you. Listen, it's fine. What did Lala La Yellen say? She told you it's going to be perfect. Don't worry about it. We're monitoring it. And it's going to be great right now to be monitoring. All right, I love you. All right, good morning. Good morning. I got to go. Hello.